At the beginning of the story, we see some students stepping out of their school after taking a hard exam. With a smile on his face, a boy tells his friend that the test was long. The boy wearing glasses told his friend that the exam was not long. He called his friend a dummy and told him that he simply did not know the answer. The moment the boy said this, he hears some girls screaming. He and his friend turn to see what caused the noise. When they turned, they saw some students their age in military cars. The cars were passing by their school. The boys realized that the girls were screaming because of the cars. The dummy was annoyed to see this. He told his friend that the students in the cars are not even really adventurers. He explained to him that the students are probably from some random specialized high school. The boy with glasses told his friend that he is stupid. He asked him to look at the logo on the cars. He told the boy that the students in the cars are from Warrior High School. In this world, a certain disaster happened without any warning. Portals leading to another world suddenly appeared and different monsters came out of these portals. The monsters wreaked havoc in the human world. Scientists later discovered that a world similar to Earth existed in another part of the universe. A particular event occurred in this world that led to its destruction. As a result of the destruction, remnant of this planet flew towards Earth. Thanks to this, parts of the planet began to fuse with Earth. People have come to know this event as the adhesion phenomena. After the fusion, unusual laws of nature and variety of monsters were introduced to the world. This fusion affected 17% of Earth's area. Humans lost control over their land. In a place known as the Danger Zone, we see a soldier breathing heavily as he hid behind a building. While hiding, the man saw something terrifying. The soldier saw a monster dragging his comrade's body on the ground. The monster that held the man's body is known as a horned horror. It is a single horn monster. The number of horns the horned horror has refers to how strong it is. The soldier carefully hid himself when he saw the monster. Unfortunately for him, the horned horror sensed his presence. The monster screamed at the man. The soldier immediately took out his gun and started shooting at the monster. The monster ran towards the soldier. Unfortunately for the man, the bullets barely grazed the monster. The horned horror got close to the soldier and landed a heavy blow in his stomach. The soldier spat out some blood and flew away. The man got slammed into a wall. Unfortunately for humans, they were not given time to prepare for the monsters. And even if they were given time, they did not possess anything that could help them win against these monsters. However, humans also gained something too. The disaster was not the only thing that came to Earth. The natural limit that humans were born with and the limitations on their potential caused by the natural laws of Earth were completely shattered. The soldier rose up from the rubble and stopped the monster's punch. His stats had been completely upgraded. The man grabbed the monster's hand and slammed it to the ground. The monster died when it got slammed to the ground. The soldier was shocked to see what he had done. He did not understand how he suddenly became stronger. Although this phenomenon affected all humans on Earth, the abilities that were awakened were different for each person. The chosen few decided to train and utilize their newfound abilities. The scene shifts and we see hordes of single-horned horrors come out of a portal. The monsters were led by a three-horned horror. The humans who had abilities gathered at the entrance of the portal to stop the monsters. The humans came together to regain control over their lands. The humans were known as adventurers. This is how the era of dungeons and adventurers began. The entire world praised the achievements of the adventurers and they were inspired by their strength. Not long after adventurers became popular, organizations that focused on the training of adventurers were created throughout the world. Among these organizations, the best adolescent training facility which has managed to create the best adventurers for the last 25 years is the world-renowned Warrior High School. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the boys. The boy with glasses revealed to his friend that Warrior High School counts things that happens in a dungeon as a test. The boy was surprised to hear this. He asked his friend to tell him what would happen if the students died. The boy explained to his friend that the students of Warrior High School are confident. He told him that the students are special. That is why they are accepted into the school. While the boys were talking, they hear the girls scream again. The boys immediately turn to see what happened. When the boys turned around, they saw the girls screaming about a cute guy. The girls were shocked to see how handsome a mixed elf student was. The other boy was annoyed to see the girls screaming for the mixed elf. He asked his friend to tell him what he is looking at. The boy was surprised to see that his friend did not recognize the elf. He told him that the elf usually appears on TV. The elf is known as Diav Choi. His father is a famous adventurer and his mother is an elf. Diav is known to be a genius. People believe that he will become a top-rank adventurer five years after graduating. 
Dayav is a first-year student of Warrior High School and he has returned from a dungeon 14 times. The other boy was annoyed to see the way the girls were behaving. He did not understand why the girls were excited when Dayav was not even an idol. The boy with glasses told his friend that he is not better than the girls for being angry at someone he does not know. The boy was annoyed to hear this. He wanted to yell at his friend. The boy with glasses noticed that a classmate of his was leaving school. He called out to our protagonist whose name is Jaryong. The boy asked Jaryong if he is going to work. He revealed to him that their classmate whose name is Lee Eunji wants to have a karaoke with the other students. While staring at his phone, Jaryong told the boy that he will not be able to go to the karaoke. He asked the boys to have fun. The other boy was surprised to see that Jaryong was going to work immediately after exams. He asked our boy to leave work and join them. The boy with glasses was shocked to hear what his friend said. He used his hand to hit his friend in his stomach and asked Jaryong to enjoy his time. Our boy waved to the boys and walked away. While his friend was shaking, the boy with glasses asked him if he cannot be a bit sensitive. He reminded him that Jaryong is working hard for a reason. While walking, Jaryong stared at his phone. Our boy received a message from his hospital about his due bills. The hospital asked Jaryong to pay 302,521,201. While our boy was looking at his phone, a man known as Chief asked him to come to the office. He told Jaryong that they have work to do. While Dayav was waving at the girls, he saw Jaryo. The elf noticed something odd about Jaryo. A boy sitting next to Dayav asked him if something is wrong. He asked the elf if Jaryo did something to him. While staring at our boy, Dayav told the boy that nothing is wrong. The elf believed that he was imagining things. The scene shifts and we see Jaryo arrive at an abandoned train station. A man with purple hair who was smoking welcomed our boy to the station. The man with purple hair is known as MJ Huan. He is 37 years old and he is a broker. Two other men stood next to Jae Hwan. A short man and a huge man. The broker told our boy that the short bald man wearing a suit is their new client. Our boy greeted the man. The bald man was annoyed to see Jaryo. He reminded Jae Hwan that he promised to give him his best worker. Jae Hwan told the man that Jaryo is the best. The man was annoyed to hear this. The man moved close to Jae Hwan and called him a bastard. He told the broker that he is not going to get scammed by an idiot like him. He asked Jae Hwan to take Jaryong away and bring him someone who is capable. While the man was yelling, Jaryong took off his jacket. He asked the huge man behind the bald man if he was an adventurer. Our boy told the man that he must be a former adventurer which is why he is standing like an idiot behind the bald man. The bald man was surprised to hear what our boy said. He could not believe that Jaryong was speaking to the huge man rudely. While releasing some energy, the huge man told the man that they do not need to talk any longer. He assured him that Jaryong will learn his lesson after getting his hand and leg broken. The bald man was surprised to hear this. The huge man's name is Lee Piljiu and he is 34 years old. He is a former silver rank adventurer who returned from a dungeon 81 times before his retirement. The bald man asked Jaryong to get on his knees and beg Piljiu if he wants to save himself. Our boy released some energy and told the bald man that he does not know how to beg. Our boy's full name is Ujaryo. He is a dungeon smuggler who has returned from a dungeon 371 times illegally. In this world, adventurers work every day to explore dungeons. When they successfully explore a dungeon and take down a monster, they are able to obtain countless treasures. However, before the adventurers exit the dungeon, the treasures must be handed over for inspection. This is because a lot of treasures have incredible strength. If such treasures were to be circulated without permission, they could be used for evil. Due to this, the Adventurers Association must first inspect this treasures and levy tax on them based on their worth. However, there are some people that violate this rule. This people entice adventurers who do not want to pay this enormous taxes and secretly pocket the treasures. This people are dungeon smugglers. The association usually tells people to report the smugglers to them if they are ever found. This is done in order to safeguard the society. The scene shifts and we see Jae Hwan light a cigarette. The bald man was surprised to see this. He did not understand why the man was smoking in this situation. He asked Jae Hwan if he is really going to let our boy fight with Piljiu. The broker asked the man if he is scared of the fight. The bald man was annoyed to hear this. He told Jae Hwan that he is scared for him. He revealed to the broker that Piljiu has a nasty temper. The man explained to Jae Hwan that Piljiu retired as an adventurer because he was caught assaulting his teammate. The man asked the broker to stop the fight in order to save Jaryo. While stretching his hand, Jaryong calls Piljiu a real criminal. He could not believe that the huge man actually assaulted his teammate. With a smile on his face, 
Piljiu told our boy that some trash was dragging him down so he disposed of him. Jaryong laughed when he heard this. He told Piljiu that he must be aware of the fact that he is trash. He asked the man if he purposely caused trouble and lost his license. While our boy was talking, Piljiu attacked him. The man believed that his punch landed on Jaryong's face. To his surprise, our boy easily dodged the attack by moving his head a bit. He told the man that it is rude to attack without the other person's permission. Piljiu was annoyed to hear this. He rushed to attack our boy with his other hand. Jaryong smiled when he saw the man raise his other hand. He decided to give the man a light kick. Our boy used his leg to hit the man on his head. Jaryong's leg connected to the man's face. With a smile on his face, Jae Hwan reminded the bald man that he brought his best worker. The bald man was surprised to see Jaryong's kick. While Pilgia's neck froze, our boy took a stance. He was surprised to see that such a minor attack would paralyze the man. He had expected Pilgiu to be stronger because of his build. Pilgiu used his hand to snap his head back in place. The man did not understand what was going on. He had thought of Jaryong as a mere child. However, after seeing our boy's reflexes and receiving his kick, Pilgiu could tell that Jaryong was already in the domain of a pro. Jaehwan smiled when he saw the look on Pilgiu's face. He told the bald man that Pilgiu has realized that he cannot win. The bald man was surprised to hear this. He told the broker that although Jaryong's kick is good, it is not enough to defeat Pilgiu. Jaehwan understood what the man was saying. He told the bald man that he is getting a particular feeling from Pilgiu. He told him that Pilgiu is a tank. The moment he said this the huge man tore his shirt. The bald man was surprised to see that Jaehwan was able to identify Pilgiu's class. The broker told the man that he is extremely good at reading between lines. With a serious look on his face, Pilgiu told our boy that he is still a smuggler scum regardless of the trick he uses. The moment he said this, the man began to release more energy. After the adhesion, people began to awaken abilities that exceeded their limitations. However, each person awakened different talents and latent abilities. The adventurers who awakened their abilities undertook different training activities that matched their abilities and assigned roles to themselves. One of these roles is a tank. Pilgiu used a technique to make himself bigger. The skill is known as Bulk Up. He also activated a skill known as Giant Strength and Iron Skin. A tank is responsible for protecting their teammates from the dangers of the dungeon. Their role is to face monsters head-on at the front lines. Due to the fact that their bodies have been trained to the limit, tanks are able to shrug off bullets. A top-tier tank can even take the overwhelming power of missiles easily. The tanks are seen as a protective barrier. Pilgiu raised his hands up and told our boy that he will show him the power of a real adventurer. Immediately he said this, he tried to smash Jaryo. Our boy was able to dodge the attack by jumping. The attack destroyed the ground. The heavy attack shook the ground. The bald man began to shake. Before the man could fall, Jae Hwan picked him up with his jacket. He asked the man if he is alright. Jae Hwan was annoyed to see that Pilgiu was destroying his place of business. The tank walked up to our boy. He launched another attack at Jaryo. Our boy dodged the attack by moving back. Pilgiu's hand hit a wall and created a hole in it. With a smile on his face, Pilgiu asked Jaryong if something is wrong. He asked our boy to use his cheap tricks again. Jaryong told the man that he is not a fool. He assured Pilgiu that he will not fall for such an obvious trap. The moment our boy said this, Jaehwan took a look at Pilgiu. He realized that the man's physical force was around the level of a decent truck. The broker was certain that a normal human would get pulverized if they receive a punch from Pilgiu. Although Pilgiu was strong, Jaehwan did not see him as anything. He called out to Jaryong and asked him to end the fight quickly. He told the boy that his pay will be reduced if Pilgiu damages the station more. Our boy was shocked to hear this. With a smile on his face, Pilgiu told Jaryong that Jaehwan has not yet understood the situation. The man told our boy that his cheap tricks cannot work on a pro. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. He looked to the side and grabbed a metal rod. Our boy slowly inspected the rod. Pilgiu was annoyed to see this, he rushed to attack our boy. Upon seeing that Jaryong had grabbed a rod, Jaehwan told the bald man that the fight is over. The people in the society believe that tanks are unbeatable beings. However, this is not the case. The tanks have a natural enemy. This is a being that can focus a powerful and destructive force at a single point. When our boy noticed that Pilgiu had gotten close to him, he took a stance and moved close to the man. Jaryong put a large amount of energy into the rod and used it to attack the man. His attack easily destroyed Pilgiu's defense. Pilgika spat out some blood and fell to the ground. The bald man was shocked to see this. 
Jae Hwan was not surprised because he already knew the outcome of the fight. The people who can defeat tanks are damage dealers who are more skilled than them. This people have no issues destroying a protective barrier. Our boy is a damage dealer. While on the ground, Piljiu asked Jaryong to tell him who taught him how to swing. Our boy was surprised to hear the question. He told the man that he learned from his father. When Jaryong was younger, he saw his father as the greatest adventurer in the world. It was not because the man was his father. It was because the man was strong. Our boy's father's name is Yu Song. He was one of the first generation of heroes who are known as the first adventurers. To people who did not experience the beginning of the dungeon era, the first generation adventurers are a great legend. However, to the adventurers of that time it was hell. The biggest problem the adventurers had was their lack of information. They did not know the kind of dungeon they were in and the monsters that dwelled within the dungeon. The scene shifts and we see Song and his teammates facing a monster known as Gekamulath. The monster was in its adolescent form. The monster shot some acid at the man and his team. Song was able to dodge the attack by jumping, however. His teammates were not so lucky. The acid had melted their skins. Song was shocked to see this. While he was staring at his teammates, the monster sent another attack at him. Song used his staff to split the attack apart. The moment he did this, he noticed that his staff which was made from titanium alloy was melting. The adventurers of this time lacked the items and the skills to fight the monsters decently, however. Song did not give up. He rushed to attack the Gekamulath with his staff. He used the same technique which our boy used. When reinforcement arrived at the dungeon, they were surprised to see Song's staff on the monster's head. They noticed that the man was sitting next to the monster. The first generation adventurers risked their lives to carry out a trial and error. The survivors passed on their experiences and accomplishments to the next generation. They were seen as heroes. Dragon Slayer Yu Song was the name given to our boy's father. He was the first person to ever hunt a dragon and he was Asia's top ranking adventurer. While watching his father train, Jaryong looked at him with eyes that were filled with respect. Our boy respected and revered his father more than anyone in the world. He believed that his father was invincible. Unfortunately, while training, Song spat out some blood. With tears in his eyes, our boy ran to meet his father. Song raised his hand and asked his son to not come closer. According to the doctors, Song was poisoned. During his explorations, Song had come across a deadly poison. Like any other time, Song tried to overcome his problem, however, after decades of overworking himself, Song's body finally reached the limit. During this hard time, Song's colleagues who he trusted with his life took advantage of his vulnerability and took all his fortune and work. Years later, the world began to forget the name of Dragon Slayer Yu Song. The man had lost his identity as a hero after losing everything and suffering from an incurable poison. All that was left was a forgotten adventurer. The scene shifts and we are taken back to Jaryo. Our boy turned around and dropped the rod. The bald man could not believe what he saw. He could not believe that Piljiu actually lost to a young boy. Jae Hwan did not understand why the man was surprised. He told him that Piljiu is not a very good adventurer. Jaryong explained to the man that the fact that Piljiu was bragging about beating his own teammates shows that he is weak. According to our boy, there are only two reasons why a good adventurer ever retires. The first is that their body has broken to the point where they can no longer explore and the second is that they die during an exploration. Jaryong put on his jacket and told the man to fire Piljiu if he is paying him above minimum wage. Jaehwan placed his hand on the man's shoulder and told him that his payment for the job has now doubled. The man was shocked to hear this. He tried to yell at the broker. Jaehwan quickly silenced him by reminding him that he was the first to provoke them. He tapped the man's shoulder and told him that they do not do anything for free. Upon seeing the look on the broker's face, the man became nervous. He accepted Jae Hwan's offer. While drinking a bottle of water, Jae Hwan asked our boy if he has heard of the Imperial Wasp. Jaryong spat out his water when he heard the name that his boss mentioned. He asked his boss if they will have to fight the monster. He told him that it is too dangerous. The Imperial Wasp is a monster whose degree of danger is considered the highest in the whole world. The place where the Imperial Wasp laid its nest is known as the dungeon with the highest difficulty in Korea. According to Jae Hwan, it is difficult for even a top-ranking adventurer to face one Imperial Wasp. He told our boy that it is impossible for a smuggler to go to the dungeon. However, it might be possible for a white rank adventurer. In this world, the adventurers are ranked according to ores. Gemstone is at the lowest level. Copper is the next stage. Silver is after copper. Gold is after silver. Various benefits are given to adventurers depending on their rank. 
The top 100 adventurers are called rankers and they are assigned color ranks outside of the four major ranks. While watching the bald man as he beats up Piljiu, Jae Hwan reveals to our boy that the bald man told him that a huge raid took place yesterday and it is yet to be publicized. The army and seven white rank adventurers made up the attack squad. Jaryong was surprised to hear that seven white ranks were in an attack squad. According to Jae Hwan, the attack squad was made up of Korea's all-stars. The media goes crazy when just two white ranks come together. The attack squad failed to achieve their original goal of eradication. However, they succeeded at hunting down the Queen Bee. One of the seven stole the royal jelly of the Imperial Wasp and ordered a subordinate within the attack squad to smuggle it out. Jaryong asked his boss to tell him what the royal jelly is. The man explained to our boy that the royal jelly is a nutritional supplement that the wasps feed to a newborn queen. Our boy was surprised to hear this, he did not understand why a white rank adventurer would smuggle a nutritional supplement. According to Jae Hwan, the royal jelly is rumored to be able to bring a human back from the dead. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. The Adventurers Association and the government claim that all the paths to a dungeon are strictly managed. Of course, this was not true. The scene shifts and we see Jae Hwan standing in front of a large metal gate. The man placed his hand on the door and released a large amount of energy. After putting some energy into the door, the man took his hand off it. He turned to Jaryong and asked him to do his best not to die. We see our boy in a new set of clothes and we see a weapon behind him. While shaking his hand, Jae Hwan told Jaryong that this mission is going to be very annoying. Our boy did not respond to the man. He simply stared at his goggles. Upon seeing that Jaryong did not say anything, Jae Hwan blew some smoke in his face. Our boy was surprised to see this. He asked his boss to tell him why he did such a thing. Jae Hwan realized that Jaryong was thinking about the medicine that can revive the dead. He asked our boy if he is still hung up on the royal jelly. Upon hearing what his boss said, Jaryong walked forward. He told Jae Hwan that most rumors are usually exaggerated. Jaryong placed his hand on the gate and told himself that the royal jelly probably cannot cure his father's condition. Our boy knew that his father would have never lost hope if such an antidote existed. When Jaryong opened the gate, a bright light shined on him. When our boy passed through the gate, he arrived at a cliff. The cliff had a forest in front of it. After the adhesion, dungeons were created all over the world. Among these dungeons, there are two dungeons which are considered the greatest dungeons in Korea. The first is Jeju Do. It is a dungeon that fused with a volcanic mountain range. The other is fused with the Agar jungle which is located in what used to be Yuido, a place located in the middle of Seoul. Jaryong was in a dungeon known as former Borome. It is a D-plus dungeon. With Yuido at the center, the dungeon also took over other parts of Seoul. Most of it remains undiscovered and several adventurers have lost their lives trying to explore the region. According to the bald man, the subordinate was supposed to transport the item to the meeting area in Borome. However, after arriving at the dungeon, the man lost contact with the others. Jae Hwan told our boy that the man might have gotten into an accident. He explained to Jaryong that all he has to do is to simply get on site and bring back what the man had. Our boy decided to put on his goggles and leave the area. Before he left, Jae Hwan asked him to not get distracted. He told our boy that he needs to focus on his job. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. He asked the man if he thinks that he will run away. Jae Hwan blew out some smoke and told Jaryong that he is not that stupid. The man revealed to our boy that humans are not the only one who are after the royal jelly. After listening to Jae Hwan's words, our boy grabbed a rope and jumped down from the cliff. When he landed in the forest, Jaryong saw something shocking. He saw a huge footprint. Our boy remembered that Jae Hwan told him that the entire forest will be smelling the royal jelly. Jae Hwan told him that a lot of things in the forest will be attracted to the smell of the royal jelly. The scene shifts and we see a girl breathing heavily as she hid behind a tree. This girl's name is Jean Sarum and she is a first-year student of Warrior High School. Sarum is currently facing the biggest problem of her life. The girl expected to have an easy trip to a dungeon for her midterm. Instead, she is facing a monster that should have never been there. Sarum closed her eyes and prayed that the monster would not find her. To her surprise, the monster passed by her side. Sarum's test was simple. She was expected to collect some coins within the dungeon in a given time. Although this was a test used to stimulate real combat situation, the test area was the lowest rank possible. It should have been an easy test. This is because the D-plus dungeon was considered a beginner's training ground. The monsters that lived in this dungeons were weak and had low intelligence level. While Sarum was looking at her hand, she noticed that a shadow had covered her. The girl immediately realized that the monster has found her. 
Sarum looked at the monster with fear in her eyes. The monster tried to attack the girl. Sarum was able to dodge the attack by moving away. The girl knew that she could never run away from such a monster. Sarum grabbed her bow and arrow and decided to fight back. The monster she was facing is known as a titan ape and it has a danger rank of three stars. When the monster showed its head to the girl, she shot her arrows at it. Unfortunately for the girl, the ape easily blocked the attack with its hand. Sarum was shocked to see this. The monster raised its hand and tried to squash the girl. Its punch destroyed the ground. Fortunately, Sarum was able to avoid the attack by moving back. While in the air, the girl took out her arrows and shot at the ape. The attack hit the ape's chest but it did not do anything. Sarum already expected this outcome. She knew that she could not kill the monster with such an attack. She simply wanted it to let its guard down and come closer to her. While hanging its tongue out, the ape ran towards the girl. As the monster got closer to the girl, she began to imbue her magic on her arrow. The girl is a magic ranger. With a blue light in her eyes, Sarum activated a skill known as Flame Bombardment. The moment she activated the skill, the girl fired her arrow which was covered in fire at the monster. The arrow moved at an insane speed. The type of magic that can be imbued at the top of an arrow is limitless. Sarum chose this spell as her last resort because it would create an explosion of the greatest magnitude and it was strong enough to kill any three-star monster. Of course, this is only if the attack hits the monster. Unfortunately for the girl, the ape climbed a tree and dodged the attack. Sarum could not comprehend what was happening. She could not believe that the monster actually managed to dodge the attack. She realized that the ape already expected the attack. The girl did not know what to do because she could not currently replicate the attack. Sarum realized that she needed to run. The moment she had this realization, the monster came down from the tree and began to chase after her. The girl's face was covered with fear when she noticed that the monster was getting closer, as the monster was about to grab Sarum. Our boy hits its chin with an attack. Sarum turned around when she heard something hit the monster's chin. She was shocked to see Jar Young in the air. Our boy landed on a tree. He was surprised to see that the monster was not phased even though he hit it on its chin. Jar Young put his hand into his pocket and took out a tool. The moment he did this, he rushed to attack the monster. Sarum was shocked to see this. She could not believe that our boy was going for a frontal assault. The girl believed that this was impossible. She believed that Jar Young will die. The monster clenched its fist and got ready to attack our boy. When Jar Young got close to the monster, he asked Sarum to close her eyes. The girl was surprised to hear this. Jar Young put the tool in front of his head and closed his eyes. The moment he pressed the tool, a bright blinding light was released directly into the eyes of the monster. Immediately our boy landed on the ground. The ape fell on its knees and began to scream in pain. Jar Young was sad to see that he used his last tool to stop the monster. The tool is known as a stunning torch. It is made from the scales of the flickering fish that lives in deep sea dungeons. It possesses an incapacitation ability that is incredible for its price and it was loved by countless adventurers. Although this tool had an amazing effect, it was poorly used by several adventurers. This led to some adventurers losing their sight. Thanks to this, usage and production of the stunning torch is now strictly banned. After Sarum regained her sight, Jar Young moved close to her and told her that he has done enough for her. He asked the girl to take responsibility for her life. He told her that she has a few seconds to run. While running, our boy remembered something Jay Huan said to him. His boss explained to him that the bounty on smugglers is quite high. He told Jar Young that he will get stumped if he messes around carelessly. The moment our boy remembered this, he looked behind him. Jar Young was shocked to see Sarum running after him. The girl was breathing heavily as she tried to catch up to our boy. Jar Young was annoyed to see this. He believed that Sarum was chasing after him because of the bounty. While running on the trees, Jar Young disappeared from the girl's sight. Sarum was shocked to see this. She was certain that our boy was just in front of her. While the girl was looking around, Jar Young appeared out of nowhere and used his staff to push the girl down. He asked her to tell him what she wants. With a smile on her face, Sarum told Jar Young that she wanted to thank him for his help. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He told the girl that he is not a fool. Sarum revealed to Jar Young that she knows he is a smuggler. She told our boy that she wants to give him a job. The moment the girl said this, our boy looked at the logo on her clothes. Jar Young told the girl that he will not overlook her mistake the third time. He picked up his staff and turned around. He told Sarum that he has no interest in learning how crazy a silver spoon student of Warrior High School is. 
Our boy assured the girl that he would bury her the next time she gets in his way. Saram was not surprised to hear this. The girl told our boy that the bounty for smugglers is 50 million one and the bounty for poachers is 400 million one. With a look of anger on his face, Jaryong turned around. When our boy turned, he saw Saram holding a necklace. The necklace is known as and kills blood. The girl told our boy that he can buy one if he catches five smugglers. With a look of confidence on her face, the girl told Jaryong that the necklace is simply down payment. She assured him that she would give him more money once he helps her with her midterm. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. He called the girl an insane spoilt brat. He told her that she is out of her mind. Saram smiled when she heard this. She explained to our boy that it does not matter if she is crazy. She told him that he can obtain an opportunity that would change his life. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He let out a sigh. He told the girl that he already expected things to turn out like this. Saram did not understand what our boy was saying. She asked him to explain himself. As a huge shadow came over them, Jaryong looked up to see the monster. He reminded Saram that he told her that she has a few seconds to run. The two jumped to dodge the monster's attack. While in the air, Jaryong threw his staff at the girl. Saram was surprised to see this. Jaryong asked the girl to use the same skill she used on her arrow on the staff. He told her to pass the staff back to him when she is done. Saram was shocked to hear this. She told our boy that she does not have any magic energy left. Jaryong asked the girl to figure things out. He told her that he will not be able to face the ape barehanded for long. Saram began to infuse her magic into the staff. The girl did not know what to do. She only had a quarter of her magic left. She believed that her current magic energy was not enough to damage the monster. As Jaryong was distracting the monster, Saram wanted to run away and leave our boy behind. While Jaryong was running around, the girl threw his staff at him. The girl had infused every ounce of energy she had left into the staff. Jaryong carefully swung his staff. He told Saram that the staff barely has a quarter of the energy she used before. With a smile on his face, our boy told the girl that he will manage it. The moment he said this, he rushed to attack the monster. The students of Warrior High School have always been told that the most important thing when fighting a monster is sense of timing and accuracy. When the monster saw Jaryong coming closer, it tried to squash him. Our boy easily dodged the ape's hand and moved closer to its head. The moment Jaryong got close to the monster's head, he used his staff to release the skill directly on the ape's neck. The attack created a large explosion that severely damaged the ape. Our boy smiled when he saw that his attack connected. Unfortunately for him, his goggles broke. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the past. We see a younger Sarum waving to her friends as she heads into her car. When our girl gets into the car, her friends talked about how lucky she was. They knew that Sarum could get whatever she wanted. Although our girl did not like it, her friends were not wrong. She could easily get whatever she wants. The successor of Jinseong Group, a South Korean business which is ranked fourth in the country got engaged to an elf from another world. The result of their engagement is Sarum. On her way home, Sarum saw a bunch of adventurers in a bus. The girl stuck her head to the window. Although the girl was rich, she respected adventurers more than anyone and dreamed of becoming one. While Sarum was receiving training from her uncle, he told her that it is impossible for her to become an adventurer. He explained to the girl that her elf blood is weak. He told the girl that she is basically human. Her uncle turned to her father and asked him to stop pushing his daughter to become an adventurer. Saram's father whose name is Jin Sung Gyu told the man that he is not pushing his daughter. He told him that he is simply cheering her on because she has always wanted to be an adventurer. Sung Gyu told the man that Saram does not need the talent of an elf to become an adventurer. The elf told Sung Gyu that Saram's talent as a human is not bad. He told him that the girl is simply above average at best. With a smile on his face, the man told Sung Gyu that he does not need to worry. He told him that Saram is as stubborn as his sister. Immediately he said this. The girl forcefully pushed herself up. Saram's uncle told her father that his daughter will never be able to measure up to the monster rank humans. He told him that the girl will become a decent fighter if she keeps working hard. The uncle reminded Sung Gyu that his daughter was born with a lot of benefits compared to her lack of talent. Things such as wealth, name, and bloodline will make Saram's hard work useless and people will envy her. The man told her father that Saram will be isolated among her peers and she will not be able to deal with it for long. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. We see Jaryong land on the ground after defeating the monster. Saram stared at our boy weirdly. Jaryong did not understand why the girl was staring at him. While looking in amazement, Saram asked our boy if he is the same age as her. 
The moment she said this, Jaryoung realized that his goggles had broken. Our boy remembered what Jae Hwan said to him. His boss warned him to never break the goggles. He told Jaryoung that it is expensive. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He told the man that the goggles are around 5,001 in the market. The man explained to Jaryoung that the goggles stops facial recognition and changes his voice. He revealed to our boy that there are more than four spells that were casted upon the goggles. Jaryoung did not know how he was going to explain himself. While he was thinking, Sarah moves near him and asked him if he is a senior from her school. Jaryoung told her that he is not her senior, with a look of anger on his face. Our boy asked Sarah to give him the necklace. Our girl easily hands over the necklace to him. Jaryoung grabbed the necklace and took a close look at it. While our boy was inspecting the necklace, Sarah asked him if he needs more money. The girl told him that Adventurer's Education Center's tuition fees must be very high. Sarah wanted to offer to pay for our boy's tuition fee. Jaryoung quickly kills her hope by telling her that he does not attend any Adventurer's Education Center. The girl was shocked to hear this. She asked our boy about the person who taught him how to fight. Jaryoung revealed to the girl that no one taught him anything. He told her that he taught himself. Sarah screamed when she heard this. She told our boy that he is saying nonsense. She could not believe that someone who is self-taught would be able to move like Jaryoung. While the girl was shouting, Jaryoung threw a tag at her. When Sarah looked at the tag, she saw that our boy was from a normal school known as Donging High School. Our girl was shocked to see this. Jaryoung pointed his staff at the girl and asked her to give him an ID or something that proves her identity. Our boy was surprised to see that Sarah was the same age as him. After confirming her name and identity, Jaryoung kept our girl's ID in his pocket. Sarah asked our boy about why he kept her student ID. Jaryoung reminded the girl that she wants him to do something for her. He told her that his identity has been revealed. He explained to Sarah that he has to take something of hers to make sure that she does not betray him. Our girl was surprised to hear this. Jaryoung told her that he is not yet done. He took out his phone and asked Sarah to move closer to him. The moment she came close to him, our boy placed his hand on her shoulder. Sarah became flustered when she saw what Jaryoung did. She asked him to tell her why he placed his hand on her shoulder. With a smile on his face, Jaryoung told our girl that she needs to become his accomplice. He explained to the girl that an accomplice gets the same punishment as the smuggler. With a horrifying look on his face, Jaryoung asked Sarah to smile for the camera. The moment our boy said this, Sarah realized that she has gotten involved with someone more dangerous than she thought. However, it was already too late for her to change her mind. Sarah decided to smile for the picture. After taking the picture, Jaryoung asked the girl to give him the details for her job. Sarah told our boy that she needs him to collect coins. The students of Warrior High were expected to collect coins within a six-hour time limit. These coins have been placed in various locations throughout the testing area. Sarah is expected to find a coin box in a certain location and prove that she is a student. Our girl took out one coin. She told him that she simply needs another coin to pass the test. She revealed to Jaryoung that the location of the box is not far. She told him that the coin is at the old ruins of the Eugene Mall. Jaryoung was shocked to hear this. He told the girl that they did not meet each other by coincidence. He revealed to Sarah that the item he is looking for is in the same location. He explained to our girl that he is looking for something related to the Imperial Wasp. Sarah opened her mouth in shock. The girl could not believe that Jaryoung was searching for the Imperial Wasp. Our boy told the girl that he is looking for some type of honey. Jaryoung explained to Sarah that the item has a strong smell and it attracts monsters. He told her that the Titan Ape was probably also attracted to the item. Sarah became nervous when she heard this. Our boy asked her if she knows any other location where they can find the coin. Although she did not like it, the girl told our boy that the ruins is the last place left. She explained to Jaryoung that the other parties would have already taken the other coins. Our boy was surprised to hear about other parties. He finally understood why Sarah was alone. Jaryoung told the girl that the location is convenient for him. He explained to Sarah that his mission will be to help her find her coin and leave safely. Jaryoung wanted to tell our girl his price, but he is interrupted by her. Sarah tells our boy that she only has 950 million won on her. Jaryoung was shocked to hear this. Sarah took out her phone and told our boy that she can get more if he is not satisfied. Jaryoung told the girl that the amount is enough. He explained to her that he will get extra if something happens or if he has more work to do. After saying this, the two began to run. Our boy ran in front of the girl. Sarah was surprised to see how fast Jaryoung was while running. Our boy realized that he made a mistake by accepting the offer early. He realized that he could have gotten more from Sarah. Our girl decided to ask Jaryoung a question. She asked our boy if he really taught himself how to fight. 
Jaryong told her that he did not teach himself everything. Before our boy could say more, he saw two monsters in front of him. He asked our girl to get ready. The monsters are known as Chloraptors and they have a danger rank of two stars. Our boy rushed to attack the monsters. Jaryong has never officially learnt from an adventurer. The current ability he has right now is something he learnt by risking his life. The only thing Jaryong gained from someone else were the movements he witnessed his father perform when he was younger. Jaryong learnt three movements from his father. The first movement is Needle. This is done by using his speed, power, and weight to stab an opponent in a vital point. Although this might seem like a simple move, Jaryong had to learn this technique with experience, sense and talent. Our boy had perfected a technique that not even the top rankers could learn. After killing the other monster, Sarum told our boy that something is weird. She explained to him that Chloraptors usually move in groups of five. Jaryong explained to the girl that the group must have split apart because of the royal jelly. He asked Sarum to stay sharp. He told her that there could be different types of monsters in the area. While staring at the ruins from afar, Jaryong suggested that he and Sarum take a break before they enter the ruins. Our girl reminded Jaryong about her question. She asked him if he received personal training when he was younger. Our boy told the girl that he learnt by watching someone train. He told her that he was only able to learn a few moves because he was being sneaky. Sarum broke down when she heard this. Jaryong asked our girl if there is a reason why she asked the question. With a look of anger on her face, Sarum told our boy that she does not like him. Immediately she said this, she threw something at him. When Jaryong took a look at his hand, he saw a potion. He asked Sarum to tell him why she gave him the potion. This potion is known as Stamina Ample and it is a C-type. The potion is valued at 1,101. Sarum asked our boy to drink the potion in order to regain his original strength. Jaryong was surprised to see that Sarum would give him such an item after telling him that she does not like him. He told the girl that she can be harsher with her words. Our boy kept the potion in his pocket. Sarum was surprised to see this. She asked our boy to tell her why he is not drinking it. Jaryong told the girl that he wants to sell it later. Sarum was shocked to hear this. She asked our boy if he knows the price of the stamina ample. Jaryong told our girl that he can sell the potion for a hefty price of 1 million won. Sarum was shocked to hear this. She could not believe that Jaryong was thinking about a measly million won. She found our boy to be weird. Jaryong walked forward and told the girl that they need to get going. While walking, our boy thought about how weird rich kids are. When they arrived at the entrance of the mall, Jaryong reminded Sarum that their goal is not to hunt. He told the girl that they are simply at the mall to get what they want. He asked Sarum to follow his orders regardless of the monsters they see inside. With a smile on his face, our boy told the girl that he is an expert on surviving. He asked her to trust him. Sarum felt a sense of relief when she heard this. The girl had never felt this weird feeling before. She was not able to get this feeling because for the past half year, she was an outsider at her school who was unrecognized by others. The girl felt relieved because it was her first time fighting alongside a companion. When the two stepped into the mall, they saw something shocking. Sarum asked our boy to tell her what she is looking at. With a nervous look on his face, Jaryong told Sarum that he has never seen anything like this before. Our boy and Sarum saw dozens of dead monsters on the floor. Humans are beings that are much braver than they think. With the proper resolve they can stand up to any situation. The only exception to this is when they face an unpredictable situation that was not accounted for during the initial resolve. While staring at the bodies of the monsters, Sarum realized that some of the monsters are not from the area and some of the monsters are dangerous to pro-adventurers. The girl could not comprehend what happened in the mall. Our boy asked Sarum to not lose her mental state. He told her that she already knew that something dangerous would be in the mall. The reason why she was surprised was because things were much messier than she expected. Jaryong assured her that nothing has changed. While they were talking, the two noticed that a monster was moving. Jaryong immediately took a stance. The monster which was severely injured is known as a slasher lip. It has a danger rank of 2 to 3 stars. Our boy charged at the monster. Upon seeing that Jaryong was coming close to it, the slasher lip stretched out its tongue to attack our boy. Jaryong used his staff to kick the tongue away, unfortunately for him. The slasher lip caught his staff with its tongue. It used its tongue to drag the staff towards itself. Jaryong held on to the staff. When he got above the monster, he let go of his staff and latched onto the ceiling. The weapon hit the monster's body. Upon seeing that the monster was injured, Jaryong jumped from the ceiling and landed a kick directly on the monster's head. The slasher lips screamed out in pain. After defeating the monster, our boy picked up his staff and walked back to Sarum. 
The girl told Jaryong that the monster is not yet dead because of its high survivability. Our boy corrected the girl by telling her that he was the one who kept the monster alive on purpose. This is because the monster will serve as a warning alarm when someone steps into the mall. The slasher lip is a type of monster that screams to alert its allies when it feels like its life is in danger. Sarum was surprised to hear that they needed a warning alarm. She asked our boy to tell her who the alarm is for. The moment she asked this question, someone appeared on the first floor of the mall and told the girl that the warning alarm is for him. The man who appears to be tired told the girl that he was exhausted after killing the monster so he decided to rest. Sarum was shocked to see the man. She believed that he was an adventurer. She asked our boy if he recognizes the man. Jaryong grit his teeth when he heard this question. The man was surprised to see Jaryong and Sarum. He believed that the two of them were too young to be smugglers. The man noticed the Warrior High School logo on Sarum's shirt. The moment he saw the logo, he jumped down from the first floor and asked the girl if she is from Warrior High School. Sarum told the man that she is. The man smiled when he heard this. He told our girl that it is unfortunate that she has to die in such a place. Sarum was terrified to hear this. Jaryong asked Sarum to stop talking to the man like an idiot. He told the girl that the man is not the normal adventurer she is familiar with. He explained to our girl that the man is a villain who came to kill him for the royal jelly. Seeing that the man had no affiliations with his commissioner, Jaryong asked the man to tell him how he will handle things if he touches the item without permission. With an unbothered look on his face, the man told our boy that he will only have to handle things if he is caught. According to the man, he is a lucky person. The man revealed to our boy that he coincidentally heard that his comrade was smuggling something valuable. The man originally planned to ambush his comrade on his way to the meeting point. Unfortunately, things did not go as planned. The man failed to finish off his comrade. He was able to track him to the mall. However, he could not find his comrade in the mall. The insane man knew that his comrade must be hiding in one of the smuggling locations of the mall. Jaryong was surprised to hear the reason why the smuggler was not able to deliver. With a creepy smile on his face, the man placed his hand on his sword. Even without clashing with him yet, Jaryong could instinctively feel it. He could tell that this opponent was the real deal. The man was on a much different rank than the awkward idiot from earlier. Our boy asked Sarum to start searching for the coin box while he buys time. He told the girl that there will not be any monsters inside the mall thanks to the man. Sarum was hesitant to leave. She believed that she needed to help our boy. Jaryong told the girl that she is not much help to him right now. The moment he said this, the man appeared in front of him with a smile on his face. The man told Jaryong that he can hear him. The man used his sword to attack our boy. Jaryong was able to block the attack with his staff. Immediately he blocked the attack. Our boy yelled at Sarum and asked her to start running. He told our girl that she needs to be alive for him to receive his money. The moment Sarum heard this, she began to run. The man was surprised to see that Sarum actually left. With an evil smile on his face, the man told Jaryong that he made the wrong choice. While attacking our boy aggressively, the man told him that he would have increased his chance of survival if Sarum had stayed. While blocking the man's attacks, Jaryong told him that he is spouting nonsense. Our boy took a stance and gathered his energy. He used his staff to knock the man's sword away. The man was shocked to see this. He could not believe that our boy read his sword path. Before the man could swing his sword again, Jaryong landed a heavy kick on his face. The kick sent the man flying. The man crashed into a wall and covered the area in dust. The man stood up and told Jaryong that he surprised him. Our boy was shocked to hear the man's voice. The man never expected our boy to force him to use his equipment. He commended Jaryong on his skills. He told our boy that he is better than the average pro. The man realized that he had to fight properly if he wants to win Jaryong. As the dust cleared up, we see the man whose name is Yang Dogyun equipped with an item. It was a horrifying item that covered his body. Dogyun is a gold class adventurer. The scene shifts and we are taken to the station. We see Jae Hwan eating instant noodles. The man was surprised to see how good the noodles tasted. While eating his noodles, Jae Hwan noticed that the bald man was standing next to Piljiu. The broker asked the man to sit. He told him that it will be a while before Piljiu wakes up. The bald man called Piljiu a pig that cannot even pull his own weight. He told Jae Hwan that he paid Piljiu a lot of money. He could not believe that Piljiu was calling himself a former adventurer. Jae Hwan asked the man to not be hard on Piljiu. He told him that the idiot lost because he had to. Jae Hwan explained to the man that people tend to overlook the fact that adventurers do not fight humans. As an adventurer, Piljiu was trained in hunting and exploration. He was not trained to fight humans. 
It was natural for him to lose to a smuggler like Jaryo. The man turned to the broker and told him that he heard that adventurers fight among themselves. With a smile on his face, Jae Hwan confirmed the rumor. He told the man that adventurers definitely fight among themselves. As adventurers rise up in rank, they fight more because of how valuable a dungeon is. Even comrades who depend on each other many times sometimes succumb to greed and backstab each other. The bald man asked the broker if the adventurers kill each other. Jae Hwan told the man that there is no one to stop them. There are no laws implemented inside a dungeon. According to Jae Hwan, the adventurers could simply say that their comrades were killed by monsters. They do not even need an alibi. The higher an adventurer is, the more they need to train in preparation for potential fights. Jae Hwan explained to the man that Pilju lost because his class is not very high. The broker told the man that Pilju's story of assaulting a comrade is a cute idea. He told him that the fact that the idiot was caught means that it happened outside a dungeon. It was probably an argument without any equipment. The bald man was surprised to hear this. He asked the broker to tell him what an equipment is. According to Jae Hwan, an equipment is the armor and weapons adventurers take with them to hunt. With an equipment, even someone like Pilju can put up a decent fight. The man was surprised to hear this. He asked Jae Hwan if an equipment is very powerful. The broker revealed to the man that an equipment is half the combat power of an adventurer. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the fight. Jaryoung was certain that his attack went in. Our boy realized that the blade has an upper level defense. While he was thinking, Dog Yoon rushed to attack him. The man told our boy that he should not overthink things. Jaryoung quickly used his staff to block the attack. Dog Yoon told our boy that it is disrespectful to him and to his own life to overthink things in a fight. The moment he said this, he kicked Jaryoung. The attack pushed our boy back. The moment Jaryoung regained his stance, Dog Yoon appeared in front of him. Our boy was shocked to see this. The man began to attack Jaryoung fiercely. Our boy was able to block some attacks, but some of them landed on his body and injured him. Dog Yoon asked Jaryoung to fight back properly like he did earlier. The insane man knew that this was impossible. Dojian's equipment is known as Shade Jacket. It is an A plus rank armor. The Shade Jacket consumes the user's blood to support physical abilities and form an upper level of defense against impact. This equipment allows Dog Yoon to use his Berserker style of combat. While blocking Dojian's attack, Jaryoung realized that the insane man had no openings. Our boy could tell that he would die if he goes for the wrong counter strike. While Jaryoung was thinking, Dog Yoon landed an attack on his stomach. Our boy was shocked to see this. He fell to his knees. Dog Yoon began to laugh like a maniac. He told Jaryoung that he lasted longer than expected. The moment the man said this, he noticed something odd about our boy. Instead of shaking, our boy let out a sigh. He threw the jacket on the floor and stood up. He showed Dog Yoon that the attack barely reached his stomach. With a smile on his face, Jaryoung told the man that he liked the jacket. He told him that he is not as strong as he expected. Dog Yoon was shocked to hear this. Our boy explained to him that he was scared because his aura was huge. He told the man that he is pretty weak to not be able to beat a high schooler without any equipment. Jaryoung told Dog Yoon that he is simply getting carried by his equipment. The moment he said this, Dog Yoon snapped. He called Jaryoung a cocky bastard. Although the man was powerful, he was the one in a rush. Our boy knew that Dog Yoon was in a rush because he had to take him down and still find Serum to silence her. Jaryoung understood that the man would become more impatient the longer he stalled. Dog Yoon rushed to attack our boy. Jaryoung carefully read the attack and used his staff to block it. The second technique which our boy learned when he was younger was something that he could not use with his own strength alone. He has to use his opponent's strength against them and inflict a huge damage that would not be possible with his strength alone. Jaryoung gathered the energy around him and put it into his staff. He took a stance and smacked Dog Yoon with his staff. The name of this technique that even our boy had not perfected yet is Swell. The attack sent Dog Yoon flying. The man got slammed to a wall. The moment he used this technique, Jaryoung spat out some blood. Our boy was surprised to see that his attack actually worked. He had never used it in a fight before. Jaryoung never expected a pro adventurer like Dog Yoon to be a person who charges in carelessly. As Dog Yoon stood up from the wall, we see that Jaryoung's attack has destroyed a part of his equipment. Our boy asked the adventurer to give up. He told him that he cannot change his fate no matter what he does. With a creepy smile on his face, Dog Yoon called Jaryoung a cocky bastard and told him to screw off. The insane man took out a knife and stabbed himself in the chest. Jaryoung was shocked to see this. The moment he stabbed himself, his equipment began to act weird. 
Dog Yoon laughed as his eyes turned red. He assured our boy that he will kill him. The scene shifts and we see Sarum at the fifth floor of the mall. The girl had found the coin box she was searching for. Our girl placed her hand on the box and it confirmed her identity. After getting the coin she wanted, Sarum decided to return to her camp. Before the girl could take a step, the entire mall shook. Sarum was shocked to see this. The moment this happened, the girl remembered that Jaryoung held back Dog Yoon in order to allow her run. As Sarum held the coin close to her chest, she told herself that nothing will change even if she goes back. Upon remembering the terrifying look on Dojian's face, Sarum assured herself that Jaryoung would have not fought the insane man if he had no way of escaping. The scene shifts and we are shown Dojian's past. We see the man as a young student. Dog Yoon grabbed a huge boy by his shirt after beating him up. The boy began to apologize to Dog Yoon. He told him that he will never act cheeky in front of him again. Dog Yoon smiled when he heard this. The boy believed that he was a genius. From when he was young, everything was easy for him. He had talent, recognition from adults, and dominance over his peers. The only thing that Dog Yoon could not get was an entrance into Warrior High School. The boy could not believe what he was seeing. The boy comforted himself by saying that Warrior High School was simply all about money and connections. He told himself that the school picks money over talent. He believed that he would never fall behind if people were chosen based on talent. Instead of going to Warrior High School, Dog Yoon got into Ganjian High. In his current school, the boy rose to the top of his class. Dog Yoon believed that he was a selected genius in the minority. When students were checking their final exams report, they saw that Dog Yoon was first place with 966 points, while the second place got 752 points. The students could not believe that Dog Yoon was able to get such a large amount of points. They believed that Dog Yoon was on a different level entirely. At his graduation ceremony, a teacher walked up to Dog Yoon and stretched out his hand. The man congratulated the boy on being valedictorian. He told him he will become a great adventurer. The man asked the boy to not get conceited and continue to work hard. Dog Yoon accepted his teacher's handshake with a smile on his face, in the boy's head. He believed that his teacher was a washed-up trash that teaches kids. He told himself that he will become someone so great that he will be able to look down on him from a place where normal people cannot reach. The scene shifts and we see Dog Yoon trembling while he was covered in blood. The adventurer that stood in front of Dog Yoon was disappointed to see that he was forced to enter the dungeon to face such a weak monster. Dog Yoon could not believe what he was seeing. The monster took down his entire team and yet one man easily took care of it. As the man walked towards him, Dog Yoon saw a familiar stare on the man's face. He recognized this stare because it was the stare he used to look down on others as the man walked past him. Dog Yoon realized that his teacher's words was not an advice but words of comfort. The man understood that he was not the chosen one. He was simply one of the people that average people look up to. While transforming, Dog Yoon explained to our boy that his jacket was made from a live vampire. The man told our boy that he is willing to give the jacket all his blood in order to kill him. The moment he said this, we see that the jacket has completely merged with the man and turned him to a monster. Jaryoung told the man that his equipment is very dangerous. The moment Jaryoung said this, Dog Yoon appeared in front of him. The man used his claws to attack our boy. Jaryoung was able to block the attack with his staff. The moment he blocked the attack, our boy realized that Dojian's speed did not significantly increase. Dog Yoon rushed to attack Jaryoung again. He stretched out his hand and tried to use his claws to pierce his head. After fighting for a while, we see Jaryoung trembling as his body was covered in injuries. Our boy knelt on the ground and used his staff to hold himself together. Jaryoung grit his teeth as he was breathing heavily. Dog Yoon was surprised to see that our boy was able to hold out against him. He could not comprehend why someone who had a great reaction speed and amazing talent was working as a smuggler. He asked Jaryoung to tell him the reason why he does his job. Our boy was surprised to see that Dog Yoon was complimenting him. He took out the stamina ample and drank it. He told the man that he does not need to know why he works as a smuggler. Dog Yoon was not offended by this. Instead, he thanked Jar Yoon. Our boy was surprised to see that the man thanked him. With a terrifying smile on his face, Dog Yoon told Jar Yoon that he is able to stomp on a talented person thanks to him. He stretched his hand out and tried to attack our boy. Jar Yoon was able to dodge the attack. The moment he did this, he ran towards the man. Our boy was happy to see that his body was functioning properly. Dog Yoon became excited when he saw Jaryoung running towards him. He asked our boy to show him more amazing things. While running, 
Our boy realized that Dog Yun will not be able to maintain his current strength for long. This is because the man uses blood as the fuel for the jacket. Jaryong decided to bait the man into consuming more blood and use needle to end the fight. Unfortunately for our boy, Dog Yun appeared in front of him. The man told Jaryong that he is already aware of his plan. The moment he said this, Dog Yun rushed to attack our boy. Jaryong immediately realized that he could not dodge this attack. Before the man's hand could touch our boy, someone attacks him with a huge explosion. Our boy was shocked to see this. He quickly turned to see the person that saved him. He was surprised to see Sarum. Jaryong smiled when he saw the girl. He was happy to see that she did not listen to him. The attack created a hole in Dojian's mask. Jaryong put his energy into his staff and used needle to end the insane man. After Jaryong used needle on Dogyun, he got knocked out and his body reverted to its original form. While looking at Dojian's body, Sarum asked our boy if he is dead. Jaryong assured her that the insane man would not die from such an attack. He asked her to not worry too much about Dogyun. The moment he said this, he took a picture of the man. Jaryong assured our girl that Dogyun will not try to get revenge. He will not do this because his career and image will take a hit if he tries to do anything. Our boy picked up his staff and told Sarum that they are now even. The girl did not understand what Jaryong was saying. Our boy reminded her that he saved her life twice. He told the girl that she owes him. The first time he saved her was from the Titan Ape and the second time was when she decided to follow him. Jaryong told Sarum that they are now even since she saved him. He told her that he likes being generous. Sarum was annoyed to hear this. She could not believe that Jaryong did not want to thank her. She screamed at our boy and told him that he needs to learn to say thanks. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. Our boy and Sarum went into the mall to retrieve the package. After searching for a while, the two saw a bright light coming from the basement. As they went down the stairs, Sarum smelled something sweet. When they got to the basement, they saw something shocking. The man who was transporting the royal jelly had died, and he left the box containing the royal jelly open. It was thanks to this that the smell of the royal jelly was leaking out and attracting monsters. Jaryong moved close to the man to see his face. Our boy closed his eyes and said a prayer for the dead man. After saying his prayer, Jaryong turned to Sarum. He noticed that the girl was shocked by the scent which the royal jelly was releasing. Our boy asked her not to be surprised. He reminded her that he told her that she would see something special if she followed him. Jaryong decided to open the box completely in order to see what the royal jelly looks like. When Jaryong opened the box, he and Sarum smelled something beyond anything they have ever experienced before. It was a sweet and endearing smell. It was so potent that it makes a person forget what they are thinking about. Our boy finally understood why the monsters were attracted to the royal jelly. While looking at the royal jelly, Jaryong saw a sack in the box. He wondered if the sack contained another royal jelly. Our boy closed the box and told Sarum that they need to leave. He explained to her that something might creep up on them if they continue to stay. When Jaryong and Sarum arrived at the first floor of the mall, they noticed something odd. They noticed that Dog Yun was no longer on the floor. While they were looking at the floor, they heard someone call them bastards. When they turned around, they noticed that the person is Dog Yun. As he ran towards the exit, Dog Yun assured Jaryong and our girl that he will not forget their faces. He assured them that he will do whatever he can to kill them. He told them that he will make them regret their actions. Our boy could not believe that Dog Yun was still spouting nonsense even after he lost. The moment Dog Yun stepped out of the mall, he noticed that a huge shadow covered him. When the man looked up, he saw a titan ape coming towards him with its mouth open. The moment Dog Yun saw the monster, he knew that he was doomed. The Titan Ape ate Dog Yun in one go. Jaryong and Sarum were shocked to see what happened. Jaryong told our girl that it is better they leave through the back door. In the evening, we see Jaryong resting his hands on his knees. Our boy was relieved that they had finally arrived at a safe spot, seeing that it was already a bit late. Jaryong asked Sarum about her test. Our girl assured him that she still has enough time. Our boy stretched out his hand and told Sarum that it was nice to meet her. He told our girl that although a lot of things happened, they were both able to achieve their objectives. Sarum smiled when she heard this. She shook our boy's hand. After shaking hands, Jaryong turned around and slowly walked forward. While walking, he reminded Sarum to not forget about his payment. He asked her to not do anything stupid if she does not want to meet him again. While Jaryong was walking, our girl asked him if they can meet each other again. Jaryong turned around when he heard this. Our boy was quite shocked to hear this. The scene shifts and we see Jaryong return to the office. 
Jae Hwan was surprised to see that our boy looked quite rough. He asked him if he had a fun time in the dungeon. Jaryong placed the box in front of his boss and asked him to take a look at it. When Jae Hwan opened the box, he was surprised to see the royal jelly. He explained to our boy that a huge uproar will be caused if this item was released to the public. He told him that anyone can easily buy a couple buildings by selling the royal jelly. Jae Hwan commended Jaryong on his job. He told him that he will send his money to him tomorrow. Our boy did not reply to his boss. He seemed to be thinking about something else. Jae Hwan was surprised to see that our boy was quiet. He called out to him and asked him if he is okay. Jaryong told his boss that he is fine. Jae Hwan did not believe our boy. He asked him if he is thinking about the adventurer that died while fighting him. Jaryong explained to the broker that Dog Yuan did not die while fighting him. He told him that he does not feel remorseful about anything. Jae Hwan asked our boy if something else happened while he was in the dungeon. Jaryong put on his school jacket and told the man that nothing happened. He looked at the box and asked his boss if he can take the sack since it does not contain any royal jelly. Jae Hwan told our boy that he can take the sacks. According to the broker, all other items excluding the object in question belongs to the smuggler. As Jaryong put the sacks in his bag, Jae Hwan told him that he is curious about the kid who will eat the royal jelly. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He asked his boss to tell him what he is talking about. The broker explained to Jaryong that although the royal jelly can bring the dead back to life, it has a more appealing effect. The royal jelly can increase an individual's limit of talent. Our boy was surprised to hear this. According to Jae Hwan, the effects only works on people who have not reached adulthood yet. This means that the person who wants to take the royal jelly must be a promising student. The broker told our boy that the royal jelly must be for a student of Warrior High School. After hearing what his boss said, Jaryong picked up his bag and told him that he is leaving. Jae Hwan asked our boy to say hi to his father on his behalf. Jaryong told his boss that he will do it if he gets a chance. He revealed to Jae Hwan that his father has not been doing well recently. After our boy stepped out of the train station, he sees a large amount of ruined buildings in front of him. While looking at the buildings, Jaryong remembered what Saram said to him. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the dungeon. When Saram told our boy that she wants to meet him again, Jaryong asked her if she is interested in him. Our girl told Jaryong that she is serious. She explained to our boy that an entrance exam to her school will be holding in winter. Saram told Jaryong that Warrior High School will accept a handful of people. She asked our boy to apply. She told him that he has a good chance of getting in. Saram stretched out her hand and asked our boy to join Warrior High School. It is a known fact that no adventurer can explore a dungeon alone. It does not matter if the adventurer is extremely skilled. It is basically impossible for one person to combat every unexpected situation in a dungeon by themselves. In other words, a party is needed, different adventurers with different talent use their strengths to make up for each other's weaknesses. This is the best way to explore a dungeon. According to Sarum, Warrior High School has political factions in each grade. Jaryong was surprised to hear this, he asked our girl if the students fight with each other. Our girl told Jaryong that it is more serious than that. Sarum explained to our boy that her grade has two factions, two of the top three students lead each faction. One of the leaders is Diav and the other leader is an elf girl. Our boy asked Sarum if students form parties within the faction, our girl told him that they do. Jaryong realized that Sarum was not in a party because she does not belong to a faction. He asked her if the teachers do not interfere in the issue. Sarum told him that the teachers do not interfere because it is a student's responsibility to get into a party. Jaryong did not know what to say to this. Sarum knew that our boy was going to say that she was not in a party because she is not skilled. Our girl explained to Jaryong that she knows that she cannot become a great student. However, she was not so terrible that she would not be able to join a party. She revealed to our boy that students who do not belong to any faction are still able to form a party. Sarum told Jaryong that the female leader does not like her. Although the girl does not show it, she had intentionally isolated Sarum behind her back. Our boy was surprised to hear this, he asked Sarum if she stole the girl's boyfriend. Our girl told him that such a thing never happened. Sarum explained to Jaryong that she can survive her current grade as a solo adventurer, however, she will not be able to survive in future grades alone. She told our boy that she wants to employ him. Sarum believed that she might be able to survive if she has someone as skilled as Jaryong on her side. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. We see Jaryong thinking about Sarum's offer while he was on his bed. Our boy thought of Sarum as a funny girl. In the next scene, we see Sarum arrive at her destination. The girl was relieved to see that she had finally reached the dungeon barrier. This dungeon barrier is in Gangnam. 
It is the twelfth location. The moment she arrived, Sarum thought about our boy's response to her offer. Jaryong had told the girl that he will think about it. Upon seeing how Jaryong replied, Sarum was certain that our boy will not contact her. While our girl was thinking, someone told her that she is not yet late. When Sarum raised her head up, she was surprised to see her teacher in front of her. The name of the teacher who has a huge scar on his face and a metallic right hand is Kong Jungguk. He is a teacher for class 1 of Warrior High School. He is a melee combat instructor. Sarum asked her teacher if something is wrong. She told him that she still has enough time to complete the test. She did not understand why her teacher was outside standing. Jungguk revealed to Sarum that they encountered a problem. The man explained to our girl that monsters that do not live in the dungeon were spotted in certain areas. Fortunately, there were no deaths, however. Some people said that it will be impossible for them to carry on with the test. Sarum was surprised to hear this. The man told Sarum that the monsters were also in the area where she got the coin. He asked our girl if she came across any monsters during her test. With a nervous look on her face, Sarum told her teacher that her test was fine. Upon hearing our girl's response, Jungkook asked her to get behind him. The moment he said this, Sarum felt the presence of the titan ape behind her. Our girl quickly turned around. She was terrified to see the monster. She noticed that it was much bigger than the one from before. This titan ape is an adult and its danger rank is 4 stars. As Jungkook walked towards the monster, he told Sarum that the situation is strange. This is because titan apes do not live anywhere near the area. The man told our girl that the monster might have been attracted by something. The moment the teacher said this, Sarum realized that the monster might have been attracted to the smell of the royal jelly. While our girl was thinking, Jungkook reminded her to get behind him. The titan ape clenched its fist and rushed to attack the teacher. Jungkook clenched his metallic hand and took a stance. The moment he took the stance, a small amount of energy began to circulate around his hand. The teachers in the dungeon field are all former adventurers. They are usually all from Warrior High School too. People view them as abandoned adventurers who couldn't continue due to injuries. However, in their early 20s, this people received the title of rankers. Jungkook rushed to attack the monster when his hand touched the titan ape. A large amount of energy traveled from the ape's hand to its head. This attack blew up the monster's head. Jungkook was known as the fighter of tyranny. When the monster fell to the ground, the man noticed that his metallic hand was completely destroyed because it could not handle his energy. Jungkook told Sarum that she was lucky she was able to return fast. Our girl could not hear what her teacher said. She was more focused on the fact that he took down the monster with one punch. Jungkook walked up to Sarum and placed his hand on her shoulder. With a smile on his face, the man told our girl that he is relieved that she is safe. He asked her to return to the base with him. As the man walked forward, Sarum realized that people tend to overlook the fact that a young warrior can become a teacher. The scene shifts and we are taking to the practical base of the school. We see two students talking. The boy in a huge body armor told his friend that student who were rescued will have to retake the test. The other student who was sitting on the ground smiled when he heard this. He told his friend that people who asked to be rescued are weaklings. The moment he said this, he and his friend heard someone coming into the base. The boy noticed that it was Sarum and their teacher. He told his friend that Sarum is one of the weaklings he is referring to. Jungkook asked Sarum to wait. He told her that he needs to check if everyone is at the base. He explained to her that she can change into her uniform after he has confirmed the number of student. After her teacher left, Sarum let out a huge sigh. The moment she did this, someone told our girl that she is happy that she is fine. She told Sarum that her tact is quite fast. Our girl's expression changed when she saw the girl. She referred to the girl as Anisha. The girl had a boy and a girl next to her. Anisha is the girl responsible for isolating Sarum. With a smile on her face, Anisha told our girl that she was worried about her. Sarum smiled when she heard this. She told the girl that she never expected her to be worried. Anisha told our girl that she feels a bit offended. She referred to Sarum as sister and told her to not say things like that. Our girl had a grim look on her face when she heard Anisha call her sister. The scene shifts and we are taken to the past. We see a younger Sarum practicing her magic. Her uncle whose name is Zeke Esker Sarum asked our girl to try harder. He told her that she can do better. He asked her to stay focused. Sarum who was 11 years old at this time struggled to create a fireball. After practicing for a while, Zeke asked his niece to stop training. He told her that she has improved a bit since last time. Sarum felt sad when she heard this. While breathing heavily, our girl hears someone cheering for someone. When Sarum turned to see what happened, she saw another girl who was the same age as her freely controlling fire on a larger scale. 
This girl is the younger Anisha Eskerserum. She is the same age as our girl. Zeke was surprised to see this. Anisha did not look like a mixed blood, and her ability to wield magic was much better than most purebloods. The man told Sarum that her cousin is a genius. He assured her that she will forever be compared to her cousin if she continues to walk down her path. He told Sarum that she needs to be careful around the girl. When Anisha noticed that our girl was looking at her, she changed her expression. The girl had a condescending smile on her face. She was basically showing off to Sarum. While looking at the smile on her face, Zeke told his niece that she might get destroyed by Anisha if she makes the wrong move. The scene shifts and we are taken to the present. Anisha told our girl that she does not know why other students do not want to form a party with her. With a smile on her face, Sarum asked her to create a party with her if she is curious. Anisha was surprised to hear this. She told her cousin that she cannot do it because they are both ranged damage dealers. She explained to Sarum that she might consider it if they were on the same level. Our girl became angry when she heard this. Anisha told Sarum that there is no point in having two people with the same roles on the same team. With a smile on her face, the girl told Sarum that she does not need to worry. She assured our girl that there will be a retest. Sarum moved close to the brat's face and told her that she does not care about the test because she passed it. The girl told Sarum that she is incredible for doing her best, as our girl walked past her. Anisha told her not to push herself too hard. She reminded Sarum that she is going to be the one to inherit the company. Our girl grit her teeth as she walked forward. While watching Sarum walk away, Anisha asked her cousin to stop struggling with a menacing look on her face. In the next scene, we see Jaryong rush to his father's hospital room. When he arrived in the room, he saw a doctor and a nurse checking his father. Our boy asked the nurse to tell him what happened. The nurse informed Jaryong that his father had a relapse. The doctor explained to our boy that his father has an extremely rare condition. It is basically the only case in the world. Due to the fact that there is no recorded case of anyone getting infected by dragon's blood and surviving the poison, the hospital did not know what to do. Jaryong explained to the doctor that he already knows that they cannot cure his father or improve his condition. The best the hospital can do is to suppress his pain with medication. The doctor was surprised to see that our boy already knew this. He told Jaryong that their problem lies with the ingredient for the painkillers. According to the doctor, the painkillers are made from the milk of a sky tiger. It is a five-star monster. Jaryong told the man that he has enough money to acquire the milk. The man explained to our boy that money is not the problem. The man revealed to Jaryong that there is a potion which adventurers are buying recently. A small dose of the potion can increase an adventurer's strength and resistance for a long time. The ingredient for this potion is also the milk of the sky tiger. Our boy was surprised to hear this. According to the doctor, the milk of the sky tiger used to be something that anyone can acquire as long as they have enough money. This was because the milk was considered useless even though it was precious. However, things have now changed. Companies and adventurers have decided to buy up stock. Jaryong was annoyed to hear this. He stood up and asked the doctor if he cannot get enough to help a dying person. The man explained to our boy that the amount needed to help his father is equivalent to the amount that is used to make 10 potions. The doctor told Jaryong that the government would have gotten involved if the milk was needed by a large amount of patients. However, there is only one patient in the entire world that needs it. The government would never give up such a huge profit for a single person. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. He did not know what to do. The doctor told our boy that he will do what he can, but he cannot operate well without the ingredient. The scene shifts and we see our boy sitting on a park bench outside the hospital. Jaryong took out his phone and dialed a number. Our boy called Sarum. The girl stopped training when she saw Jaryong's number. When she picked up the call, our boy asked her if her offer is still available. Sarum told him that it is. Jaryong told the girl that he has no choice but to accept the deal. Our girl asked Jaryong to tell her what he wants. Our boy told Sarum about the ingredient he needs. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that she can get milk. Our boy was shocked to hear this. Sarum explained to him that her company's development team is producing the potion. She told him that the amount he needs is not much at all. Jaryong placed his hand on his head and laughed when he heard this. He found his situation to be ironic. Sarum asked him if he is available on Sunday. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He asked her to tell him why she wants to see him. The girl explained to our boy he needs to prepare for the entrance exam. In the next scene, we see Jaryong arrive at the Jinxiang Group Special Defense Research Institute. The moment our boy arrived, someone told him that he is early. Jaryong turned to see the person who spoke to him. When he turned around, he saw Sarum stepping out of her car. The girl asked him if he is feeling good. 
Our boy asked Saram to tell him what they are doing at the research facility. The girl revealed to Jaryong that they came to measure his potential. After the world changed, humanity was given access to powers beyond their capabilities. Before the adhesion, the talent that a normal human had was always rank D. In the past, a person who had a C rank was seen as a genius. B rank is seen as a superhuman. Saram explained to Jaryong that he needs to have C rank in five categories excluding magic in order to become an adventurer. Saram herself has C rank strength, B rank agility, C rank stamina, B rank intelligence, A rank in patience, and D rank in magic. Our girl told Jaryong that he has to have at least three B ranks in order to be considered for Warrior High School. Jaryong asked our girl if the evaluation is like getting a physical. Saram told him that it is a bit more complicated when one hits puberty. Our boy asked her to explain what she means. The scene shifts and we see Jaryong in new clothes. Our boy was also holding his staff. Jaryong realized that this was why Saram was asking him if he feels good. In front of Jaryong was a golem known as Gear Crone Pro. This is the version 9.22 of the golem. Jaryong swung his staff and took a stance. He decided to try his best since he was already at the research facility. Our boy had also always been curious about his potential. In another room, we see Saram and a woman watching Jaryong. The woman was surprised to see that our boy stood in front of the golem. She told Saram that most people usually get scared of the golem. This woman's name is Young Yeoman. She is a golem expert and a former adventurer. She is a researcher for Jinxiang Group. The woman took a sip of her tea and asked Saram if our boy is confident because he is preparing to be transferred to Warrior High. Saram did not know what to say to Yeoman. She did not know how to tell her about how strong Jaryong truly is. After drinking her tea, Yeoman inserted some of her energy into an orb. The moment she inserted the energy, the golem woke up and rushed to attack our boy. The talent test is usually done in the 6th to 7th year. The test takers wears a special equipment for detailed measurements. After putting on the equipment, they push their bodies to the limit in various fields. Due to this, it is hard to measure older people, because the test will not allow the examiner know if they have amazing talents or if they have trained for a long time. This is because it is difficult for them to reach their limits. Saram believed that Jaryong is almost as strong as a professional, she knew that it will be hard for our boy to reach his limits. After waiting for some minutes, Saram believed that Jaryong would already be tired. Yeoman called out to our girl. She reminded Saram that she said that Jaryong went to a normal high school and he could not get into a special high school because he failed the admissions. While looking at the golem which our boy demolished, Yeoman asked Saram to tell her the name of the school that rejected someone as talented as Jaryong. The researcher could not comprehend what was happening. She told our girl that even though the golem's difficulty is lowered a bit, it is still the same model used for pro adventurers. The researcher explained to Saram that Jaryong reads the golem's pattern after dodging a few times. He found an opening in the golem's defense and countered it. Yeoman could not believe that someone would be so talented. She revealed to Saram that Jaryong is better than the average pro with his senses alone. Saram asked the researcher about our boy's measurements. Yeoman did not know how to respond to this. She told our girl that Jaryong has not gotten to his limits. She revealed to her that even if she raises the golem's power by one or two levels, it would not change the outcome. Saram was surprised to hear this. The researcher explained to her that the best thing to do is to raise the golem's power to a 100% output. However, the researcher cannot do this because it is a felony to take off safe mode for someone who is not a professional. Saram asked the woman to tell her what to do about the measurements. Yeoman did not know what to do because this was her first time in such a situation. While the woman was trying to think, someone asked her if she is paid to do such things. The researcher immediately recognized the voice. With a look of fear on her face, the woman greeted her director. The director turns out to be Saram's uncle. Zeke asked Yeoman if he pays her to use the lab without reports. Saram was surprised to see her uncle. With a serious look on his face, Zeke asked the woman if she is doing something that she is ready to be imprisoned for. Our girl told Zeke that she was the one who asked Yeoman to help her. The man asked Saram if she is trying to give excuses to cover for his subordinate. Our girl was surprised to hear this. Zeke asked Saram to know her place. He reminded her that the company belongs to her father. He told her that she cannot take responsibility for anything in the company. Our girl did not know how to respond to this. Yeoman was surprised to see how Zeke spoke to his niece. She realized that the rumors about him were true. It is known that Saram's maternal uncle has always been cold to her since she was young. Yeoman did not understand why Zeke was acting badly to his niece. She did not see anything wrong with what our girl did. 
She believed that Sarum should be allowed to use the facility especially since they are in the weekend. A lot of adventurers who have connections to the company often use this lab. While Zeke was looking around, Jaryon called out to Sarum, he asked her if there is a problem. Zeke asked Sarum if our boy is in her class. Yeoman explained to the director that Jaryong is Sarum's friend. She told him that Jaryong failed all his admission exams last year, and he wants to be an adventurer. She told him that our boy also lost his measurement data. The researcher told Zeke that Sarum simply wanted to help a friend in need. When Zeke heard this, he took a look at the screen. The man noticed that Jaryong had destroyed the golem. He told the researcher that he will go in. Yeoman and Sarum were surprised to hear this. The researcher asked her director to tell her what he is talking about. As he walked towards the door, Zeke reminded the researcher that she said she cannot turn off safe mode. He told her that he will face Jaryong by himself. Sometimes adventurers engage in battles among themselves. This is done when it is hard to find someone's limit. In this fights, the opponent is usually a few levels above the test taker. While Jaryong was waiting inside the test area, Zeke stepped in. The man told our boy that he needs to skip the introduction because he does not have a lot of time. Jaryong was shocked to see Zeke. He did not know what he was looking at. Our boy immediately took a stance. He did not know who he was facing but his senses reacted faster than his head. Zeke was surprised to see that our boy immediately understood the situation. He told Jaryong that he will be his opponent. Our boy could tell that Zeke was in a different dimension when compared to Dagyon. No matter where Jaryong looked at Zeke from, he could not see a chance of him winning. Zeke took a stance and told our boy that he can attack him without worrying about safety. Jaryong took a stance and rushed to attack the man. Unfortunately, Jaryong did not know that Zeke was not just Sarum's maternal uncle. He is also Korea's seventh place ranker and a white class adventurer. Adventurers in the top 100 are referred to as rankers and they get colors based on their ranking. Rank 76 to 100 are given red. Rank 51 to 75 are given blue. Rank 31 to 50 are given green. Rank 11 to 30 are given black. And rank 1 to 10 are given color white. As Jaryong moved closer to the man, he became more certain that he had no openings. Our boy decided to create an opening by himself. Jaryong's plan was to attack Zeke with a single strike, containing his full force. When Zeke dodges the attack, he would use the opening to attack Zeke. Our boy gathered his energy in his staff and used it to attack the man. Unfortunately for our boy, Zeke easily blocks the attack with his bare hand. Jaryong was shocked to see this. The man told our boy that he is much more frivolous than he expected. The moment he said this, he kicked our boy in the stomach. The attack sent Jaryong flying. When our boy crashed on the ground, he touched the place which the man kicked him in. With a serious look on his face, Zeke asked our boy if he is not working hard because the fight is not real. He asked Jaryong if he really believes that such an obvious attack would work on him. While breathing heavily, our boy stood up and took a stance. Zeke told him that his first attack was an idiotic choice. He picked up Jaryong's weapon and told him that it was stupid of him to lose his weapon even though he is not unconscious. The man threw the staff back at our boy. He took a stance and told Jaryong that he has allowed him to make two idiotic mistakes. He told our boy that he will send him back if he does another stupid thing. He asked Jaryong to give up on his dreams of becoming an adventurer. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He did not understand why Zeke seemed to have some bad feelings for him. He took a stance and told the man that he will do his best. The moment he said this, Jaryong rushed to attack the man. Zeke noticed that our boy was coming at him with the same pattern. However, to his surprise, our boy stopped in his tracks and sent two ranged attacks at the man. As Zeke dodged the attacks, he understood that Jaryong used the attack to catch him off guard. However, the man did not believe that this was enough. As if Jaryong was in his mind, he told Zeke that they are just beginning. Our boy took a stance and gathered his energy into his staff. After gathering his energy, he sent the attack at Zeke. The attack turned out to be multiple ranged attacks. The man smiled when he saw this. He told Jaryong that it is not bad. The man began to use his hands to block each one of the attacks. Yeoman and Sarum could not believe what they were seeing. Yeoman wondered if she was seeing a fight between pros. She could not believe that Jaryong was not able to get into a school despite how talented he was. The woman told Sarum that although Jaryong is good, he is not perfect. Our girl was shocked to hear this. She asked Yeoman to tell her what is wrong with our boy. Yeoman explained to her that Jaryong has a detrimental weakness. She told Sarum that she is actually much better than Jaryong in this aspect. Our girl did not understand what the woman was saying. She could not believe that she had something that was better than Jaryong who is currently fighting on equal grounds with her uncle. After blocking the attacks, 
Zeke closed in on our boy and sent a punch at him. Jaryong was able to dodge the attack by moving to the side. Our boy was shocked to see the man next to him. The moment he dodged the attack, Zeke began to punch him in the stomach. Our boy screamed out in pain. He quickly regained his composure and swung his staff at Zeke. Of course, the man easily dodged the attack. He was impressed to see that Jaryong actually managed to hold on to his weapon. He gave our boy four more punches on his stomach and he gave him a heavy one that sent him flying. The punch slammed our boy to the wall. Yeoman was surprised to see this. Although she knew that Zeke was holding back, she believed that he was being too harsh. While Jaryong was on the ground, Zeke told him that he does not need to think about his loss. He told Jaryong that he was never going to win. He told our boy that the reason why he lost is quite pitiful. The man and Yeoman said that Jaryong lacks basic training. Saram was shocked to hear this. Yeoman explained to our girl that Jaryong has an exceptional talent, however, his basic understanding of attacking and defending is poor. The woman told Saram that it is as if Jaryong has never trained his entire life. Yeoman said that she is a bit disappointed. She knew that Jaryong would have been stronger if he had basic training. The moment the woman said this, Saram remembered that Jaryong once told her that he has never been trained by anyone. Zeke turned around and told our boy that he has seen plenty people like him who have the talents that everyone wants, but they do not put in any efforts. Saram felt bad when she heard this. She knew that our boy's situation was different. Zeke told Jaryong that he will give the researcher his measurements. He advised our boy to stop trying to become an adventurer. He told him that he will get killed if he continues to rely on his talent. The moment Zeke said this, Jaryong stood up and threw away his broken helmet. Our boy told the man that he is being very harsh to him. He asked him if he hates lazy people. Zeke was shocked to hear Jaryong's voice. He intended to end the fight with his last blow. He did not understand how Jaryong was moving. Our boy told Zeke that he does not care about the results anymore. He asked the man to fight him for another round. The moment he said this, he took a stance and told Zeke that he wants to show him the result of his efforts. Yeoman was surprised to see what was happening. She told Jaryong that they already have the data they require. She explained to him that he no longer needs to fight. Sarah moved close to the microphone and told our boy that they are already done. She assured him that he can get his results if he stops fighting. Zeke did not understand why Jaryong was challenging him. He told our boy that the result will not change no matter how many times they fight. He asked Jaryong if he wants him to acknowledge him. He asked him if he wants some form of praise. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. He told the man that he does not care for his praise. He explained to Zeke that he is simply pissed off. He told the man that he wants to give him a beating too. Jaryong had a separate reason for agreeing to Saram's offer. When our boy was young, he did not have anyone to teach him so he had to start from nothing. He basically taught himself everything, thanks to his natural talents. Jaryong managed to fill the lack of basics and training. Due to his experience in the field, Jaryong was able to grow stronger and do whatever he wanted. Although he was talented, Jaryong never thought that he was better than others, however, our boy was disappointed by the adventurers he met in reality, they were fakes who were much weaker than him. But Zeke was different, even with his talents alone. Zeke was a monster beyond comprehension, Zeke released a large amount of energy and told Jaryong that he will beat him till he loses the will to be angry, our boy smiled when he heard this. Jaryong did not know that his blood was boiling because he has finally met someone who he considers to be a real adventurer. Jaryong took a stance that was similar to his father's. Yeoman did not understand why their chief was entertaining Jaryong's anger. While she was staring at the screen, Saram noticed that our boy's stance was different from his usual one. When Zeke took a look at Jaryong's stance, he noticed that it was much different from his usual stance. Zeke realized that our boy was not using a stance for a staff. It felt like Jaryong was a different person from before. While Zeke was looking at our boy, he rushed to attack him. Jaryong easily closed the gap between himself and Zeke. He swung his staff with a large amount of energy. Zeke managed to dodge the attack, but it left a cut on his face. Yeoman was shocked to see this. She did not understand what was happening. She realized that Jaryong's movements had completely changed. Saram was also shocked to see what was happening. Although Jaryong's movements were more simple and rough, our boy no longer had a single opening. Yeoman was surprised to see this. She wondered about who trained Jaryong. As our boy rushed to attack the man, he remembered how he used to copy his father's movements while he was training. Zeke blocked Jaryong's staff with his hand and tried to punch him in his stomach. Our boy barely blocked the attack with his staff. He quickly swung his staff at Zeke. The man was able to dodge the attack by moving back. He clenched his fist and rushed to attack Jaryong. 
As Zeke came closer to him, our boy remembered how his father saw him imitating him. His father pat his head when he saw him. When Zeke's hand got close to him, Jaryong managed to dodge the attack. He swung his staff at the man immediately he dodged the attack. Zeke had to jump in order to dodge Jaryong's attack. While he was in the air, the man realized that he will have an opening when he lands on the ground and he will not be able to dodge our boy's attack. He decided to give Jaryong what he wants. Zeke gathered his energy and charged towards our boy. Jaryong also took a stance and attacked the man. Yeoman and Sarum were shocked to see the scale of the battle. When the two clashed, our boy lost and fell to the ground. Zeke told Jaryong that he would have won if he continued to fight with his new style. He asked Jaryong if he used his staff skill at the end as a last sign of pride. While breathing heavily on the ground, our boy told Zeke that he used the technique because he ran out of what he memorized. He told the man that he has used all the things he knows. Immediately he said this, Jaryong slowly lost consciousness before closing his eyes. Our boy realized that he ended up getting more beaten up. He was happy that he actually managed to fight to his fullest. The moment he lost consciousness, Zeke moved close to him and took a look at his face. Sarum entered the training ground and called out to her uncle. The man asked her to keep quiet. Zeke Esker Sarum is famous among the highest rankers for his sharp attitude. The reason why no one complained about it was because of his overwhelming skill. Zeke put some energy into his hand and placed his hand on our boy's head. A blue light came out of his hand. Immediately the light came out of his hand. Jeryong's face and body was completely healed. The man stood up and told Sarum that he has healed all of Jeryong's injuries. Zeke is not just a white class adventurer, he is also the greatest healer in Korea. As he walked past his niece, he asked her if Jeryong's name is Ujaryo. The girl told him that it is, Zeke smiled when he heard this, he could not believe that he was meeting Yu Song's son at his research facility. The scene shifts and we see Zeke step out of the research facility. A huge man wearing glasses told Zeke that he should have texted him if he was going to be late. The man explained to Zeke that they are going to be late to the briefing again. He told him that people will assume that it is his fault that they are late. Zeke threw his jacket into the man's car and told him that something came up with a smile on his face. The man told Zeke that he heard he was dueling a kid. He asked Zeke if he was dueling multiple people. The moment the man said this, he saw something shocking. The man saw that Zeke had a cut on his face. He could not believe that a white class adventurer got injured. Zeke did not understand why the man was overreacting. The man asked the elf if he really has a cut on his face. Zeke could not believe that the man was asking such a stupid question. He told him that it is a cut. The man asked Zeke if Jaryong is actually 16. Zeke corrected him and told him that Jaryong is 17. He stepped into the car and told the man that Jaryong is applying to Warrior High School in winter. The man was surprised to hear this. He remembered that his school actually had winter exams. He revealed to Zeke that no one passed the exam during the three years he attended the school. The man told Zeke that Jaryong might have a chance since he is able to land an attack on someone like him even though he is not yet a student. Zeke told the man that it is unreasonable to compare average people with elves. He revealed to the man that there is probably no difference between him and Jaryong. The man smiled when he heard this. He told Zeke that there will be some differences. This man's name is Kong Jianho. He is a black class adventurer who is ranked 19th in Korea. He is the leader of Nyx which is Korea's number one attack squad. With a bright smile on his face, Jianho told Zeke that he probably has an edge over Jaryong in age and talent. It has been a year and seven months since Jianho has graduated from Warrior High School. Zeke decided to not argue with the man. He told the man that it is his first time seeing his new car. He asked the man to tell him how much he bought it as they drove off. Jianho told Zeke that he just ordered for the car recently. He assured the elf that he does not spend his money recklessly anymore. Zeke asked the man to tell him the price of the car. Jianho revealed to the elf that he bought the car for 3.5 billion won. Zeke was shocked to hear this. The scene shifts and we see our boy wake up in a different room. When Jaryong looked at his body, he noticed that he had completely healed and he was no longer in pain. While he was looking at his body, Sarum enters the room holding two cups of coffee in her hand. The girl asked Jaryong to tell her why he continued fighting. She asked him if he believed that he could win. Our boy told her that he knew that he could not win. He explained to her that he got angry because Zeke provoked him first. Sarum was surprised to hear this. She told Jaryong that her uncle would not try to fight him. Our boy was surprised to hear that Zeke is Sarum's uncle. Our girl revealed to him that Zeke is her uncle from her mother's side. Jaryong finally understood why Zeke was strict to him. 
He told Sarum that she must have a good relationship with her uncle. He told her that he can tell from the way Zeke treats her. Sarum was surprised to hear this. She asked Jaryong if he knows what he is talking about. Our boy realized that Zeke was harsh on him because he was worried that a weird guy was trying to take advantage of his niece. Jaryong completely understood Zeke's behavior. Sarum explained to our boy that her uncle is a very stern person. Jaryong did not believe our girl. While the two were talking, Yeoman stepped into the room. She asked our boy if he is feeling any pain at all. Jaryong revealed to the woman that he is completely fine. With a smile on her face, Yeoman explained to our boy that even his past injuries were also healed. She revealed to Jaryong that Zeke is actually the greatest healer in Korea. Our boy was shocked to hear this. He could not believe that Zeke was a healer even though he was so overwhelmingly strong. Yeoman took out a tablet and told our boy that she just received his results. She gave the tablet to Jaryong so he could see it for himself. According to the result our boy had B rank strength, A rank stamina, A rank agility, C rank intelligence, D rank magic, and B rank patience. While looking at his results, Jaryong asked the woman if his result is good. Sarum snapped when she heard this. She called Jaryong an idiot and asked him to shut up. Yeoman did not know what to say to our boy. She wondered if he was actually trying to get into Warrior High School. In order to become a first-class adventurer, one needs to have at least be rank in their stats. However, the individual also needs a balance of stats. For example, B rank agility stats is useless if you do not have enough stamina. Even with high strength, one cannot bring out their true potential with just stats and strength. According to Sarum, it is impressive when normal people have just one stats that is C rank or above. It is a completely different thing when a person has more than two stats that are above C rank. People who have C rank in strength, agility, and stamina are one in 10,000. They are able to play their roles as combatants. A person that has three B rank stats in all three categories is one in 500,000. Sarum explained to Jaryong that he is already among the best adventurers with his stats alone. Although our girl said this, she knew that Jaryong's stats were more ridiculous than normal. She could not believe that our boy had B rank in strength and an A rank in the rest. Our boy was not just balanced, his raw stats were insane. Sarum noticed that our boy was staring at his stats. She realized that there is only one monster among the first year students of the dungeon raid department that could compete with Jaryong. She did not understand why our boy was staring at his stats. She wondered if he was not satisfied with the result. While Jaryong was staring at the result, Yeoman revealed to him that Zeke does not have a single stat that is above an A. Our boy was shocked to hear this. The researcher explained to him that stats are simply innate talent. It does not represent one current skill. According to Yeoman, even with the best talent, there will not be any difference between an A rank and A D rank if one does not train. She revealed to Jaryong that there are certain things that cannot be measured. It cannot be measured if the skill a person uses suits them. A person's battle sense and their experiences can also not be measured. Yeoman winked at Sarum and told our boy that she has seen some adventurers who have made up for this gaps through pure determination. Sarum blushed when she heard this. She was happy to see that the woman acknowledged her. Jaryong placed the tablet down and thanked the researcher for her advice. He explained to her that he was not feeling disappointed at all. He told her that he simply did not understand how stats work. Jaryong revealed to the woman that he still has a long way to go when compared with someone he knows. Yeoman was surprised to hear this. She asked our boy if the person is famous. Jaryong smiled and told the woman that the person might be famous. Our boy was referring to his father. Since Jaryong has gotten his stats, Sarum told him that he can leave. She explained to him that they will meet next weekend. Yeoman was surprised to see that Jaryong wanted to leave. She told him that it is better he visits their production department while he is around. Sarum was surprised to hear what the researcher said. She explained to Yeoman that she does not know anyone in the production department. She told the woman that her uncle will not give her his approval. Yeoman smiled when she heard this. She revealed to Sarum that her uncle has already given them his approval. Our girl was shocked to hear this. Yeoman explained to her that Zeke told her to take Jaryong to the equipment production department. The man told Yeoman to tell them that Jaryong is his guest. He asked the woman to tell them to make a weapon for Jaryong regardless of the cost. Sarum was shocked to hear this. Our boy did not understand why the girl was freaking out. According to Yeoman, high-quality weapons and armors are the dream of every adventurer. Even if the adventurer is extremely talented, when the quality of a weapon is subpar, it will not be able to withstand the power of the owner. Therefore, as an adventurer's skill increases, equipment of higher quality will be required for them to use their skill at will. Upon hearing this explanation, Jaryong understood why he needed a weapon. 
He asked Sarum if he really needs an equipment at the moment. Our girl was surprised to hear this. Jaryong explained to her that Warrior High School is still just a school. He asked her if they won't just receive usable equipment from the school. Sarum and Yeoman could not believe that our boy was spouting nonsense. Sarum realized that it is her fault for not explaining things to our boy. She told Jaryong that he would be right if her school was a normal adventurer's school. According to our girl, in order to give students an even playing field, each school implements different regulations on the equipment that can be used. Our boy asked Sarum if Warrior High School operates differently from the normal school. He believed that Warrior High School should be able to do this easily since they have the largest funds. Yeoman explained to Jaryon that their school is simply built on different principles. Yeoman turns out to be a Warrior High School graduate. She told Jaryon that there is going to be differences in talents and ability. So obtaining a good equipment is seen as an ability itself. Due to this, students are required to bring their own equipment to school. Jaryon believed that this was a stupid system. He told Yeoman that the system simply favors people who are born into wealthy families. He could not believe that it is seen as an ability to be born into a wealthy family. Sarum was shocked to hear what our boy said. Yeoman told our boy that he is correct. She revealed to him that it is actually quite possible for someone to obtain good equipment without having a lot of money. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. According to the researcher, the fact that a student makes it into warrior high school means that they can be seen as a first-class adventurer. In other words, the student has the potential to become a star. Yeoman told our boy that they will be people willing to invest in his talent as a star. She told Jaryong that many companies will become interested in him once he gets into Warrior High School. She explained to him that the companies are interested in his potential modeling gigs or a percentage of his earnings after graduation. The woman revealed to him that the companies have plenty offers in exchange for funds. With a confident smile on her face, Yeoman revealed to Jaryong that she received a scholarship from Jinseong Group and she got a guaranteed job as a researcher until retirement. Our boy clapped for the woman when he heard this. Sarum did not understand why he was clapping. The researcher explained to Jaryong that there are plenty opportunities for him to prove himself amongst his peers. However, he has to pass the test first. The woman revealed to our boy that the transfer exam is harder than the normal entrance exam. She told Jaryong that he has to do his best to prepare. In other words, it is essential to get a good equipment. The woman turned to the exit and told Sarum that she simply has to go to the underground refinery now that she has received the details. With a smile on her face, Yeoman wished our boy good luck. She told him to do his best to get into the school. The scene shifts and we see Sarum and Jaryong at an elevator door. Our boy told Sarum that a lot of people must be preparing for the transfer exam. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that she is also planning to help him with her money. Jaryong used his hand to cover his mouth and looked at Sarum like an anime character. Our girl told him that his facial expression is pissing her off. When they stepped into the elevator, Sarum tapped a button. She revealed to Jaryong that the amount of money a person has is not important when getting an equipment. She told him that the most important part is the person creating the equipment. She revealed to Jaryong that Jinseong Group Production Department is one of the best in the world. When they arrived at their destination, the door slowly opened. Before the door fully opened, Jaryong told Sarum that the differences in equipment is probably not very large. The moment he said this, our boy looked outside the elevator. Jaryong was shocked to see where he was at. The area was surrounded by lava. This place is the underground blacksmith. It is formerly known as the Boiling Abyss. With a confident smile on her face, Sarum asked Jaryong to tell her what he thinks of the forge. She told him that he is in a place where he cannot pay to get an equipment. The moment Sarum said this, Jaryong felt something terrifying behind him. Our boy quickly distanced himself from the monster. The huge monster had a jacket and a metallic hand. The monster was annoyed to see that Zeke woke him up during his weekend nap. He was more annoyed to see that Zeke did not come to the forge himself. Jaryong was surprised to see a monster talking. Sarum quickly moved to our boy's front. She told Jaryong that the monster is the head of the production department. The monster sat on the ground and took out a huge cigar. He told our boy that he is not wrong. He told him that he is both a monster and the team leader of the production department in the eyes of humans. This monster is known as the Thunder Hammer Argeus. His species are known as Elder Titans. Argeus is a Korean citizen through special naturalization. The monster lit his cigar and asked our boy and Sarum to tell him the person that Zeke wanted him to meet. Sarum reminded Argeus that he was sent the data and the footage of the battle that took place. The monster told Sarum that such things are nonsense that humans care about. He told her that he has no interest in such useless things. 
He explained to our girl that his subordinates usually take care of the footages and other things. However, they did not come to work because it is the weekends. Argius decided to do things his own way because Zeke asked him to personally make the weapon. He asked Jaryong if his weapon is inside the bag he is holding. Our boy told him that it is. With a horrifying look on his face, Argius asked our boy to hunt him with his weapon. Sarum was shocked to hear the Titan's request. She asked him to tell her what he is doing. With a smile on his face, Argius explained to our girl that Jaryong has to prove he is worth his blood, sweat, and tears. He told her that he will not make a weapon for our boy if he cannot prove himself. The Titan explained to Sarum that Jaryong is a little different from other young ones. Our boy quickly stepped back when he sensed his presence, and he had the eyes of a person who is acquainted with hunting. Jaryong also possessed a refined sense of a warrior's hostility. Argius asked our boy to try to beat him. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. He took out his staff and threw his bag on the floor. He explained to Sarum that he does not back down from a challenge. The moment he said this, he rushed to attack the Titan. Argius was surprised to see Jaryong coming at him. Jaryong gathered his energy and hit the Titan in his chin with his needle technique. Unfortunately for our boy, his attack did not do anything to the Titan. Argius's cigar fell out of his mouth. With a horrifying look on his face, the Titan asked our boy to tell him where he got his weapon from. Jaryong could not comprehend what was happening. He was certain that he hit the Titan with his sharpest needle. Although, there are several monsters our boy could not defeat in one strike. This was a completely different thing. Jaryong felt like he was hitting a mountain. Our boy quickly moved back. He felt like he was hitting something that was not alive. Sarum could not believe that our boy actually did something so stupid. All monsters are designated their danger ranks with stars. A mantis fly, for example, is a one-star monster. Any monster with one star means that it is capable of killing humans. Most monsters at this rank can be killed by an adult male with a weapon. Monsters at two stars such as the Cluster Raptor can be defeated by trained military personnel armed with guns. Three-star monsters such as the Titan Ape can be defeated by armed troops with armored weapons. In order to defeat four-star monsters such as the Democulus, ground troops are told to focus on civilian evacuation and preventing further damages. After the civilian is have been evacuated, the monsters are defeated using long-range artillery and bombing strikes. However, the upper limit of what the military can handle is four stars. Any threat that is over four stars is on the level that modern military forces cannot handle. Even if they are able to defeat the monster, it will take an extraordinary amount of firepower which will result in irreversible damages. This is why those who can handle monsters are sent in order to reduce losses, in order to deal with such threats, an attack squad made up of the best adventurers is needed. Argius is a monster whose former danger rank is seven stars. The Titan asked Jaryong to give him an answer to his question. Sarum trembled when she saw the look on the Titan's face. With a smile on his face, our boy asked the Titan if his weapon hurt him more than he expected. He asked Argius to tell him why he's so interested in his weapon. Argius pointed at Jaryong and warned him to think carefully about his response. He revealed to our boy that he made the weapon himself. Jaryong and Sarum were surprised to hear this. He stood up and crushed his cigar with his leg. He asked Jaryong to tell him why the weapon is with him and not the person he actually created it for. Sarum became nervous when she heard this. She realized that Jaryong's weapon must be at least an A-plus weapon if it was made by Argius. Such weapons would be registered in the association's database as soon as it is created. It will also have some information regarding its ownership and the exact location. Sarum knew that such weapons cannot be easily obtained by a smuggler. She wondered if Jaryong stole it from someone. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told Argius that he has no reason to tell him how he got the weapon. Sarum could not believe that our boy would act stupid in his current situation. She asked Jaryong to just tell Argius what he wants to hear. After hearing our boy's response, Argius told him that he will take his answer. He stretched out his hand and tried to slam Jaryong on the ground. The moment our boy saw Argius's hand, he immediately knew that he was going to die. He knew that he could not dodge this attack. His only way out is to block it. His needle technique would be useless because there is no weakness in the Titan's hand. The swell technique would not only be useless, but it will also kill him if he tries to absorb such an attack. Jaryong put his leg forward and took a stance. He decided to use the last technique he stole from his father. Our boy swung his staff at the Titan. When it comes to two forces ramming head-on into each other, the force that is bigger and stronger will always win, however. If the attack was not head-on, with a precise calculation of the angle and location, 
It is possible to redirect the direction of the force. Jaryong precisely calculated the attack and used his staff to push Argeus's hand away. The Titan was shocked to see this. This technique was our boy's final weapon. Serum could not believe what she was seeing. She could not believe that Jaryong actually parried an attack from a seven-star monster. After blocking the attack, our boy ran to attack the Titan. He realized that the only weakness he could utilize was Argeus's eye. He decided to attack the Titan's eye with his needle technique. Before Jaryong could reach his eye, the Titan grabbed him with his metallic hand. Our boy struggled to set himself free, but his efforts were worthless. Serum asked the Titan to not do anything to Jaryong. She told him that although Jaryong looks suspicious, he's still not allowed to kill him. She reminded Argeus that he is not allowed to kill humans without knowing their circumstances. She reminded him that special naturalized species cannot hurt humans except in situations where they are personally in danger. She told Argeus that if this rule is broken, he will lose his status as a naturalized species and he will be treated as a monster. The Titan let go of Jaryong and told the girl that he understands well. While our boy was shaking on the floor, Argeus told Serum that he now knows why Jaryong had the weapon in his hands. The Titan finally understood why Zeke woke him up from his sleep. He apologized to our boy and told him that he has a right to hold the staff. The Titan told Jaryong that he will repay him for his mistake. He took a look at his hand and saw the place where our boy injured him. The Titan revealed to Serum that it has been 30 years since he last got an injury. While helping Jaryong up, Serum asked him if he knows what Argeus is talking about. Argeus asked our girl if she knows the reason why he works for humans. Serum reminded him that he is working for humans because of the Gabiuk attack squad that hunted him years ago. The Titan told our girl that she is wrong. He could not believe that this was the story that humans knew. He revealed to Serum that the attack squad could not even touch him. He told her that he was hunted by a single human. He explained to her that the person managed to cut off his hand and even had the chance to take his life. However, the person decided not to kill him. Argeus revealed to Jaryong that the person he is talking about is his father. Elder Titans are the strongest race among the giants. They have an almost endless lifespan. The Elder Titans were not many. The number of known Elder Titans on Earth is 10. While their pure physical abilities were beyond human comprehension, they were mostly known for their ability as equipment creators. Creating equipment with special powers or artifacts is an ability that all Elder Titans were innately born with. The only other species that have this ability were the Dwarves, however. Unlike the Elder Titans, the Dwarves decided to coexist with humans. Not only did the Elder Titans decided to not coexist with humans, they viewed humans as worthless beings. The scene shifts and we are taken back 30 years into the past. We see an attack squad trembling in front of a huge green monster with a helmet. The monster looked like a Spartan. This is the Argeus subjugation operation carried out by the Gabiuk attack squad. This monster is known as Colossus B. It is an automatic doll created by Argeus. Its danger rank is 4 stars. A woman known as Osunga asked her teammate if the communication with the headquarters are still down. Sunga is a damage dealer for Team 9 of Gabiuk attack squad. Another member of the attack squad whose name is Kim Youngmo tells the woman that all magic communication lines are down. He told her that something is blocking their signals. Youngmo is responsible for utility and buffing the members. Another member whose name is Park Jongman alerts his teammates that the monster is coming at them. Jongman is the team leader and the tank of the team. The moment Jongman warned his teammates, the monster swung its sword at them. Jongman was able to use his shield to block the heavy attack. The moment Jongman blocked the attack, Sunga moved away from him. The woman jumped and moved behind Colossus B and tried to attack it from behind. She gathered her energy into her sword and swung it at the monster's head. Unfortunately for Sunga, her attack barely scratched the monster's helmet. The woman was horrified to see this. Colossus B glared at the woman as if it was looking at an ant. It used its shield to slam Sunga into a wall. Young Mo began to tremble when he saw this. He could not comprehend what was happening. Gabiuk attack squad were considered one of the best dungeon subjugation squads, however, in the Boiling Abyss, a dungeon that belongs to the Elder Titan Argeus, the team was completely useless. The team already had to deal with seven Colossus B, unfortunately for them. Each time they killed one of the monsters, another one comes out, Youngmo did not know what to do, he did not know how the other team was going to survive if even the main team could not do anything. While Youngmo was thinking, his leader asked him to get out. With a smile on the man's face, he told Youngmo that not all of them will make it out of the dungeon alive. The moment Jongman said this, 
the monster swung his sword at him. Zhang Man immediately used his shield to block the attack, he activated a skill known as Potential Trigger. The skill allows him to use all his remaining energy to increase all his physical capabilities. Once the skill's active time is over, the user will be incapacitated. The moment he activated the skill, Zhang Man used another skill known as Shield Slam. A bright light came out of his shield and he used it to slam the monster into the wall. Young Mo told his team leader that it is dangerous for him to use Potential Trigger, with his face filled with determination. Zhang Man reminded the man that they cannot all get out of the dungeon. He told Young Mo that he will not be able to defeat the Colossus B with the energy he has left. He asked the man to run away while he buys him some time. Zhang Man turned to his comrade and told him that he might still have a chance to survive. The moment he said this, Zhang Man felt something terrifying. When he turned around, he saw Argeus step into the room. The Titan wore a body armor and held a sword covered in flames. Argeus was surprised to see that his automatic doll had not yet fully gotten rid of the bugs. The moment the two men saw the Titan, they instinctively knew that they were going to die. While Young Mo was trembling in fear, Zhang Man grit his teeth and asked him to run away. Immediately he said this, he charged at Argeus with his shield. The man believed that he would be able to buy some time if he directly charges at Argeus. Unfortunately for him, the Titan simply swung his sword at him and burnt him to death. As Zhangman's body fell to the ground, Argeus told him that he is inferior. He told the man that his body and his equipment are all inferior. He could not believe that humans were the leaders of this world. He said that Earth might already be doomed. The moment Argeus said this, he saw something surprising. Young Mo stood in front of him. Although he was trembling, the man pointed his wand at the Titan. Argeus told the man that his loyalty is actually heartwarming. Unfortunately, it has no meaning. While looking at the two monsters in front of him, Young Mo wondered about how he was going to fight two monsters that even his team leader could not face. While he was trembling, a man reminded him that he told them that the dungeon is not safe. This man turned out to be Yu Song. Song who happened to be shirtless told the man that it is better if they collect information little by little and then team up to increase their chances, he asked the man to tell him the point of being the first to clear a dungeon. Young Mo was shocked to see the man next to him, he asked him for his identity. Song explained to the man that the association received their distress signal and sent out a rescue team. He told the man that he is one of the volunteers. Song was 32 years old at this time. Young Mo did not understand why the man was not wearing an armor. Song explained to the man that he had to take off his chest plate because it was too heavy. The man asked Song if he is the only one who came. Argeus turned around and was about to leave when he saw Song. Our boy's father explained to Young Mo that he is the only one that managed to get to the dungeon early. The moment he said this, the monster swung its sword at him. Song easily cut off the monster's hand with his weapon. Young Mo was shocked to see this. Our boy's father was surprised to see that there was still a Colossus Bee that was alive. He asked Young Mo if there are still more Colossus Bee. At this point in time, Song was still an unnamed adventurer that was not known by many. Only the first-generation adventurers had heard about him. Rather than focusing on honor and accomplishments, he focused on rescuing others. This resulted in his lack of fame. The man gathered his energy into his weapon and took a stance. The Colossus be rushed to attack Song when it saw him gathering his energy. The moment the monster got close to him, Song swung his weapon and used it to split the monster apart. Argeus was shocked to see this. With a smile on his face, the man said that Argeus will be a little more difficult to deal with. It is thanks to the event that took place in this dungeon that made the world learn about Song. Young Mo could not believe what he was seeing. His entire team was barely able to face the monster, and yet Song managed to split it in half with his weapon. Immediately, he defeated the monster. Song asked Young Mo if he still has some mana left. Young Mo explained to the man that he does not have a lot of mana left. He assured him that he can still buff him. Song told him that he does not need any buffs. He asked Young Mo if he can use any levitation spells. He asked him to use the spell to take his teammates out of the dungeon. He revealed to him that his teammates are still breathing. Argeus pointed at Song and asked him if he believes that he will make it out of the dungeon alive. Our boy's father released his mana and told the Titan that he will not allow him to touch anyone in the dungeon. Argeus became enraged when he heard this. He swung his sword at Song. The man tightened his grip and released a large amount of energy. He used his weapon to parry the Titan's attack. As he slowly carried his teammates away, Young Mo turned around when he heard the sound of weapons clashing. The man could not comprehend what he was seeing. Ten years after the adhesion, 
Most adventurers met a wall in their training. Their newly unlocked potential allowed them to approach the level of superhumans. The technology used to develop equipment quickly improved in order to better suit their stats. However, unlike the development in stats and equipment, the adventurers still lacked execution. The solution to this was human development. Humans needed to create a new martial arts that was completely different from common logic. Only a few people understood this in the past. Only a few researched on it. Song was one of these people. When Young Mo turned around, he saw Song fighting on equal grounds with Argeus. After blocking the Titan's attack for a while, the man took a stance and gathered his energy. He used his energy to stop the Titan from swinging his weapon. The moment he did this, he moved close to Argeus. While he was in the air, Song landed a heavy strike on the Titan. Young Mo was surprised to see this. He was happy to see that Song won. Unfortunately, his happiness was short-lived. The attack simply left a mark on the Titan's armor. While on his knees, Argeus admitted to Song that he is different from the other humans. He told our boy's father that he is good at utilizing what he was given. While Song was breathing heavily, the Titan told him that the situation would be different if his weapon could hold half of his strength. Due to the fact that Song had not made a name for himself at this point, he could not afford to buy what was considered the best equipment. The man smiled and told Argeus that it is not the first time such a thing will happen to him. The moment he said this, the man turned around to see Young Mo. He was happy to see that the healer had reached the gate and was about to take his teammates out. While Song was looking at the exit, Argeus rushed to attack him. Song managed to block the attack with his weapon. The Titan told our boy's father that his skill to block and redirect attacks is one of the best among humans. However, the axe which Song was using was much poorer than any weapon that Argeus had ever seen. The Titan told the man that his axe will be damaged even if he manages to redirect his attack. The moment he said this, he raised his sword up and told Song that the fight is over. Immediately he said this, he swung his fire sword at the man. Song grit his teeth and used his axe to block the attack. Argeus was shocked to see this. He was surprised to see that Jeryong's father did not redirect his attacks. Instead, he blocked it head on. Song took a stance and gathered his energy. The man used a skill that utilizes the strength of the opponent's attack by rebounding it back. This skill is Swell, the skill which Jaryong later learned. However, when it came to the user's physical strength, experience, and execution, Song was on a whole different level. His martial arts was that of a hero. Argeus rushed to attack the man when he saw him coming closer. According to the Titan, Song's strike killed the monster in him. He told Jaryong that the moment he lost his father, his life belonged to him. However, Song decided not to kill him. Argeus could only tremble as he watched Song stand on him. He could not believe that a solo adventurer managed to complete a dungeon, which the Gabiak attack squad failed to do. Elder Titans are beings that will never bow their heads to beings they consider inferior. However, Argeus made up his mind. He asked for time and was exiled by humans. Serum remembered how shocked the world was when they found out that an elder titan surrendered. Eventually, Argeus was given his citizenship. The fact that he did not kill anyone helped him convince the people. However, it did not change the fact that he had committed several crimes. The titan was forced to work at the equipment department in order to pay for his crimes. Serum could not believe that the dungeon was cleared by a single adventurer. This was completely different from what she learned about. Argeus revealed to Jar Young that he made the staff he is holding to honor his father. Although Song never asked for the weapon, the Titan made it for him because he deemed him worthy of holding such a weapon. Jar Young was surprised to hear this. He did not know about the story behind the staff. Although it was solid, our boy never thought that his staff had any special properties. The debt collectors also thought the same way, so they decided to not take the staff. Argeus felt embarrassed when he heard this. He revealed to Jar Young that the staff is actually only good at hitting people with blunt force. Serum did not understand what the two were talking about. Argeus explained to our boy that he made the weapon like this because his father never used a staff. Jar Young was surprised to hear this. The Titan revealed to our boy that he originally planned on making an axe. He planned on completing the axe once Song sent him the material for the blade. However, Argeus lost communication with Song at some point. The Titan did not know that our boy's father was poisoned. Since he was not able to leave the forge, Argeus decided to send Song what he had completed. Seeing that Jar Young had the weapon in his hands, Argeus realized that he would not be able to complete the weapon for the man he wanted to give. He stretched out his hand and asked our boy to give him the incomplete weapon with a smile on his face. 
the Titan told Jaryong that he will finish the weapon for him. In the next scene, we see Serum and our boy step out of the elevator. The girl asked Jaryong if he is feeling alright, our boy assured her that he is fine. He told her that he feels like he can trust Argeus. The scene shifts and we are taken back some minutes earlier. After taking a look at the staff, the Titan told our boy that he does not know the amount of time it will take him to complete the weapon. He asked Jaryong to be patient. He explained to him that masterpieces take time to be made. When they stepped out of the building, everywhere was already dark. Serum reminded our boy that there is a holiday on Wednesday. She told Jaryong that she wants him to do some practice questions for the written exam with her. Our boy told her that he is fine with it. While walking, Serum told Jaryong that his father must be an amazing person. She could not believe that his father was the one who cleared the boiling abyss dungeon. Our girl asked Jaryong if his father is in the hospital to get some rest after retiring. Our boy ignored Serum's question and walked forward. He asked her to go home first. He told her that he needs some time to think for a while. Inside her car, Serum took out her phone and searched on the Gabiek attack squad story on the Boiling Abyss dungeon. According to the article which she saw, the Gabiek attack squad successfully raided the Boiling Abyss and captured the dungeon with five members. Serum was certain that this was the story she knew about. Upon realizing that Argeus's story might be true, Serum realized that this five adventurers who were considered legends stole the achievements of another adventurer. Our girl believed that Argeus had no reason to lie to her. While remembering how skilled Jaryong is, Serum believed that it made sense for his father to be someone that is incredibly strong. Our girl was not surprised to see that some people stole Jaryong's father's achievements because there are several events like this in the past. This is because no one knows what happens inside a dungeon. While thinking... Serum remembered a famous event that took place in the past. She remembered the time when people referred to our boy's father as fake dragon slayer Yu Song, although Song was considered one of the best adventurers in Korea at this point. It was proven that all his accomplishments were the results of false accounts and blackmail. Serum remembered that Argeus's case was brought up after Song revealed that he was injured. When our girl checked an article, she saw that the Gabiek attack squad said that they were the ones who defeated the Boiling Abyss dungeon and not Song. Our girl realized that Song might be Jaryong's father. While she was staring at the article, our girl gets a message from her school. She was asked to check the results of her practical test. The scene shifts and we are taken to a teacher's staff room in Warrior High School. The staff room belongs to the dungeon raid department. A woman known as Choi Sia thanked Jungkook for helping her. She apologized to the man for not allowing him rest during the weekend. Sia is a teacher for Warrior High's homeroom 1 and 2. She is a magic instructor. Jungkook asked her not to worry about it. He reminded her that it is still her first year as a teacher. He explained to her that it is important for him to look at the result of the first year students. Sia told Jungkook that everything at the school is beyond her expectations. She told the man that the students are performing on a level that is incomparable to when she was a student. The woman asked Jungkook if he expected that the position of first place would go to a particular person. The man told the woman that the result could not have been easily predicted. Serum was also surprised to see who took first place. Currently, among the first-year students, there are three students who are considered geniuses within their class. Coincidentally, all three are half-bloods. The first is Diav Choi. Diav inherited his talent as a swordsman from his father. His father is a white-class adventurer. He inherited his magical prowess from his elven mother. Thanks to this... He is a perfect magic swordsman. The second person is Anisha Eskerserum. Anisha is a half-blood that possesses a mana pool and mana control that is better than most pure-blood elves. It is believed that she will be able to easily reach the level of Grand Magicians. The insane girl was annoyed to see the result. She used her magic to blow up the cup she was holding. The third student is a boy born between a human and an elf. The boy possessed the strength and durability of a dwarf with the flexibility and reflexes of a human. Due to the fact that he had a body that possessed the advantages of two species, this boy possessed the greatest physical body in the world. The boy's name is Tyr Velkison. His Korean name is Suk Chi Kong, and he is the first place of the second semester midterm. Sia did not find it weird that Chi Kong managed to get first place. She knew that he was as capable as the other two geniuses. The woman was only surprised because first place usually goes to Diav or Anisha. Even if the event was simply a test, Sia found it amazing that Chi Kong managed to take first place even though he is a solo adventurer. Jungkook told the woman that Chi Kong might have gotten more points because he went in alone. 
He explained to her that Shiol Kong has other qualities other than his large build. While looking at her coffee, Sia revealed to the man that she is worried about Chol King. She believed that the boy could do more because he has talent and the potential to become an amazing leader. She explained to Jungkook that Shiol Kong does not seem interested in getting to know other students. Even students from other departments are scared to get close to him. Sia told the man that this action will affect Chiol Kong later because there is a limit on what a person can do alone. She told him that it will be nice if Chiol Kong got a friend. The man told Sia that she does not need to worry about this problem. The woman was surprised to hear this. Jungkook stood up and explained to the woman that there are times when there are things going on that they do not notice. The man completely understood why Sia was worried about her students. With a smile on his face, Jungkook asked Sia to believe in Chiol Kong rather than worrying about him. He assured her that the boy will do something by himself. For days later, we were taken to the streets. At 11.30 a.m., we see two guys talking as they walk together. One of the guys talking bumps into someone and his coffee spills out. The guy turned and was about to start yelling. He quickly kept quiet when he saw the build of the person standing in front of him. To the man's surprise, Chiol Kong apologized for bumping into him. The man was terrified of Chiol Kong. He apologized to the boy and begged him to forgive him. As the two men ran away, Chiol Kong took a look at his shirt. The boy did not know why he was so unlucky. The stain on his shirt made him miss his mother. The scene shifts and we see a younger Chiol Kong asking his mother if Tag Baki is really amazing. The woman told him that the dish is quite nice. She explained to her son that she cannot make it for him because she cannot cook. The woman whose name is Suk Yubin is known for her accomplishment in Northern Europe as a famous Korean adventurer. Yubin told her son plenty stories regarding her memories of her home country. Due to this, Chiol Kong naturally grew in admiration for the Korean culture and the people. Thanks to the natural talent he had, Chiol Kong was able to get into Warrior High after passing the special transfer exam. The only issue the boy had was that he was extremely introverted. The scene shifts and we see some students talking in the class. Chiol Kong, who was at the back of the class, began to think of ways he could join their conversation. The boy wanted to talk to the boys in front of him, but he was not confident in his ability to speak the Korean language. He wondered if the boys would make fun of his pronunciations. This is a common worry that a lot of introverts have. Even if they know how to speak the language, talking to others is not easy for them. Chiol Kong was annoyed to see that he had such a meek personality, the boy let out a sigh out of frustration. The boys in the class were terrified when they heard Chiol Kong sigh. They quickly apologized to him for speaking loudly and left the class. Chiol Kong did not understand what was happening. He did not know why the boys apologized to him. Thanks to his shy personality, the boy unintentionally became a lone wolf in the first semester. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. While walking in the street, Chiol Kong saw some boys going into a PC cafe. The boy remembered that his mother told him that she went to karaoke and PC cafe with her friends. She and her friends used to play a lot of games and order tons of food. Chiol Kong decided to check the cafe out. Inside the cafe, the boy struggled to register himself. He did not know how to operate the machine. Next to the boy was a person on a call. The boy on the call asked someone to tell him when she will arrive. While struggling to register himself, Chiol Kong turned around to see people behind him. Everyone seemed to be waiting for him to finish. Of course... No one could complain when they saw his build. Upon seeing that he is holding up the line, the boy decided to leave. He did not see any point in being at the cafe alone. Before he could leave, someone explains to him that he cannot register as a member at the current machine. The person told him that he can only put in his account details so that he can be charged. He will need to register at another place. Chiol Kong was surprised to hear this. The person talking to the boy turns out to be Jar Yong. With a smile on his face, our boy told Chiol Kong that he will show him how to register. The scene shifts and we see Jar Yong showing Chiol Kong how to register his name in the cafe. After showing him how to register, our boy told Chiol Kong that he will need to go back to the machine at the front to pay. He told him that he can sit anywhere and start playing once he pays. Chiol Kong thanked our boy for his kindness. Jar Yong noticed that Chiol Kong could fluently speak Korean even though he was a foreigner. He was quite surprised to see that Chiol Kong was acting like someone who has never been to a PC bang. While sitting, Jar Yong took out his phone. He was annoyed to see that Serum had not yet arrived. He texted our girl to know what she was doing. Serum apologized to our boy for running late. Jar Yong felt bad that he arrived to the PC bang early. He realized that he should have gone to the black market first. 
the scene shifts and we are taken back a few days earlier. We see our boy holding an unknown item. Jaryong found this item when he checked the sack that he took from the mission Jaewon gave him. The item felt quite smooth to Jaryong. He decided to get the item appraised later. Our boy knew that it would not be smart for him to sell anything relating to the Imperial Wasp. He realized that it would be better for him to sell Serum's necklace if he needs some money. Serum's necklace is known as Enkil's Blood. The item is gotten from one of the three disasters of the Agar jungle. The monster is known as the Tyrant of the Land. Its name is Enkil. Over the past decades, countless number of attack squad have been created and sent to attack and kill. There hasn't been a single attack squad that succeeded in subjugating it. The best that they have managed to do is to collect a couple of loose scales and an extremely small amount of blood. Due to this, after the government forbid the hunting of Enkil, items relating to the monster became worth fortunes beyond comprehension. Jaryong had planned to meet up with Serum and later go to the black market at night to sell the item. Unfortunately, Serum had now messed up his plan. While Jaryong was thinking, Chiol Kong moved close to the chair next to him and told him that the space is the only space left in the PC Bang. Our boy was not surprised to see that the place was packed. He told Chiol Kong that it is expected because they are in the afternoon on a weekend. He asked the boy to sit down. He told him that he is not expecting anyone else. Chiol Kong inserted his username and logged into the PC. The boy did not see any special games available to play. He noticed that his system at home actually has better specs than the computer in front of him. It turns out that Chiol Kong is actually a gamer. While trying to set up a game, Jaryong looked at his computer and asked him if he is playing Heroes of Chaos. The boy told him that he is. Jaryong was surprised to see that Chiol Kong is around the same rank as him. Our boy asked Chiol Kong if he wants to join him. He told the boy that the people he usually plays with are not available right now. Jaryong asked Chiol Kong if he wants to play a ranked game with him as a duo. The boy was surprised to hear this. Within some small regions in Seoul, there are abandoned pieces of land called scars. During the adhesion, areas which could only be described as cities were destroyed. Although a lot of these areas were restored, areas closer to dungeons were left alone. The abandoned areas between the walls that surround the dungeons and cities also serve a purpose. In a situation where monsters manage to get over the walls, they can act as a second protective measure. However, within the last 20 years, there haven't been many cases where monsters have managed to leave the walls on their own will. The scene shifts and we see a man in a surveillance room giving someone confirmation to move. The moment he gave the confirmation, a medium-sized monster transport special vehicle began to move. Inside the vehicle, we see the driver complaining about his life. He could not believe that he was stuck driving a truck while his friends were earning a lot of money from hunting. The woman wearing an eye patch asked the driver to stop complaining. This woman's name is Jo Yenna. She is 31 years old. She is a special operator of the Adventurers Association and a former Gold Class adventurer. She retired because of her eye injury. Yenna told the driver that he can quit and go back to hunting if he wants. She asked him to tell her why he is actually working as a driver in the first place. The man is also a special operator. His name is Sun Changwu and he is 22 years old. He is a former Bronze Class adventurer who is perfectly fine. Changwu did not know what to say to the woman. Yenna reminded the man that he barely got his adventurer's license and his skills are not good enough for him to form a decent party. She asked Changwu to not forget the reason why he is working for them. Changwu told the woman that she did not need to say it in such a terrible way. He told her that he was simply complaining. Yenna revealed to the man that she has gotten tired of his complaining. While driving, Changwu and Yenna felt a sudden vibration. Changwu was surprised to see this. He asked Yenna if one of the monsters they are transporting has gotten out. The woman told him that it is impossible for such a thing to happen. Yenna stepped out of the car and ordered Changwu to tell their headquarters that they stopped to check the vehicle. The moment she closed the door, Changwu reported the situation to the headquarters. He told them that they simply stopped for a quick car check. After the man finished reporting, he wondered if something might happen. He quickly removed this thought from his head. He was certain that Yenna will be fine because she could have become a ranker if not for her injury. While he was thinking, someone's blood splashed on the window of the vehicle. The moment the blood splashed on the vehicle, someone stepped inside the vehicle, believing that it was Yenna. Changwu welcomed her back. He told her that she did good. To his surprise, a woman with white hair and yellow eyes thanked him for welcoming her. She told him that nothing was hard to do. This mysterious woman had torn Yenna apart. 
The woman told Chang Wu that Yina was quite good for a government worker. However, her injury gave her a disadvantage. The woman picked up a tablet to see the list of the monsters at the back of the truck. While Chang Wu was shaking, the woman asked him if something is wrong. With a horrifying look on her face, the woman asked the man to start driving if he does not want to die. The scene shifts and we see Jar Young and Chi Ol Kong celebrate after they won their match. The two boys receive their foods immediately they finish their matches. Jar Young asked the boy if he is enjoying his food. He told him that they are really good at cooking at this place. Jar Young was surprised to find out that Chi Ol Kong is the same age as him. He explained to Chi Ol Kong that he does not look old. He told him that he simply has a big build. Our boy asked Chi Ol Kong about where he is schooling. Before Chi Ol Kong could answer, he and Jar Young heard a loud sound. The people at the cafe were surprised to hear this sound. They wondered if something exploded. Outside the building, we see a boy recording a truck that crashed into a building. This is the special truck containing monsters. The boy's friend told him that the driver must have been drinking while he was driving. He told the boy that they should call the authorities. The boy was more interested in recording the event. He assured his friend that someone would have called the authorities already. Above the building where the accident happened, we see the mysterious woman making a call. The woman was asked to return back to base. The woman was surprised to hear this. She told the person she was talking to that she wanted to crash the truck in the middle of Gangnam. The person told the woman that adventurers will soon flock to the site of the accident. The woman assured the person that she will not get caught. Upon seeing that the person did not respond, the woman accepted the order. She told the person that she will return immediately. The woman informed the person that she has already woken the monsters up. Immediately she said this. We see some monsters tear the truck open and jump out. Everyone in the area was horrified to see the monsters. The monsters turned out to be horn horrors. The number of their horns increased based on their growth. Their danger rank can drastically change depending on the number of their horns. Before leaving, the woman asked the person on the phone if someone bet that 50 people will die. With a creepy smile on her face, the woman bet that 100 people will die before the rescue squad can arrive. Immediately, they saw the monsters. People began to run. A chubby boy who could not run fast got caught immediately. When the boy who was recording the accident and his friend heard how the boy was screaming, they froze in their steps. Before the monster could get to the boys, Jar Young appeared in front of it and used his leg to land a heavy blow on its face. The two guys were shocked to see Jar Young in front of them. Our boy's attack sent the monster flying. Jar Young turned to the two boys and asked them to start running. The boys were surprised to hear this. They immediately regained their senses and began to run. The moment the boys left, Jar Young took a look at the monster in front of him. He recognized the horned horror. Our boy believed that he could handle the situation because the horned horror only had one horn. While he was staring at the monster, another monster threw a bike at him. Our boy managed to dodge the attack by bending his head. When he looked up, he saw a horned horror with two horns. He moved close to the monster and landed a hit on its face. The attack did not phase the monster. It used its hand to attack our boy. Jar Young dodged the attack by moving back. The average lifespan of a horned horror is five to six years. Most of them die before they get the chance to grow another horn. However, about 8% of their population gets a second horn, the ability to repopulate, and a longer lifespan. They also gain strength beyond anything that can be considered normal. The horned horror in front of Jar Young raised its head and screamed out. Although the monster was fast and strong, they were not beyond something that our boy could handle. Jar Young was certain that he could take the monsters. While looking at his leg, which was shaking, our boy realized that the problem with the monsters was their durability compared to Pilju. This monsters were three to four times tougher. Our boy also had a huge disadvantage. He did not have his headgear, staff, accessories, and armor. He was just in regular clothing. Jar Young knew that he could easily take the monsters if he had an equipment. While he was thinking, a horn horror rushed to attack our boy. Jar Young managed to dodge the attack by moving out of the way. The monster's attack crushed the wall it hit. It took its hand out of the wall and glared at Jar Young. The monster has a danger rank of three stars. Upon seeing that the horn horror was aiming for him, Jar Young looked for a weapon around him. Our boy found a do not enter sign. He removed the sign itself and took out the rod. The moment the monster saw Jar Young taking out a weapon, it rushed to attack him. Our boy immediately took a stance and put some energy into the rod. He tightened his grip on the rod. To his surprise, the monster jumped over him. Our boy quickly turned around. He did not understand what was happening. 
The monster ran to meet some boys who were behind Jaryo. The three boys were frozen in fear. The moment the monster landed on the ground, it rushed to attack them. When it comes to the danger rank of a monster, the difference between two and three stars is very large. But when it comes to their destructiveness, they are both monsters beyond human comprehension. Humans have no choice but to slaughter them. But even if a skilled adventurer was to deal with the monsters, there is a limit to what the adventurer can do without equipment or supportive magic. The only exception to this are those who train their inhuman physiques to the max. They are the best of tanks. Chiol Kong is someone like that. The boy appeared out of nowhere and caught the monster's punch before it could land on the little boys. He grit his teeth and sent the monster flying. The monster quickly regained its balance. Although Chiol Kong managed to push the monster back with his pure strength, he knew that he could not severely damage a three-star monster without any equipment. The monster stood up and screamed at Chiol Kong. While it was screaming, Jaryong appeared behind it. Our boy was annoyed to see that the monster ignored him. He used needle to pierce the monster at the back of its neck. Chiol Kong was surprised to see this. The monster fell to the ground and died. Our boy took a look at Chiol Kong. Immediately, he killed the monster. While they were staring at each other, the two boys heard a loud explosion. When they turned to the direction of the sound, they saw the nearby buildings destroyed. Jaryon was surprised to see that the monsters could cause such a destruction in just one minute. Chiyo Kong explained to our boy that it will take a few minutes for the rescue team to arrive. Although the emergency alarm went off, it will still take some time before the rescue team arrives because no one expected such an accident. Chiyo Kong knew how to use taunting call. It is a basic skill that every tank should know. The tanks scream at a much higher frequency, thereby attracting the attention of every monster that is nearby. As someone dreaming to become an adventurer, Chiyo Kong already made up his mind. He was willing to attract the attention of the horde to himself until the rescue team arrives. However, the boy could not ask Jaryon to help him. He did not know how to tell a boy who he just met to risk his life with him. All they have done is play video games for a couple hours with each other. Chiyo Kong asked our boy to go inside. To his surprise, Jaryon asked him to scream. He told the boy to attract the monsters to them. Chiyo Kong warned our boy that things will become much dangerous once he does this. Jaryong asked him to do it. He reminded him that he was going to use the skill even if he did not say anything. Our boy explained to Chiyo Kong that he would have thought of his choices if he was alone. He told the boy that he does not need to think about it since he is not alone. Chiyo Kong was surprised to hear this. Jaryong told the boy that he is very good at games, especially when it comes to protecting others. The moment he said this, our boy realized that he was acting like an adventurer even though he did not mean to do it. He remembered how impressive his father was as an adventurer. Our boy did not hate the feeling of being an adventurer. He decided to do his best since things have gotten to this point. Jaryong turned around and told Chiyo Kong that they do not have the time to chat. He asked the boy to activate his skill. The scene shifts and we see a woman trembling as she hid under her desk. The woman was hiding from the horned horror in her store. As the woman was shaking... The monster sensed her presence. It removed the desk and moved close to the woman. Before the monster could touch the woman, Chiyo Kong activated his taunting skill. His voice echoed in the area. The horn horror stopped moving when it heard Chiyo Kong's voice. The woman did not understand what was happening. While leaving the area, the mysterious woman heard Chiyo Kong's voice. She stopped walking and turned around. The woman wondered about who created the sound. After using his skill... Chiyo Kong raised his hand up and took a stance. The moment he did this, the monsters in the area arrived at his location. A horn horror with two horns pointed at the boy. Immediately it did this. The other horn horrors with one horns rushed to attack Chiyo Kong. The first monster that got close to Chiyo Kong attacked him from above. The boy used his arm to block the attack. He clenched his fist and gave the monster a heavy punch. The attack sent the monster flying. The moment he took care of the monster... Other horned horrors rushed to attack him together. While its subordinates were attacking the boy, one of the horned horror with two horns sent something in the area. The monster quickly looked up. The moment it raised its head, it saw Jaryong jump from the top of a building. Our boy landed in front of the monster. Immediately he landed on the ground. Jaryong saw that they were two horned horrors with two horns. While he was looking at the monsters, Jaryong noticed something strange. Our boy saw two horned horrors next to the vehicle they broke out of. He saw the monsters putting dead people into the truck. Jaryong realized that this was the reason why there wasn't a lot of dead bodies in the street. 
While he was looking at the monsters, the two horned horrors rushed to attack him. One of them was already in front of him and was about to slam his head. Our boy let out a sigh when he saw the monster. He remembered what he and Chiyo Kong spoke about earlier. The scene shifts and we are taken back some minutes earlier. Chiyo Kong explained to Jaryong that they cannot win if they fight with their usual methods. He told our boy that they are both close range fighters and they do not have any range support. He reminded our boy that they also don't have any equipment. He told Jaryong that they might hold each other back in their current situation. Due to their situation, our boy and Chiyo Kong had no choice but to make use of any advantage they have. Chiyo Kong decided to take the weaker horn horrors because he is a tank. He asked Jaryong to take the stronger monsters because he is a damage dealer. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. Our boy dodged the monster's attack and appeared in front of the other horn horror. The monster tried to punch Jaryong's head. Our boy easily dodged the attack by bending his head. While he was below the monster, he launched several attacks at a crazy speed. The moment he did this, he moved past the monster. The horn horror was surprised to see what Jaryong did to its body. Our boy turned around to see the monster. He noticed that the attack he used was much weaker than his needle technique. Although it was much weaker, Jaryong was certain that the attack would have finished the monster if he used it with his original staff. Even though he did not know the material that was used to make his staff, our boy knew that it was ridiculously strong. With an ordinary road sign that was made out of aluminum and iron alloy, there was not much that our boy could do. The horned horror rushed to attack our boy. As the monster came closer to him, Jaryong realized that he is slowly understanding something. Our boy remembered how Zeke fought with him with his bare hands. Excluding a couple of blows, Jaryong noticed that most of Zeke's attacks were neither fast nor strong. He realized that Zeke's attacks were simply slowing down his movements. When the monster got close to Jar Young, it swung its hand at him. Before its hand could touch him, our boy landed a quick attack on its face. The moment he did this, the monster tried to attack him again. Our boy dodged the attack by going low. He tightened his grip and attacked the monster's head. In the worst of conditions, even the smallest mistake can cost a person their life. However, Jar Young did not care. He decided to use this chance as an opportunity to grow and improve one step at a time. Jaryong smiled when he saw that his attack landed on the monster. He managed to destroy one of the monster's horns. He went low and hit the monster on its knee. The horned horror tripped and fell to the ground. The other horned horror rushed to attack our boy when it saw this. While remembering Zeke's movements, our boy imitated him and dodged the monster's attacks carefully. After his father, Zeke was the only strong person that Jaryong met. After fighting the overpowered elf, Jaryong developed a fourth skill. The skill is known as Harpoon Rain. The technique allowed our boy to land several attacks on the monster's body at a frightening speed. The monster fell to the ground after receiving Jaryong's attack. The moment the monster fell to the ground, the other horned horror with a broken horn grabbed our boy's leg. Jaryong was shocked to see this. The monster slammed him on the ground. Our boy spat out some blood as he slowly pushed himself up. While breathing heavily, Jaryong told the monster that two versus one is not fair. Our boy reminded himself that he is not fighting a fair fight against humans. Immediately he said this, the horned horror raised its hand up and tried to slam our boy to the ground. Before the monster could land its attack, Chiyo Kong appeared out of nowhere and gave it a heavy blow to the face. Jaryong smiled when he saw this. He said that good teamwork is also a skill. Next to the fight was a huge building. Inside the building, we see someone secretly recording Jaryong and Chiol Kong. The man could not believe that our boy and Chiol Kong managed to take care of several horned horrors on their own without any equipment. This man's name is Cho Dong Yoon. He is 23 years old. Dong Yoon is a college student and the president of the Dungeon Research Club. Dong Yoon was quite surprised to see that he was able to record the fight. He told his friend that he is very happy that he stayed behind to record the fight. Dong Yoon's friend was surprised to hear what he said. He reminded Dong Yoon that he only stayed behind because he was too scared to run. Dong Yoon became embarrassed when he heard this. While also recording a video, the man whose name is Kim Chang Hyun told his friends that Jaryong and Chiol Kong actually look younger than them. Chang Hyun told Dong Yoon that our boy and Chiol Kong are already as skilled as gold rank adventurers due to the amount of two stars and three stars horned horrors they faced. Chang Hyun believed that Jaryong and Chiol Kong are students of Warrior High who have not yet made a name for themselves. Dong Yoon asked his friend if he can create a thumbnail with a laptop. 
Chang Hyun was surprised to hear this. He asked his friend if he wants to upload the fight right now. Dong Yun told Chang Hyun that he wants to upload the video before the news gets released to the public. He assured his friend that he can get a few million views with the video. The scene shifts and we see Chi Ol Kong looking around. The boy was surprised to see that the rescue team had not arrived. Fortunately, he and Jar Young had already defeated all the monsters. While he was looking around, our boy called out to him. He apologized to Chi Ol Kong for interrupting him while he is looking cool. The boy felt embarrassed to hear this. Jar Young stretched out his hand and asked Chi Ol Kong to give him a hand. The boy pulled Jar Young up and asked him if he is okay. Our boy told Chi Ol Kong that he is actually quite hurt. He told him that he has a couple of fractures all over his body. Jar Young assured the boy that he feels better than he expected. With a smile on his face, Chi Ol Kong commended our boy for defeating the two star horned horrors. Our boy did not understand why Chi Ol Kong was praising him. He reminded the boy that he took on nine monsters on his own. He reminded him that he also helped him to deal with his own monsters. Chi Ol Kong felt embarrassed when he heard this. He told our boy that he is more impressive because he faced two three star monsters on his own. He asked Jar Yong to tell him about the school he goes to. Our boy was surprised to hear this. Chi Ol Kong was shocked to see how skilled Jar Yong was. He told our boy that people told him that other schools in Korea were not worth mentioning. The moment he said this, Chi Ol Kong apologized to our boy. He explained to him that he is not trying to insult his school. He told him that this is what he usually hears other people talk about. The moment he said this, Jar Yong realized that Chi Ol Kong was from Warrior High. Our boy was not surprised to see this. He believed that it will be more odd for someone as skilled as Chi Ol Kong to not be from Warrior High. Our boy asked Chi Ol Kong to tell him his rank in the school. The boy was surprised to hear this question. Jar Yong asked the boy to tell him the amount of people within his age who were stronger than him. Chi Ol Kong did not know how to answer this question. He revealed to our boy that he is not really close to the other students. He explained to Jar Yong that he has taken a couple of tests which don't really have anything to do with his actual skills. He told our boy that he believes that he is ranked in the middle. Jar Yong was surprised to hear this. He could not believe that Chi Ol Kong would be ranked much lower than he expected. Our boy became worried that he might be rejected before he even gets a chance to do anything. While he was thinking, Jar Yong saw a horned horror standing on the truck. He asked Chi Ol Kong if the monster is simply just going to watch them. Our boy told Chi Ol Kong that the monster was the only one that was not affected by his taunting skill. The boy was surprised to hear this. He asked Jar Yong if something is different about the monster. While remembering how the monster was putting the bodies of humans into the truck, Jar Yong told Chi Ol Kong that nothing is special about the monster. He revealed to him that there is something in the truck. Chi Ol Kong told our boy that it is better they watch the monster for now. He knew that it will be easy for him and Jar Yong to take care of a single horned horror. The moment he said this, something hit the truck. The monster raised its hand out and grabbed the leg of the horned horror. Our boy and Chi Ol Kong became nervous when they saw this. They quickly took a stance. The monster inside the truck pulled the horned horror into the truck. The horned horror tried to resist but it still got dragged in. With a nervous look on his face, Jar Yong asked Chi Ol Kong if the horned horror is currently being eaten right now. The moment he said this, Chi Ol Kong remembered something. Horned horrors are among the many species that live in a tribal society. Those with two horns act as the parents and chief. They are usually leading a horde of ten around them. The horned horrors combine with other tribes. This allows them to reproduce and increase their numbers. However, there is a limit to this kind of increase in population. Within the cruel environments of a dungeon, the horned horrors are at the bottom of the food chain. Thanks to stronger predators, their numbers are maintained. However, there are rare occasions where a mutant defies the odds and develops three horns. This mutant is not a leader of a small tribe. Instead, it is a king that leads thousands, unfortunately for Jar Yong and Chi Ol Kong. A horned horror with three horns came out of the truck. The monster is known as Horned Horror Rex. Its danger rank is estimated to be five stars. The moment it came out of the truck, the horned horror saw our boy and Chi Ol Kong. It swung its hand and sent an attack at them. The attack was as red as blood. The attack separated our boy and Chi Ol Kong. The two had to jump to dodge the attack. While he was in the air, Jar Yong saw the horned horror next to him. The monster covered its hand in its red energy and attacked our boy. Jar Yong tried to use the rod to block the attack, but it got destroyed by the monster. The moment it destroyed the rod, the horned horror landed a heavy blow on our boy. Jar Yong spat out some blood when he received the attack. The attack knocked Jar Yong down. Immediately he saw this. Chi Ol Kong rushed to grab the monster. He tried to raise the monster up, unfortunately for him. 
the horned horror stood its ground. Chiol Kong was shocked to see this. He added more energy to his body, however. This did not change anything. The monster grabbed him and raised him up. Chiol Kong was shocked to see what was happening. The horned horror slammed the boy to the ground. Chiol Kong's body shattered the ground. These two boys are considered geniuses. They were destined to reach the top naturally. However, they could not face this monster with their current strength. Even if they were to bring out everything they had, there was still a great gap in experience and growth which the boys could not cover. The horned horror raised its leg up and was about to crush Chiol Kong's head as the rain slowly drizzled. Jaryong forcefully raised his body up. He asked the monster to not think of touching Chiol Kong. The moment the horned horror heard this, it fired an attack at Jaryong. The attack hit our boy and heavily damaged him. The moment it attacked our boy, the horned horror sensed something. The monster detected an overwhelming presence in the area. Before the man known as Yusong got sick, there weren't many who knew much about him. In this world, there isn't a single person who knows about what Song left behind. The scene shifts back and we see Jaryong standing. Our boy had different lines next to his eyes and he was covered in an unknown energy. Eleven years ago, a man made a confession at a press conference. This man is Song. Song asked the people of Korea to forgive him for all the mistakes he has made. This statement shook the entire world. Saram was watching the video of our boy's father's confession. This was 12 hours before Jaryong and Chiol Kong fought the horned horrors. The truth which Saram learnt last Sunday was all she could think about. Due to this, our girl spent the next two days reviewing records of the past. Saram could not comprehend why Song was framed. Of course, she knew that there were several people who wanted to take the place of the strongest adventurer who had lost his power. However, what she could not understand is how the situation was handled. Song's problem began with the accounts of multiple victims. The case which the victims built up was quite shocking. Thanks to the forged data and reports which the fake victims released, the opinion of the public was split apart. Even with this, Song's public image was still good. Saram was surprised to see that Song actually apologized for sins he did not commit. She believed that it would have been better to fight to the end, however, due to the fact that Song acknowledged all the allegations against him, even the supporting voices turned their backs on him. Song became a fake and a liar overnight. Saram could not understand why the man would acknowledge the fake news. She knew that acknowledging the charges would be like adding oil to the fire. While watching the video again, Saram noticed that there was something off about Song's expression. It looked as if Song had accepted his fate. He did not look like someone who was interested in fighting. Our girl realized that something else was going on which she did not know about. While looking at Song's details, our girl saw something shocking. According to the information she saw, Song had no family members. Saram did not understand what was going on. She wondered if Jaryong is not Song's real son. She quickly removed this idea from her head. She realized that it made more sense for our boy to not be related to Song on paper because other people could come for him. While thinking, Saram wondered if Song acknowledged all the allegations because Jaryong might have been involved. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. We see Jaryong looking at his body. At this moment, our boy was not aware of what was going on in his body. The one thing he was sure about was that his body could move. This was all Jaryong needed to know. While he was looking at his body, the horned horror rushed to attack him. To our boy's surprise, he could follow the monster's movement. The moment the horned horror got close to him, Jaryong landed a heavy punch on its face. This attack injured the monster. It grit its teeth out of anger. Before it could react, our boy began to attack the horned horror more aggressively. The monster could not do anything. It could only receive the attacks. The horned horror raised its leg up and tried to attack our boy. Jaryong quickly moved back when he saw the monster's leg. Upon seeing that our boy was far away, the monster fired its energy at him. Jaryong was able to easily dodge the energy blast by going low. The moment our boy dodged the attack, the horned horror appeared in front of him and tried to land a kick on him. The monster covered its leg and its energy, to the monster's surprise. Jaryong received the attack in his body and used swell to hit the monster on its face. This attack sent the horned horror flying. The monster got slammed to a building. While looking at the rubble, our boy realized that his attack was not enough to defeat the monster. However, he was certain that he had created a weakness with his last two blows. He realized that he simply needed to land a blow on the monster's chin with needle. Jaryong took a stance and clenched his fist. 
He was certain that he could kill the monster in his current state, unfortunately for Jaryo. His power-up came to an end immediately he said this. Our boy was shocked to see this. He did not understand why such a thing would happen to him in his current situation. While he was looking at his body, the horned horror jumped down from the building. Our boy did not know what to do. His entire energy left his body in an instant. The horned horror rushed to attack Jaryong out of anger. Before the monster could reach our boy, someone threw the truck at it. The truck hit the monster and pushed it back. The person turns out to be Chiol Kong. While he was doing his best to catch his breath, the monster tore through the truck and rushed to attack him. When it got close to the boy, it clenched its fist and landed a heavy blow on the boy. Chiol Kong managed to block the attack with his hand. The attack pushed Chiol Kong back. The monster moved close to the boy again and got ready to attack him. Chiol Kong couldn't raise his hand. The boy was already tired. The reason why adventurers have different roles is because everyone has a role that works best for them. Even if their bodies break down, they still manage to stand until the end. This is the role and duty of a tank. Before the monster could land its attack on the boy, Jaryong moved close to them. The horned horror was shocked to see our boy. Jaryong clenched his fist and landed a heavy attack directly on the monster's head. Using the split chance a tank creates to land the greatest attack possible is the role and duty of a damage dealer. Our boy's attack destroyed the monster's head. Chiol Kong caught Jaryong before he could fall. While doing his best to stay conscious, our boy saw the rescue team arrive at the scene. He told Chiol Kong that the rescue team has perfect timing. The boy laughed when he heard this. It did not take an hour for the world to hear about the story of two boys defeating the monsters that came out of a stolen vehicle. The news of the two heroes shocked Jae Hwan and the entire world. In the next scene, we see a younger Jaryong getting his injury cleaned by his father. Our boy told his father that he is fine now. He asked his father to stop cleaning the wound because it will get better later. Song told his son that he needs to properly treat an injury regardless of how small it is. He explained to Jaryong that an injury will worsen if they fail to treat it simply because it hurts, upon hearing what his father said. Our boy remembered that Song gets injured when fighting monsters in dungeons. He asked his father if he is doing well. Song told his son that he is also scared of getting injured. He explained to Jaryong that he feels pain when he gets injured and he gets scared when he bleeds a lot. He revealed to Jaryong that he always does his best to hide his pain. He told our boy that other people will get hurt if he does not do his job, simply because he is hurt. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. He saw his father as an admirable person. He wanted to grow up to become like Song. Jaryong wanted to share this with his father, but he quickly shuts up. Although he did not know the reason why, Jaryong knew that his father did not want him to become an adventurer. Song always advised his son to find a different path. The man always looked sorrowful and regretful whenever he mentioned this. The reason why Jaryong never asked his father for his reason was because he always believed that Song would tell him one day when he grows up. Unfortunately, life had other plans for Song. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. We see Jaryong at a hospital. When he opened his eyes, our boy said that he feels nostalgia. Someone sitting next to Jaryong asked him if the words are aimed at him. Our boy was shocked to hear the person's voice. He quickly turned to the side. To his surprise, Zeke was in his hospital room cutting an apple. The elf brought a basket full of fruits for Jaryong. He told our boy that the reason he passed out last time was because he willingly gave up. Jaryong immediately raised his head and asked Zeke about why he is in his hospital room. The moment our boy raised his head, he felt a large amount of pain in his body. Zeke warned Jaryong that it is better he refrains from moving for the time being. While our boy was shaking in pain, Zeke informed him that his surgery was successful. He revealed to Jaryong that he incurred injuries that should have put him in a coma. He told our boy that he will be fully healed by the end of the month. He asked our boy to simply focus on his recovery. He told him that he has a lot to get ready for. Jaryong told Zeke that he has a question for him about last time. Before he could ask his question, Zeke told Jaryong that he knows his father. He revealed to our boy that he has worked with Song. The moment he heard this, Jaryong swung his hand at the elf. To Zeke's surprise, our boy simply took the apple he was cutting. Jaryong thanked the elf for the apple. Our boy noticed that Zeke was surprised. He asked the elf if he believed that he was going to hit him. Zeke told our boy that he simply didn't have the reaction he expected. While eating the apple, Jaryong explained to the elf that he simply wanted to know if he knew his father, due to the fact that Zeke was acting different from the time they met. Jaryong was able to deduce that the elf and his father were more than just mere work companions. With a horrifying look on his face, Jaryong asked Zeke to leave, 
or to cut off his hand with the knife in his hand to prove his point. The elf was surprised to hear this. Jaryong asked Zeke if he expects him to say something like that. He apologized to the elf. He told him that he was simply trying to sound realistic. Zeke told our boy that his impression was spot on. He told Jaryong that he expected him to react more emotionally once he heard the news. Jaryong stood up and explained to Zeke that he would have gotten an emotional reaction if he had come three years earlier. At that time, our boy's mind was filled with anger. He was adamant in getting revenge on the people who put his father in his current state and the people who did nothing to help him. Zeke asked Jaryong to tell him what changed his mind. Our boy explained to the elf that he simply matured and prioritized better things. Jaryong explained to Zeke that his thoughts were insane. He told the elf that he is not even strong enough to defeat him. Our boy did not know how he was going to get revenge with his current skills. Jaryong threw his apple into the bin and revealed to Zeke that it is more important to him to get enough money to pay his father's hospital bills until they find a way to cure him. He told the elf that he is willing to do whatever it takes. With a serious look on his face, Jaryong told the elf that he will do anything in his power to destroy anyone who gets in his way. Zeke assured our boy that he has no intentions of interfering in anything. He told our boy that he simply came to ask a few questions. He asked Jaryong to tell him why he is not registered as Song's son. He asked our boy to tell him the person who took care of him after his father fell sick. Jaryong revealed to Zeke that his father raised him as a single parent. He told the elf that there are a lot of people who would try to hurt him if they find out that his father is Song. He revealed to the elf that he grew up alone. Zeke decided to accept our boy's answer. He asked Jaryong if he knows Duganog. Our boy told Zeke that he does not know anyone with that name. Zeke revealed to our boy that it is not a name of a person. He told him that it is the name of the world-ending dragon. It is the dragon that poisoned Song. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. Duganog is the world's most dangerous elder dragon. A dragon is a creature feared by people around the world. During the adhesion, the walls were finished with the help of otherworlders. And with the sudden increase in adventurer's quality, dungeons and monsters were no longer considered a danger to the survival of humanity. However, there were exceptions to this rules. Being strong enough to destroy the walls, a dragon is an example of such beings. There were stronger, smarter, and slyer than other species. It wasn't rare for a higher race to show hostility towards humans, but among this higher races, the dragons were the most dangerous. They did not treat humanity with disinterest or hatred. Rather, they saw humans as a target to rule and extract from. The biggest mistake the dragons made was that they underestimated humans. According to Zeke, instead of driving humanity to extinction, they hoped that humanity wouldn't be able to overcome dungeons and would die naturally. After all the law and order had disappeared from the world, the dragons were going to play God in exchange for protection from danger. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. He told Zeke that the dragons could not see the future. Zeke explained to our boy that humanity was able to persevere and clear dungeons with the appearance of adventurers. Once things didn't go their way, the dragons decided to take things into their own hands. They showed off their power and threatened humans around this time. Song appeared. With the appropriate strategy and the determination to go through with it, Song proved that dragons could be defeated. News about the defeat of the dragons spread throughout the world and changed everything. Jaryong told Zeke that he also learned about this. He reminded him that the dragons went into hiding after Song's victory. Zeke corrected our boy by telling him that the dragons simply changed their strategies. He told him that dragons are sly and they can change appearance. According to Zeke, once the dragons realized that they could not defeat humans with power alone, they changed their appearance and began to integrate themselves into human society. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. Zeke stood up and walked up to our boy. He told him that he wants to share a classified information with him because he is Song's son and because he intends to become an adventurer. He revealed to Jaryong that Duganog is one of the leaders of the dragons and Song was following him before he got sick. Zeke explained to our boy that he might be able to make an antidote for Song if he manages to defeat Duganog. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. Zeke told our boy that he must become stronger as an adventurer if he wants to join the fight. He assured Jaryong that he will create an opportunity for him to kill Duganog. In the next scene, we see Jaryong looking at a note which Zeke gave him. While looking at the note, our boy remembered what Zeke told him. The elf told Jaryong that he can forget everything he told him if he doesn't trust him. Our boy did not understand what Zeke was saying. He did not see a reason why he should not join the elf. He assured Zeke that he would love to make use of the opportunity. 
Zeke told our boy that he understands him. He told our boy that he is not the one who gets to decide if he wants to join them. He asked our boy to climb to the top if he wants to get a chance to fight. Jaryon was shocked to hear this. Zeke explained to our boy that dragons are sly beings, and they have fully integrated into human society. They hide behind facades and wait until they see a perfect chance. According to Zeke, even if a person obtains evidence and reveals it to the world, there is no point if you cannot capture them. Once the dragons are exposed, they will simply find a new place and hide again. Once they do this, all that follows is fear and unrest. In order to prevent this, you need to be clean and quick, in other words, before the dragons can run away and hide. One need to get rid of them in an instant. Zeke took out a paper and revealed to Jaryong that they have been preparing a team to capture Duganog for a couple of years. He stretched out his hand and told our boy that the adventurers are trustworthy and skilled enough to take on a dragon. He told Jaryong that there won't be a spot for him if he is not strong enough to stand alongside the other adventurers. Jaryong became nervous when he heard this. According to Zeke, in a plan to hunt a dragon, if there is someone that can drag down the team, it would not only mean the failure of the mission, it will also be a factor that can put everyone's life in danger. Jaryong became worried when he heard this. He asked Zeke for the amount of time he has before the mission begins. Our boy believed that the other adventurers will not wait for him. Zeke revealed to our boy that they have not been able to identify where Duganog is. He told Jaryong that they expect to find the dragon in two years' time. He explained to our boy that they will not wait for him once they are ready. The elf walked to the door and told our boy that he does not care what he thinks about him. He told Jaryong that it is fine if he does not trust him and never wants to see him again. He assured our boy that he will hunt down Duganog. After saying this, the elf left. The scene shifts and we see Jaryong washing his face in a sink. Our boy could not believe that there is a way to cure his father. Jaryong's body was shaking when he thought of this. Our boy was not scared that he will not be able to participate in the mission to get revenge for his father. Jaryong was shaking in excitement. He assured himself that he is going to make it. Jaryong has been waiting his whole life without a single silver of hope. Now he has the chance to do something about it. For the first time in his life, our boy felt a small flame starting to build inside him. It filled Jaryong with excitement. While he was cleaning his face, Yeoman stepped into his room. The woman was surprised to see that our boy was already awake. She walked up to him and asked him if he is feeling any pain in his arm or any other part of his body. Jaryong revealed to the woman that he is feeling some pain in his muscles. Yeoman realized that our boy was yet to meet the doctor. She revealed to Jaryong that he will feel sore for some time. This is because they had to rebuild our boy's arm from the bottom up. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. He asked the researcher to explain what she means. Yeoman revealed to our boy that his arm was in a critical condition when he got rescued. Any wrong move made in surgery could have led to the amputation of our boy's hand. But thanks to Zeke participating in the surgery, they were able to rebuild the arm. Our boy was shocked to hear this. While looking at his arm, Jaryong remembered something. He asked Yeoman about Chiol Kong. The researcher revealed to Jaryong that Chiol Kong checked out the day he arrived. She told our boy that Chiol Kong has an incredible recovery speed. Our boy noticed something odd when he heard this. He wondered about how long he has been in the hospital. While he was thinking, Yeoman asked him if she can take a picture with him. Our boy bent his body and took a picture with the woman. After taking the picture, Jaryong asked Yeoman if he can leave. The woman told him that he can. She advised him not to leave through the main doors because he might get in trouble. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. Yeoman revealed to him that the entire hospital is filled with reporters. She told Jaryong that the reporters are trying to interview him once he checks out. Our boy did not understand what was going on. He asked the woman to tell him why reporters want to meet him. Yeoman realized that our boy did not know that he went viral. She took out her phone and showed him the video of him fighting the horned horrors. She told Jaryong that hundreds of people would have died if not for him in Chiol Kong. Thanks to his newfound fame, everyone became curious about our boy. Due to this, the reporters have been coming to the hospital non-stop for a few days. Yeoman gave Jaryong her bag. She told our boy that Saram asked her to give him the bag. According to the woman, Saram asked our boy to use the item in the bag to meet her at the back of the hospital. Our girl asked Jaryong to use the item if he does not want to reveal his identity. Jaryong was surprised to see what Saram did for him. He was certain that the item will be equipped with an identification disruption spell. To our boy's surprise, Saram kept an ordinary rope in the bag. Jaryong realized that our girl wanted him to use the rope to climb down through the window. Unfortunately for our boy, he did not have a lot of options, he used the rope to go down. 
while he was slowly moving away from the hospital, Yeoman asked him to not worry about the picture. While waving at our boy, the woman told him that she will post the picture once he becomes a famous adventurer. Jaryong awkwardly waved back to her. The scene shifts and we see Saram inside her car. While she was checking her phone, our boy got into her car. He asked her if the rope was her only choice. Saram asked our boy if he wants to get caught by the reporters. Jaryong did not know what to say. Inside the car, our boy saw a bag containing clothes. He asked Saram if she went shopping. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that the clothes are for him. She told him that she also bought a new phone for him because she assumed that his old one would already be destroyed. This gesture really touched our boy. He looked at Saram like an anime character that is thankful. Our girl was annoyed to see the look on his face. She asked him to stop looking at her in such a weird way. Saram was surprised to see the video of Jaryong taking down the monster. She could not believe that the accident happened right in front of him. Jaryong told our girl that life is full of accidents and incidents. He asked her to tell him where they are going. He told her that he actually wanted to get some rest today. Saram understood our boy's point. She explained to him that they only have time today. She told him that they have to go today if he wants to get proper measurements for his clothes. Our boy told her that he already has clothes here. Saram explained to him that she is talking about the clothes he will wear as an adventurer. Our girl told Jaryong that he is quite lucky. She revealed to him that the world's best tailor agreed to create an armor for him. The material of an armor can be separated into three categories. The first is clothes, it is a material that normal clothes are made of, it has the worst physical defense capacities. However, thanks to the ease of being able to cast supportive spells on clothes, it is usually used by healers and magicians in the back line. The second material is metal, while its toughness is second to none, it is quite heavy. Due to the fact that metals from dungeons are much stronger because of their high density, it is impossible to withstand the sheer weight without incredible strength and stamina. According to Serum, the best material is leather. It is not too heavy, but it is still solid. It is the best material for close-range damage dealers. Jaryong told our girl that he will start using an armor in his missions. While he was trying to set up his new phone, Serum asked our boy to tell her how he was able to defeat the monster. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. Serum asked Jaryong to tell her how he and Chiol Kong managed to defeat the Horned Horror. Our boy asked Serum to watch it online. He told her that someone already uploaded the video. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that the video did not record everything. She explained to him that the video only shows him and Chiol Kong fighting single-horned and double-horned horrors. She told our boy that the video does not have the scene where he fought the five-star horned horror. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. He could not believe that the monster was a five-star monster. Our boy knew that the monster was too strong for it to be around three-star. Jaryong knew that it would be impossible for him and Chiol Kong to face a five-star monster even if they were perfectly ready. Jaryong became more curious about the mysterious power he received. He did not understand how he was able to get stronger. Saram asked our boy to give her an answer. Jaryong told our girl that he does not know how he defeated the monster. He told her that it simply just happened. Our girl was surprised to hear this. She did not understand what Jaryong was saying. This is because even professional adventurers have to form a team if they want to take down a five-star monster. Due to the expression on his face, Saram could tell that our boy was not lying. She could not believe that Jaryong actually managed to defeat a five-star monster. Our girl was annoyed to see how talented Jaryong is. She asked our boy to be careful. She told him that things are going to get tiring for him very soon. Jaryong told her that he is aware of the situation. Saram explained to our boy that he has other things to worry about other than the reporters. She told him that he and Chiol Kong are the center of everyone's attention. According to Saram, Chiol Kong's identity was exposed to the media. The poor boy had to do different interviews for four days straight, and he even got casted in a couple TV shows. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that Chiol Kong always avoided talking about him in his interviews. He even refused to share our boy's name without his permission. The moment she said this, Jaryong remembered what he told Chiol Kong after they took care of he horned horrors. Our boy had asked Chiol Kong to do him a favor. He asked the boy to tell people that he does not know the full details of what happened in the area. Jaryong explained to the boy that he does not want to have his identity revealed. Chiol Kong assured our boy that he will go along with his idea. Saram asked our boy to tell her when he got close to Chiol Kong. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told our girl that he does not know. Saram asked our boy to stay low until he can take the transfer exam. Jaryong asked our girl if there is a reason why he has to lay low until the exam. The moment he said this, our boy received a message from Jae Hwan. 
His boss asked him if he is still alive. He told Jaryong that he will take care of his father for him. Jaehwan asked our boy to tell him where he is. Jaryong revealed to his boss that he just got out of the hospital. He told him that they need to talk later in the night. Saram let out a sigh and revealed to Jaryong that she has been looking into the transfer for him. She told him that the exam gets more difficult the more she reads about it. According to Saram, the chances of passing the exam in the last five years has been 100 to 1. Jaryong told our girl that some people take the exam just for the sake of taking it. He told Saram that most people who took the transfer exam were probably all worse than her. Our girl was annoyed to hear this. Jaryong assured her that her skills are not bad. Saram asked him to shut up. When they stepped out of the car, Saram told our boy that he is not wrong. She assured him that he is probably one of the best in the exam when it comes to skills. She asked Jaryong to think of things from a different perspective. She asked our boy if he really believes that people who lack skills will do things on their own. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He immediately understood what Saram meant. He asked her if the weaker people team up. Our girl told him that he is correct. According to Saram, most students are second-generation adventurers. Either one or both of their parents are adventurers. It is likely that this parents have connections to each other. This parents can meet with each other and create parties for their children. Most of the applicants are from this parties. In a condition like this, if our boy's identity gets exposed, he will immediately become everyone's target. Saram explained to Jaryong that he can actually enter her school with his accomplishments. She told him that he will probably be given special admission. Jaryong declined this offer. Our boy told Saram that there are probably people who have passed the exam on their own. He assured her that he will beat the rest of the applicants and pass on his own. Our girl was surprised to hear this. She liked the fact that Jaryong was feeling motivated, but she felt like something was off. While she was thinking, our boy looked around the building and asked her for where the bathroom is. He told her that he needs to change his clothes. Saram asked our boy to meet her in a hallway once he is done changing. The scene shifts and we see Saram walk up to a secretary. She told the woman that she has an appointment with the CEO. The secretary immediately recognized our girl. She asked Saram to wait a moment. When the woman used her office phone to call her boss, another person seemed to pick up the phone. After hearing what the person said, the secretary apologized to Saram. She told our girl that the CEO has an urgent event he needs to attend. Saram was surprised to hear this. She took off her glasses and asked the woman to not joke with her. She told her that she heard that the CEO does not have any reservations today. The secretary informed Saram that the CEO promised to compensate her for her time. Our girl was annoyed to hear this. She told the woman that the issue is not about money. She explained to the woman that she needs the armor for a transfer exam at Warrior High. While she was talking, someone stepped out of the CEO's office. The person told our girl that she looks familiar. She tried to remember Saram's name. Our girl was surprised to see who was in front of her. There is a saying amongst adventurers, the current generation is different from us. Although this may not be true for everyone, it is known that adventurers of later generations are able to reap the rewards of the early adventurers. The first generation adventurers sacrifice their lives to come up with the strategies that are used today. On top of this, technology and skills have also advanced. However, what differentiates the current generation from the first generation are the conditions they are born with. The surviving first generation adventurers settled down and had a family. They managed to pass everything to their children. They passed on their talents and also gave their children a high-level education since they were little. When people ask who benefited the most from the first generation, most people would point at Han Gaeon. Gaeon did not remember our girl's name, but she was certain that Saram is a first-year student of her school. With a smile on her face, Gaeon asked our girl if she knows her. Of course, there was no way Saram did not know who the current president of the student council is. Gaeon told our girl that she doesn't want to waste her time. She revealed to Saram that the CEO is her uncle. She told her that she is the urgent event that her uncle was referring to. She told our girl that she understands that she is angry because her appointment was cancelled. Saram became nervous when she heard this. Gaeon asked Saram to simply think that she willingly gave up her spot. She asked Saram to tell people that she yielded her spot to her. Our girl clenched her fist out of anger. Even though this was complete nonsense, Saram could not do anything. She was well aware of the power which the student president had in Warrior High School. Our girl had also heard of the infamous stories regarding Gaeyoon. While she was thinking, Jaryong came to meet her. Our boy heard what Gaeyoon said to Saram. He immediately knew that Gaeyoon was Saram's senior. He told our girl that they don't have a choice. Upon hearing what Jaryong said, Gaeyoon decided to thank him. Before she could say anything, our boy told her not to thank him. 
With a serious look on his face, Jaryong asked the girl to get out of his sight. Gaeyun was shocked to hear this. She told our boy that he has some guts. With a smile on her face, Gaeyun asked Jaryong to tell her who he is. Saram decided to intervene. She wanted to explain the situation to her senior. Before our girl could say anything, Gaeyun gently moved her hand. The moment she did this, Saram felt someone stab her in the chest. Saram was shocked to feel this. She fell to the ground. Gaeyun told our girl that she did not ask her a question. While breathing heavily, Saram placed her hand on her chest. She was shocked to see that she wasn't cut. Gaeyun asked our girl to know her place. She asked Saram to stay where she is. Our boy told Gaeyun his name. He told her that he is 17 years old and his blood type is O. He told her that his height is 180 centimeters and his favorite food is sausage and vegetable stir fry. He revealed to Gaeyun that he is transferring to Warrior High. Our boy told the senior that he is actually a bit disappointed. Gaeyun was surprised to hear this. Jaryong told the girl that he is sad to see that there are people like her who sit on a high horse at Warrior High. Saram was shocked to hear what our boy said. Gaeyun was annoyed to hear what our boy said. She moved her hand again. The moment she moved her hand, Jaryong felt like he was stabbed multiple times. Our boy quickly moved back. Immediately Jaryong stepped back. Gaeyun told him that she actually doesn't dislike people like him. She told our boy that she only respect people who have the ability to back up what they're saying. She asked Jaryon to stop acting tough when he could not even get into the school through regular admissions. Our boy smiled when he heard this. He rose his head up and used the same technique on Gaeyun. He used the technique to stab her in the eye. Jaryon told the girl that this is his first time using the technique. He asked her if he has lived up to her standards. The moment he said this, we see that Jaryon actually used the technique to stab Gaeyun all over her body. The girl was shocked to feel this. Before she could do anything, someone called out to her. The man stepped out of his office and asked Gaeyun to tell him what she is doing. This man turns out to be the CEO. His name is Han Songwar. He is a former adventurer. He is currently an armor designer. Songwar asked his niece to tell him why she came to visit him without telling him. The man was shocked to see that Gaeyun picked up his interphone while he was on a call. The girl was the one who asked the secretary to send Saram away. Songwar reminded his niece that it has only been one week since her last incident. He asked her if she wants her father to be angry with her. Songwar turned to Jaryong and Saram. He apologized to them for Gaeyun's behavior. He told them that the girl has a tendency to act on her own. Saram stood up and told the man that he does not need to apologize. Our girl was quite relieved to see Songwar. She was happy to see that someone who could handle Gaeyun had come to save them. Saram was surprised to see that the president of the student council was even worse than the rumors. Gaeyun only cares about skills. She doesn't even remember the names of the other students unless they are on par with the student council. While she was staring at Gaeyun, Jaryong asked our girl to come closer to him. He asked her to tell him who Gaeyun is in her school. The girl did not seem like a normal senior to our boy. Saram revealed to Jaryong that Gaeyun is the president of the student council. This means that she is the strongest person in the school. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. Students of special schools are given temporary licenses. It is called a gemstone. People at the gemstone rank have gotten permission from the Adventurers Association to enter a dungeon with the supervision of a pro-adventurer. With this license, students can use their time during breaks and weekends to explore lower difficulty dungeons with pro-adventurers. With this exercise, students can gain experience before they become adventurers themselves, however, a few rare exceptions exist. Warrior High Student Council It is made up of the few elites who possess unimaginable talent within the school, they are a group of people unofficially recognized as professionals. Not only do they have enough influence to talk to the board of directors and influence their decisions, but they also work with professional attack squads to participate in large-scale raids for five-star monsters and above. Due to this, members of the student council in Warrior High are considered unofficial professionals in the adventurers community. They are people rumored to be the next rankers. Jaryong asked our girl if Gaeyun is a third-year student. Saram revealed to our boy that Gaeyun is actually a second-year student. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He asked Saram if Gaeyun failed a grade. Saram explained to Jaryong that Gaeyun actually stole the position from the original president. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. He asked Saram to explain what she means. While whispering, Saram reminded Jaryong that her school focuses on skills. According to Saram, the earliest a person can enter the student council is the first semester of the second year. Gaeyun managed to join in her second year. The moment she joined the council, the girl unsheathed her sword. She challenged all the seniors in the council. Before the first semester was even over, 
Gayun had managed to defeat everyone in the student council, including the president. The students regard this event as the greatest event in their school. Gayun managed to become the youngest president ever. While Saram was talking to our boy, Gayun turned around and asked her uncle to stop nagging. She told him that she is leaving. Saram was relieved to see this. Before the girl could walk away, Jaryong asked her to make a bet with him. He assured her that he will be quick with what he wants to say. Saram was shocked to hear what our boy said. She could not believe that he would actually say something so foolish. Jaryong told the girl that he has heard that she is very famous. Our boy believed that Gayun had a reason for showing her bad side to her junior. He told the girl that he wants to make a single bet with her. He told Gayun that she will get her uncle to herself if he loses. Saram immediately apologized to her senior. She moved close to Jaryong and asked him if he is crazy. Gayun knew that our boy would not propose a bet unless he wants something. She asked Jaryong to tell her what he wants. Our boy told Gayun that they can carry out the bet using shadow sparring. Shadow sparring originates from an old martial arts training method. It is a basic training method for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Whoever touches their opponent first or forces their opponent into an unfavorable position wins the match. Since it is based on an individual's agility and skills without any risk of injury, the method is universally used by everyone. Jaryong took off his jacket and assured Gayun that he will give up his time if he loses, with a smile on his face. Our boy told Gayun that he wants her to give him the position of the student council president if he wins. He told her that he wants the position when he gets transferred into Warrior High. Saram was shocked to hear this. She realized that our boy was much more crazy than she expected. She was certain that Gayun would never accept the bet unless she is also crazy. To Saram's surprise, Gayun gladly accepted the bet. In the next scene, we are taken to Atelier H durability test room. Gayun and Jaryong took a stance and covered themselves with their energy. While looking at the two, Saram remembered asking our boy if he is insane. After our boy challenged Gayun, Saram took him to a corner. Our girl told Jaryong that he can still back out of the bet. She assured him that Songwar is a rational person. She told our boy that the man might let things go once he apologizes. Saram did not understand why Jaryong would make such a bet. She reminded our boy that he is not fully healed. She asked him to tell her how he wants to fight with his broken arm. She told Jaryong that there is no way Gayun will actually give him her position if he wins. Jaryong told our girl that he can't win. Saram was surprised to hear this. Our boy revealed to her that he cannot beat Gayun even if he was fully healed. He told Saram that the girl is too strong. Our girl could not understand what was happening. She asked Jaryong to tell her why he would make a wager even when he knew that he will lose. She told him that they are basically wasting their time. Jaryong asked her to not worry about it. He knew that Saram could not understand his intentions. He asked her to trust him. He assured our girl that he is making a good deal. While thinking about Jaryong's words, Saram tried to understand what our boy would gain from the fight when he already knows the outcome. She wondered if Jaryong was going to lose to get on Gayun's good side. Saram quickly removed this idea from her head. She knew that our boy was not stupid enough to do something like that. While our girl was thinking, Songwoo apologized to her. He told our girl that his niece is supposed to be the president of the student council, but she is not a welcoming person. He turned to Saram and bowed his head. He asked her to forgive him. Our girl felt uncomfortable to see the man bowing. She asked him not to worry about it. She told the man that the situation is like this because of Jerry Yong's unreasonable stubbornness. Songwer found this statement to be odd. He told our girl that it is probably not what she thinks. Saram was surprised to hear this. Songwoo explained to Saram that he does not know much about Jaryong but he knows our boy's intentions. Gayun released a small amount of her energy and told our boy that she is not going to use both of her arms in order to make the match fair. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told the girl that it does not matter to him. He told her that he will use the handicap as her excuse for losing. Gayun smiled when she heard this. She took a step forward and disappeared in front of our boy. She reappeared next to him and tried to hit his head with a kick. Our boy managed to see the attack and dodged it. Saram and Songwer were both surprised to see this. However, both of them were surprised for different reasons. Saram was surprised by the speed of the attack. Her eyes could not even follow Gayun's movements. Shadow sparring is a defensive training exercise. In order to make contact with the opponent, one must take the risk of exposing themselves. However, Gayun showed no hesitation or fear. She simply attacked. The girl had the speed to back up her endless pride. She attacked Jaryong with more swift movements. Our boy managed to dodge the attacks. Saram could not comprehend what she was seeing. 
She could not even see how each move flows into the next. Sarum knew that she would have never been able to react to the first attack. While she was thinking, Songwa called out to her, with a nervous look on his face. The man asked Sarum if Jaryong is truly preparing to enter Warrior High. Apart from being the head designer in Atelier H, Songwa was a former green rank adventurer. He was ranked 31st in Korea. When he looked at the data which Sarum sent to him, Songwa was certain that Jaryong was talented. However, what he was seeing was beyond his expectation. A decade ago, Songwa was an adventurer filled with energy. Due to this, the man understood Jaryong's intentions. He knew that our boy was not trying to show off or look down on Gaeyeon. Jaryong simply wanted to know more. Gaeyeon is already stronger than most people of her age. If she gains some experience and skills, she will become as strong as lower rankers. Jaryong simply wanted to experience it. He wanted to see the distance that he needs to catch up to. After attacking for a while, Gaeyeon stepped back with a smile on her face. The girl told Jaryong that no one has been able to dodge her attacks for this long after she entered high school. She told our boy that she is impressed by him. She revealed to Jaryong that she never expected him to last this long. While breathing heavily, our boy glared at the girl. Gaeyoon could tell that our boy was hurt in other places, based on Jaryong's movement and stamina. Gaeyoon deduced that our boy did not have 50% of his original strength. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. He asked the girl if she has ever seen what he is capable of. With a smile on her face, Gaeyoon told our boy that he was quite fast when he fought the Horned Horrors. She revealed to Jaryong that she has watched the video of him hundreds of times in the last four days. She referred to our boy as unknown Mr. A. She told him that she is a fan. Jaryong was surprised to see that the girl was able to guess his identity. Gaeyoon told our boy that they can call the match a tie and simply continue next time. She explained to Jaryong that they can continue once he gets into Warrior High. She told him that his body would have already been healed by that time. Sarum was surprised to see that our boy stopped fighting. She wondered about what he and Gaeyoon were talking about. Gaeyoon told our boy that she does not want things to end like this. Before she could say more, Jaryong stood up and told her that he is disappointed. With a smile on his face, our boy told Gaeyoon that it is sad that she cannot understand what is going on even though she has a keen eye and groundless confidence. Jaryong told the girl that he has no interest in accepting a tie. He reminded Gaeyoon that the position of student council president is on the line. The girl was shocked to hear this. Jaryong assured the senior that he has no intention of giving up. He asked her to stop wasting time. He told her that they need to continue the match. The moment he said this, he took a stance. The three people in the room believed that Jaryong was bluffing. There was nothing our boy could gain even if he continues the match. The best outcome our boy could have gotten was the tie, and yet he wasted it. Gaeyoon told our boy that she is a bit disappointed. She explained to him that his actions are stupid. The moment she said this, she released some energy. Jaryong smiled when he heard this. He took a step forward. Sarum and Songwa were surprised to see that our boy moved first. The moment he took a step, Jaryong disappeared in front of Gaeyoon and reappeared next to her. Our boy tried to kick her face with his leg. Gaeyoon managed to dodge the attack. Songwa was shocked to see that Jaryong used the same technique as Gaeyoon. Sarum was happy to see our boy's attack. She said that she knew Jaryong has been holding back since. Songwa told our girl that Jaryong has not been holding back at all. The man realized that he was completely wrong. He realized that Jaryong was not simply interested in gauging his strength against Gaeyoon. The man was certain that Jaryong and his niece have only fought for 30 short sprints. He could not believe that our boy managed to predict and copy Gaeyoon's movement in those short moments. Songwa was shocked to see our boy using his niece's movements. The man understood that he was looking at a monster. He realized that it was never a matter of winning or losing for Jaryong. The real reason why our boy challenged the girl was to steal her skills. While dodging our boy's attack, Gaeyoon managed to step back. The girl could not believe what she was seeing. While breathing heavily, our boy commended Gaeyoon for showing him how she dodges an attack. He took a stance and asked the girl to stop standing. He told her that he still wants her to show him more things. Jaryong worked as a smuggler since he was little. There was one rule he always followed no matter what happens, he is never to make a losing bet. Technique is not just a strike with enough force to knock someone out. To bring out the full potential of an individual, the optimized stance and movements down to the way of breathing, even the build-up to the smallest step is important. What makes all this small details important is time. People devote their time and passion to build up experience, they gain knowledge through repeated success and failure. 
this knowledge is then passed down to future generations for further improvements. Even with impressive talent, there is no way to overcome that knowledge on your own. Thanks to natural talent, Jaryong was able to grow steadily stronger by himself. However, when he became 17 years old, his physical growth began to slow down. Our boy was faced with the truth. There was a barrier that halted his growth. In order to grow stronger, Jaryong needed to break down this wall. Jaryong took off the shoulder sling used to hold his cast together. He asked Gaeon to stop standing. He told her to attack him. Our boy asked the girl if she is trying to avoid the fight by saying they will continue when he gets into warrior high. He asked her if she is using this excuse so that she doesn't have to lose. Gaeon smiled when she heard this. She asked her uncle if he remembers what she asked him for last time. She reminded Songwer about the attack squad that wanted to sign a deal with her. She reminded the man that he told her to visit the attack squad in order to build a positive reputation. Gaeon assured her uncle that she will go if he does not intervene in the fight. Songwer was surprised to hear this. Gaeon turned to our boy and asked him if he still wants to see how she dodged his attack. Gaeon rushed to attack our boy. With a smile on her face, she asked Jaryon to make her dodge his attack. The moment she said this, she swung her leg at Jaryon. Our boy carefully looked at the direction of the attack. He managed to dodge it by going low. When it comes to human motion, there are connections between each movement. Each movement has a precursor and a subsequent movement. When watching someone, a person subconsciously predict what happens next. Gaeun is using this fact to her advantage. By skipping the movements in between, a person can fool the perception of people watching. Not only is it difficult to predict what will happen next, each move will be perceived to be much faster than it actually is. This technique was created as a result of decades of efforts. It is a technique that Gaeun's father created and was famous for being able to successfully pull it off. The technique is known as flash. While dodging Gaeun's attack, our boy took a step back. The moment he did this, he copied the girl's movement and used flash to attack her. Gaeun was shocked to see this. Songwoo could not believe that our boy managed to use flash twice in a row, and he even managed to use it in a way that Gaeun has not shown off yet. The fact that Jaryong managed to understand the principle behind the attack was shocking. However, the biggest surprise to Songwoo was that Jaryong used the technique. The man knew that flash is not a technique that can easily be replicated simply by knowing its principle. Things like flexibility, reflexes, and timing are very important. If any of these things are out of tune, the technique will not work. Songwu himself did not learn the technique from his brother until his early 20s. Although he was at his prime, it still took him three months to learn the technique. He also had to learn how to use it while sparring with his niece. Songwu could not believe that Jar Yong is able to use the technique with his whole body. While our boy was attacking Gaeon, he began to breathe heavily. Jar Yong was already exhausted. He was almost out of energy. Even though he was getting weaker, our boy moved as if he was in his best condition. Our boy did not want to stop the fight. He was happy to see that he had a chance to become stronger. Jar Yong was experiencing a sense of joy in learning that he had never felt before. Although it wasn't a normal way to learn, Jar Yong had found a reason to become much stronger. He learned not because he had to. But because he finally realized that the process of learning was fun, he finally learned how to do it and what was possible. Jaryong forgot about all his pain and fatigue. Our boy closed the gap between himself and Gaeun. The girl was surprised to see him in front of her. Jaryong attacked Gaeun with the flash technique. However, he attacked her with four different forms. The moment he saw the attack, Songwer rushed to intervene. Before the man could reach them, he suddenly stopped moving. Gaeon reminded her uncle that she asked him not to interfere. While looking at Jaryong on the floor, Gaeon told her uncle that she is glad things ended before he got involved. While stretching out her hand, the girl told our boy that she lost. Jaryong also said that he lost. Gaeon was surprised to hear this. She told our boy that she lost because she used her hand. Jaryong told Gaeon that she made the rule on her own. He revealed to her that he never accepted the rule. He told her that the important thing is that he got hit. Jaryong asked the girl to stop acting embarrassed. He told her that she is actually not very strong. The moment he said this, Songwer told Jaryong that there is no reason to decide who won the spar. He explained to Jaryong that it will be difficult to choose a winner due to the state of his body. The man told our boy that he can see the spar as a draw or a learning experience. He assured our boy that he will set up an official match once he is healed up. Jaryong told the man that he is fine with the suggestion. The moment he said this, Gaeon asked him to listen to her. With a horrifying look on her face, the girl told Jaryong that the next time they will meet will be at school. 
she assured Jaryong that she will never forgive him if he fails the transfer exam or loses to someone else before fighting her again. Our boy stood up and walked past her. For Jaryong, the duel they had was a precious and exciting moment. He did not care if he won or he lost, however. For Gaeun, it was different. She met someone her age who was able to live up to her expectations. She walked up to Sarum and asked her for her name. Our girl immediately told Gaeun her name. Gaeun asked our girl if she is the one sponsoring Jaryo. Sarum told her that she is. Gaeun apologized to our girl for behaving rudely to her. She told Sarum that she is not completely useless. With a smile on her face, Gaeun told our girl that she has an eye for people. After saying this, she left. Gaeun had finally met someone who was able to rival her. She was also experiencing a different form of joy for the first time. In the next scene, we see Jaryong and Sarum resting on a chair. Our boy complained about feeling some pain in his body. Our girl reminded Jaryong that nobody asked him to fight anyone. She was happy that he did not have to go to the hospital. Our boy told Sarum that she can scold him later. Sarum told Jaryong that she is actually surprised. She never expected Gaeon to actually admit her defeat. Sarum told our boy that although Gaeon created the rule, he won in her eyes. Jaryong told our girl that he is actually not sure. He revealed to her that he was the first person to break the rule. Sarum was surprised to hear this. Jaryong reminded her that he removed his arm sling while they were fighting. He explained to Sarum that he and Gaeon weren't fighting with the intention of winning the duel. He told our girl that he was the first to actually cross the line. Sarum was surprised to hear this. She became more certain that there was something different about Jaryong. Our boy explained to Sarum that during the final moment of the duel, he tried everything he could. He told our girl that Gaeon would have been heavily injured if she received the attacks head-on. He told Sarum that he would have also used his hand if he was in the same situation as Gaeon. Our boy believed that the girl's actions were smart. Sarum was surprised to hear this. She asked Jaryong to tell her what will happen if he and the president fought at full strength. Our boy asked Sarum to tell him the reason why she is asking such a question. He reminded her that she was asking him about why he fought in the first place. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told our girl that she was quite immersed in the fight. The moment he said this, our boy stood up. Sarum was surprised to see this. She asked him to tell her what is wrong. With a serious look on his face, Jaryong told her that someone is here. The moment he said this, Sarum turned to the door. To her surprise, Songwu and a pizza delivery man stepped into the office. The delivery man seemed to be nervous. With a smile on his face, the CEO thanked our boy and Sarum for waiting. After eating a large amount of pizza, Songwu apologized to our boy for the trouble his niece caused. He told Jaryong that he was supposed to take him out for some proper food. Our boy told the man that he is quite thankful that he brought him some food. He told the man that he does not really have a good taste in food. He assured him that anything is fine as long as it is much. Sarum was shocked to see what Jaryong ate. She could not believe that he ate a large pizza in two minutes. Close-range damage dealers consume an average of five times the calories needed by ordinary people. Sarum realized that she had never thought about Jaryong's hunger. Our boy had not eaten for four days because he was unconscious. While Jaryong was eating, Songwa revealed to him that his atelier does not deal with leather. Instead they handle a material that exceeds the ability of leather. The man told our boy that most places use plant fibers, however, they use the fiber of high-ranked monsters as their main ingredient. An example of such a monster is a mountain spider. It is a monster with a four-star danger rank. Song were explained to Jaryong that his company uses their patented techniques to produce the perfect material by creating a blend that perfectly suits the owner of the armor. The man told our boy that once they finish the final coating stage, the material will be lighter and stronger than leather. With a nervous look on his face, Songwu told our boy that they already know the kind of blend and the kind of clothes that they need to make for him. He reminded Jaryong that they already have the data they received from Jinseon Group, and he has already seen him fight. Songwu told our boy that he only has one issue which he has been questioning. Sarum asked the man to tell her the issue. Songwu reminded our girl that he said that the final part of creating the fabric is coating, according to the man. This process involves coating the fabric in oil in order to increase its integrity and various other resistances. Sarum told the man that she already requested that the coating should be done with the highest grade material. Songwu revealed to our girl that it is currently impossible to gather the highest grade oil. He told Sarum that the oil they use is the oil from the ravenous whale from the deep sea. Songwu explained to Sarum that his company had a contract that practically gives them monopoly over the oil. However, 
Due to unforeseen circumstances, the hunt rate for the whale has dropped. With a nervous look on his face, Song Wu told our boy and Sarum that they have other materials that can replace the oil. He assured them that there is no difference between the two coating. The man told our girl that she can cancel her contract with them for breaching the contract. The man told Sarum that he has nothing to say if Jaryong refuses to work with them. Our girl was surprised to hear this. With a sad look on his face, Song Wu told Sarum that he can personally introduce her to a master leather craftsman if she has no interest in working with him. He explained to her that the craftsman creates defensive armors using leather. The man assured our girl that he will pay for the cost and the time it takes to create everything before Sarum could reply. Our boy told the man that he does not care. While chewing his food, Jaryong told the man that he does not really care if the difference is not much. He told the man that he does not like expensive things at all. He told Songwu that he really wants someone like him to make an armor for him. With a smile on his face, Jaryong asked Songwu if he was the one who taught his niece her skills. Our boy told the man that he does not know much about equipment, however, he wants someone as strong as him to make his armor for him. Sarum accepted our boy's idea. She told the man that she will go with Jaryong's opinion. Songwu smiled when he heard this. He told our boy that it has been 10 years since someone called him a strong person. He told Jaryong that he feels embarrassed. Songwu stood up and stretched out his hand. He assured Jaryong that he will live up to his expectations because he trusts him. When he shook our boy's hand, Songwu told him that he is quite disappointed about what happened last week. He revealed to Jaryong that there was a large scale raid last week. He told our boy that he was hoping that he could get some incredible materials which he could use from the raid. Songwu asked Jaryong and Sarum if they have heard about the Imperial Wasp. Our boy and Sarum were shocked to hear this. Our girl told the man that she heard that the royal jelly is the only thing the Imperial Wasp can drop. The man told her that the royal jelly is the most popular item the monster can drop. However, among equipment manufacturers, there is another item that is considered to be a dream material. This material is known as the black wax. It is an item made by the Imperial Wasp. The royal jelly is the material used to grow the queen while the black wax is the material used to protect the queen. Among the many groups of Imperial Wasp, only a rare few produce the black wax to cover the queen. The moment the man said this, Jaryong took out his phone. Song were assured the two that he can create something incredible if he can coat the armor with the black wax. Immediately he said this. Jaryong showed the man his phone and asked him if the material looks like this. Our boy had to draw out the material. He told Songwu that he used to have the picture in his old phone. Unfortunately, the phone got destroyed. Songwu was shocked to see that our boy drew out the material. He asked Jaryong if he has seen the material before. Jaryong could not tell the man that he smuggled it because he would be sent to jail. He pointed at Sarum and told Songwu that he saw it in her house. Our girl was shocked to hear this. He told the man that rich people have everything. Sarum did not know what to say. The scene shifts and we are taken to Song's hospital room. Inside the room, we see Jae Hwan next to the man. Jae Hwan was speaking to our boy on his phone. He told Jaryong that he has to meet someone in the hospital. Jaryong told the man that he will be done at the atelier in an hour. Jae Hwan told our boy that he will also be done around the same time. The man asked Jaryong if he has eaten. Our boy told him that he has. He told Jae Hwan that he will still join him if he is going to eat. Jae Hwan smiled when he heard this. He asked our boy if he will pay half of the bill. Jaryong told the man that he is having a stomachache. The moment Jaryong said this. Someone stepped into the room. Jae Hwan asked our boy to call him when he arrives. He told Jaryong that he needs to hang up. While looking at Zeke, the man told our boy that his plans have arrived. With a smile on his face, Jae Hwan told Zeke that they should talk outside. He explained to the elf that Song just fell asleep after getting a shot of a sedative. He told Zeke that it is unkind to make noise in a hospital room. Zeke told the man that they can simply stay quiet. Eleven years ago, an attack squad was led by one man. The squad was seen as a myth. This squad eventually disbanded. Zeke who is currently ranked 7th in Korea was a former healer of the Taibik attack squad. Jaehwan was annoyed to hear what Zeke said. He told the elf that he still has the ability to piss off people. Jaehwan moved close to the man. He crushed his phone with his hand. The man revealed to Zeke that he actually doesn't want to stay in the room because he cannot control himself. With a creepy smile on his face, Jaehwan told the elf that he is elated to see him again. The moment he said this, the man released some of his energy, with a terrifying tone in his voice, he told Zeke that they are on the same side. He called the elf an asshole and asked the elf to shut up and follow him. It turns out that Jae Hwan was not just a former adventurer but he was also formerly ranked 5th in Korea before his retirement. He was the former main dealer of the Taibik attack squad. In the next scene, 
We see our boy and Sarum leaving Atelier H. Our girl asked Jaryong if the black wax was the item they found next to the royal jelly. She told our boy that he should have told her about the item beforehand. Jaryong explained to our girl that he did not know the type of item it was. He thanked Sarum for playing along. Our girl told Jaryong that nothing ever comes easy to them. She reminded him that things are similar to the time they met Argius. Sarum asked our boy if he has any plans. Jaryong told our girl that he promised to meet someone. The moment he said this, our boy texted Jaehwan. He told him that he is leaving the area now. Sarum told our boy that she can give him a ride if the place is not far. The moment she said this, she got a call from Zeke. Our girl told Jaryong that she has to take the call. Jaryong texted Jaehwan if he should go to the hospital. Our boy did not get a reply. While he was looking at his phone, Jaryong hears someone say that it is chilly at night. Our boy was surprised to hear this voice. Songwoo stepped out of his company with a vape in his hand. The man asked Jaryong if Sarum has already gone home. Jaryong told the man that Sarum had to take a call. He told him that our girl won't be long. Songwoo assured our boy that he did not come to share anything. He told Jaryong that he simply came to take a smoke. The man revealed to our boy that the skill he just learnt is called Flash. He told Jaryong that it was created by his retired brother who is Gaeon's father. He told our boy that he also helped in developing the skill. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. Our boy bowed his head and apologized to the man. Songwoo was shocked to see this. Jaryong told him that he never expected the creator of the skill to be at the company. He asked Songwoo to forgive him for using the skill without permission. He told the man that he will never use it again. Songwoo was surprised to hear this. He assured Jaryong that he did not bring up the topic to criticize him. The man explained to our boy that there is no special ownership or copyright when it comes to skills made by adventurers. He told Jaryong that adventurers are usually only hesitant to teach others the skills they developed. However, it is not a crime if someone manages to learn on their own. According to the man, if it is a skill that can be easily copied, it is bound to be learnt by others at some point. Songwoo asked our boy if it is fine for him to smoke. Jaryong told the man that the skill was not easy to copy at all. Songwoo laughed when he heard this, because Jaryong told the man that he has never properly learned a skill. Songwoo assumed that our boy did not have a strong base. However, after Songwoo saw our boy's face when he was fighting, the man's doubt was cleared up. He realized that it was impossible for such a passionate child like Jaryong to have gotten lazy and skipped the basics. Songwoo knew that he could not ask Jaryong to tell him the reason why he did not learn the basics. Songwoo told our boy that he wants to give him some advice that might help him. The man told Jaryong that he has real talent. He told our boy that his true strength is bound to be shown if he works hard. He assured Jaryong that getting into Warrior High School and becoming one of the greatest adventurers in the world will not be hard for him. Jaryong became embarrassed when he heard this. Songwoo assured him that these things are possible with his talent and skills. The man told our boy that the adventurer's business is not a place where everyone admires each other's talent. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. Songwoo explained to Jaryong that there will always be people who acknowledge his power and look up to him. However, there will also be people who envy him. Songwoo told our boy that this people will try to control him, and if they fail to do this, they will try to destroy our boy. Jaryong asked the man if he is telling him to hide what he is capable of in order to avoid those dangerous people. Songwoo was surprised to hear this. He told Jaryong to do the exact opposite. He did not understand why our boy would need to hide his talent. The man let out some smoke and told Jaryong that he cannot hide a talent like his. He explained to Jaryong that people will look down on him if he hides himself. He placed his hand on our boy's shoulder and asked him to show off his true self. He asked our boy to become a genius who no one can approach. He asked Jaryong to do everything as long as he is capable. He asked our boy to steal any skill that he deems useful. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. Songwoo asked our boy to never bow his head if someone tries to cause an issue about it. He asked Jaryong to raise his voice instead. He assured our boy that he is not the wrong person. He told him that the person who allowed him to steal the skill is the one that is wrong. With a serious look on his face, Songwoo told our boy that it is up to him to decide who is right or who is wrong. The man explained to Jaryong that if he is able to properly use a stolen skill and bring it to the next level, he will be able to say that the skill truly belongs to him. Our boy was surprised to hear what the man was saying. Songwoo knew that our boy would be surprised that an adult is giving such an advice to a child. He explained to Jaryong that the world of the adventurers is ruled by the strong. The man reminded our boy about how extreme his niece's personality is. Although people have asked him to correct Gaeun, Songwoo doesn't intend to do anything, according to Songwoo. 
Although a lot of people do not like the fact that his niece is a picky and boisterous genius, they will be afraid of her and they will never look down on her. Before Songwa could continue, Sarum called out to Jaryong. The girl was breathing heavily. She asked our boy to take the call. Jaryong was surprised to hear this. He asked Sarum to tell him the reason why he should do this. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that her uncle is on the line. She told him that Zeke asked her to put him on the phone if he is nearby. When our boy picked up the phone, Zeke apologized for disturbing him. He explained to Jaryong that he never intended to contact him so soon. He told our boy that there is an issue. He asked Jaryong to come over. Our boy screamed out when he heard what Zeke told him. Sarum and Songwa were surprised to hear Jaryong raise his voice. Our boy assured Zeke that he will be there very soon. In the next scene, we see Jaryong and Sarum walking to the underground train station. Sarum asked our boy if they are really at a secret path to a dungeon. Jaryong revealed to her that there are unofficial entrances to dungeons all over the closed subway station. He told her that each entrance belongs to a different owner. The moment he said this, our boy saw something surprising. He saw Zeke wearing torn clothes and he saw a man who was shirtless standing next to him. The man was Jianho. The two men stood at the entrance of Jaewon's office. Zeke told Jaryong that Jaehwan is inside. He explained to Jaryong that he never planned to call him. However, Jaehwan said that he would rather die than get healed by Zeke. Our boy realized that Zeke was not on good terms with his boss. He wondered if the elf fought with Jaehwan. Jianho told our boy that he would have asked him to bring a shirt if he knew that he would get there fast. Jaryong did not recognize Jianho. The man moved close to Jaryong and told him that he likes his eyes. He asked our boy if he is the one who managed to land an attack on Zeke. He revealed to Jaryong that he is famous in their attack squad. Our boy was surprised to hear this. Jianho told him that he is known as the team that is stronger than high-ranked monsters. The man asked Jaryong if he knows that their captain wants to meet him. Zeke asked the man to stop the pointless conversation. He walked forward and told Jaryong that he is heading out. The elf did not see a reason to wait around. He walked past Sarum and asked her to leave with him. After the group left, Jaryong passed through their gate and went into the dungeon. When our boy saw his boss, he was relieved. He told Jaehwan that he was nervous because he heard that he was in a serious condition. While looking down the cliff, Jaehwan told Jaryong that he is actually in a serious condition. He explained to our boy that his body and pride are in shreds. Jaehwan referred to Zeke as a cowardly bastard. The man wondered why Zeke would come to meet him. He never expected the elf to have backup. Although he already knew the answer, Jaehwan asked Jaryong if he has a lighter. Our boy smiled and told the man to tell him why he would have something like that. Jaryong noticed that the dungeon was quite bright. He was certain that the sun had already set. Jaehwan pointed at something and asked Jaryong to bring it to him because he is too tired to move. When our boy moved close to the man, he saw something shocking. A large section of the dungeon was covered in fire and the ground was destroyed. While trembling, our boy asked his boss to tell him what he was fighting about. Jaehwan could not believe that Zeke said that they fought. He revealed to Jaryong that he wanted to burn Zeke to a crisp. Jaehwan told our boy that Jianho is quite impressive. He revealed to Jaryong that although Jianho is not a tank, his defensive skills are pretty solid. He told our boy that Jianho might become a big shot if he continues to train for a decade. After hearing what his boss said, Jaryong told him that he has something to tell him. Before he could say more, Jaehwan told him that he knows. The man stood up and told our boy that he can quit smuggling if he wants. He explained to Jaryong that he has a condition for him if he wants to become an adventurer. Our boy asked him to share the condition. Jaehwan used his magic to raise his cigarette up. He told Jaryong that he wants him to perfectly understand what he wants to teach him within a month. He told our boy that he is better off not becoming an adventurer if he cannot do this. The man explained to Jaryong that things won't be easy because it will not be in the same category as his talent. Jaryong became nervous when he heard this. He already had an idea of what his boss was talking about. Jaehwan crushed his cigarette and told Jaryong that he is going to teach him magic. Jaryong could not comprehend what his boss was saying. He wanted to ask Jaehwan some questions, however. He decided to ask later because the man looked weak. Jaryong held his boss's hand before he could fall. He told him that he can sit down if he cannot stand properly. The moment he said this, Jaryong noticed that Jaewon's body was cold. Our boy realized that the man was not just tired. He asked his boss to get on his back. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the past. We see Jaryong's father making coffee for someone. The man told the person that making coffee with their own beans might seem really hard at first. However, it becomes easier with practice. Song told the person that he had fun learning even though he made some mistakes along the way. 
The man told the person that he would have started learning earlier if he knew that it would get easier. He explained to the man that it would have been a nice hobby for him to enjoy in his prime. While biting his nails, the person asked the man to stop talking about his prime. He told Sung that it makes it sound as if he is retired. The person talking turned out to be a younger Jae Hwan. He was 26 at this time. With a smile on his face, Sung told Jae Hwan that he really is retired. Jae Hwan begged the man to not retire. He assured Sung that he can kill Duganog. Jae Hwan told the man that he does not have to work hard. He explained to Sung that he can request a target and location and then recruit an attack squad. Sung told the man that no one will approve the mission. He explained to Jae Hwan that Duganog must know the type of condition he is in. He told the man that the dragon knows that he can win if he hides well. Jae Hwan became more agitated when he heard this. He asked Song if he is really going to let the dragon win easily. While shedding tears from his eyes, Jae Hwan told the man that it is not just the dragon that is the problem. There was also the issue of countless rumors. He told Song that everyone would have died if not for him. Jae Hwan assured Jae Ryong's father that he will take care of everything as long as he gets better. He explained to Song that he will find Duganog once he recruits an attack squad. He assured the man that he will make everyone who is talking trash about him beg for his mercy. The moment Jae Hwan said this, a younger Jae Ryong stepped into the room. Song turned to his son. With a smile on his face, he asked Jae Ryong if he is sleeping late again. Jae Hwan was surprised to see a little kid. Song asked his son to say hi to Uncle Jae Hwan. Our boy bowed his head and greeted Jae Hwan. Song introduced Jae Ryong as his son. Jae Hwan was surprised to hear this. Song asked Jae Ryong to play alone for a bit. He told him that he needs to talk to Jae Hwan. He told his son that they are having dinner with Jae Hwan. As Jae Ryong walked away from the room, Song revealed to Jae Hwan that he won't be able to last much longer. He revealed to the man that Zeke gave him a painkiller recipe. However, Song was certain that he will slowly develop resistance to the painkillers. The man explained to Jae Hwan that his memory and cognitive abilities will slowly start to deteriorate. He revealed to the man that he will not be able to recognize faces of the people close to him in the next four years. Jae Hwan told his squad leader that they can prevent this. Song begged Jae Hwan for something. Song told the man that if something happens to him and he is not able to make it, he begged Jae Hwan to take care and protect Jae Ryong. Jae Hwan was shocked to hear this. This was the first time the man known as Song who had never shown his weak side to anyone would ask for a favor. Song told Jae Hwan that he wants his son to live a normal life that is different from his. He explained to the man that he wants his son to take a different path other than being an adventurer. He told him that he wants Jae Ryong to have a real life where he can find his own happiness. In this situation, Jae Hwan could not decline the last wish of his leader. He accepted Song's favor. The scene shifts and we see Jae Hwan wake up in a different room. The man turned to his side and asked Jae Ryong to tell him the time. Our boy told him that it is currently 10.30. Jae Hwan was surprised to hear that he woke up after sleeping for only three hours. The man asked our boy if he let Zeke touch his body. Our boy assured him that he did not do such a thing. He explained to the man that he was thinking of taking him to the hospital, but he did not know how to explain the situation at the hospital. Jae Ryong took out something that looks like a syringe. He told his boss that he gave the thing to him. Jae Hwan was surprised to see this. He remembered when he gave Jae Ryong the item in the past. He told our boy that it is a present for starting work. Jae Ryong was 14 years old at this time. He was surprised to see the syringe. He asked his boss if the syringe is for monsters. Jae Hwan told him that it is an emergency potion. He assured our boy that the potion works in most cases. He explained to Jae Ryong that the item can even work as an antidote. So long as the person does not suffer from a fatal injury, the potion should heal the person in one or two hours. Jae Hwan told our boy that the item is usually something that adventurers buy. He asked Jae Ryong to buy his own next time. Our boy picked up the syringe and closed it up. He thanked his boss for the gift and told him that he will be back very soon. The moment Jae Ryong turned around, Jae Hwan told him that if he wants to change his mind, he is willing to ignore everything he just said. He revealed to Jae Ryong that the request is not very important. He explained to Jae Ryong that he will not be able to stop on his own terms when he starts. The man took out a cigarette and told Jae Ryong that he can live a normal life. He assured him that he will continue to pay his father's hospital bills. The man told our boy that he feels guilty for hiring a little kid as a smuggler. Jae Ryong told the man that it is fine. He explained to Jae Hwan that his father did not lend him any money or do anything for him. He told the man that they do not know what can happen in the future. Jae Hwan smiled when he heard this. He asked our boy if he cannot trust him. Jae Ryong explained to him that he does not have any issues with that. Our boy told the man that he always felt like he needed to get his own skills since he was little. 
Jaryong turned around and told his boss that he wants to have the power to protect his father in case something happens. He thanked Jae Hwan for the potion. He assured him that he will put it to good use. Presently, Jae Hwan revealed to our boy that he knew that he saved the potion for emergencies. He simply never expected Jaryong to have survived for a long time without using it. The man told our boy that he is disappointed in him for not selling the potion to the black market. Jae Hwan revealed to Jaryong that he would have actually continued to pay his father's hospital bills even if he never started smuggling or if he decided to quit during an operation. Our boy told the man that he knows. While looking at some past questions, he told Jae Hwan that he was not 100% certain. However, our boy knew that Jae Hwan would take care of his father if something was to ever happen to him. He told Jae Hwan that this was the reason he was able to accept the job without any hesitation. The man was surprised to hear this. He revealed to Jaryong that he already gave up when he made a 14-year-old a smuggler. Our boy asked the man to not blame himself. He reminded his boss that he was the one who asked him for the job. He assured Jae Hwan that he would have found another way to get in if he did not help him. Jaryong placed the past questions down. He told Jae Hwan that he was always curious about why he agreed easily when he volunteered. The man stood up and revealed to our boy that his father asked him not to raise him as an adventurer. He explained to Jaryong that when he was in his prime, he never really listened to his father well. He told Jaryong that he could not stand to see the talent of Yu Song's son go to waste on an ordinary life. Jae Hwan decided to be honest with our boy. With a horrifying look on his face, the man told Jaryong that he hates this stupid world. He told our boy that he hates the people who dragged his father down and the idiots who believed what this people said and forgot about Sung's accomplishments. Jae Hwan revealed to Jaryong that he also hates the bystanders that stood by and did nothing. Despite knowing the truth, he told our boy that he wishes all this people would die. Jaryong wanted to tell Jae Hwan about Zeke's plan. The man revealed to our boy that Zeke will never be able to defeat Duganaig. He explained to Jaryong that Zeke has the intent, but his method is too simplistic and naive. He told our boy that adventurers are not the only ones that need resolve to find and defeat a dragon. He told him that dragons are smart creatures. According to Jae Hwan, even if their identity is known, it will still be hard to approach them. The dragons made it easy for society to fall if they ever go down. Jae Hwan assured our boy that Zeke and his team are very determined. However, to Jae Hwan, the rest of society was simply trash that betrayed Song. He explained to Jaryong that even if the world was to end tomorrow, People would rather not take a loss and believe in lies. The moment he said this, Jae Hwan wrote something on a paper. The man explained to Jaryong that as long as Zeke is trapped within the realms of laws and society, people would rather help the dragons and prevent Zeke's plan from happening. Eventually, Zeke would have to pay the price for it. According to Jae Hwan, the horrors Song tried to erase 20 years ago will return. The false hopes and dreams built by fake people and the idiots who cheered them on will all go down. Jae Hwan told our boy that this is why he never pushed him to become an adventurer. Immediately he said this. He stretched out his hand and gave Jaryong a paper. The man told our boy that the account is in his name. He revealed to Jaryong that he has deposited all the money that he earned from his cut of their missions into the account. Jaryong was shocked to hear this. He asked his boss to tell him why he would do this. While looking for a jacket in our boy's wardrobe, the man revealed to Jaryong that he always planned on giving him the money, he explained to our boy that he wanted to make sure he had enough funds to do whatever he wanted once he becomes an adult. Jae Hwan took out a jacket and told Jaryong that he wanted to teach him skills and share some knowledge with him when he became an adult. The man informed Jaryong that he was going to give him information that is more practical and dangerous. Jae Hwan turned to the door and asked Jaryong to contact him when he gets out of his cast. He told our boy that he will start teaching him magic when he contacts him. He asked Jaryong to use his time to study for the transfer exam. The man told our boy that he personally thinks it is pointless to go to Warrior High School. Before his boss left his house, Jaryong told him that he could have stopped him from becoming an adventurer if he did not give him the chance to train. Jaehwan stopped moving and told Jaryong that he is right. He told our boy that his own thoughts don't matter. The man explained to Jaryong that the situation is the same as three years ago. He told our boy that the most important thing is what he wants to do. After saying this, Jae Hwan left his house. The scene shifts and we are taken to a ruined area. This place was formerly known as Yongsan. We see the insane woman walk into a building in the area. The woman told someone that it is about time they get their own place. She reminded the person that they have a lot of money. A huge man who appears to be reading a book told the woman that he is surprised to hear that she came up with the suggestion. He reminded the woman that she does not even attend half of the meetings. 
the man revealed to the woman that he would actually love to have the meetings in a warm place. The insane woman was surprised to see the man alone. She told him that she always sees him with the other one. The man wearing an odd face mask told the woman that his other half is currently carrying out an order. The insane woman assured the man that she knows. She explained to him that she expected him to act like a little bitch and start searching for a particular bastard. The woman asked the man if he is holding back his tears in order to look tough. With a horrifying look on his face, the man told the woman that she will die if she says another word. The insane woman laughed when she saw the look on the man's face. She called him a lonely bastard and asked him if he is barking because he is scared without his owner. The woman told the huge man that she finds it cute that he is resisting even if he can't do anything. The man dropped his book and stood up. He took a stance and told the woman that he probably won't get in trouble for fighting another member. He reminded her that she is the cause of everything. The man covered his hand with his energy the moment he said this. The woman also released her energy. She asked the man to stop wasting her time. She assured him that she is comfortable dying. Before the two could begin their fight, a man entered the building and asked them to end things. He asked the woman whose name is Heron and the man whose name is Strange Stone to stop moving. The two immediately removed their energy when they saw the man. The man with a creepy mask told the two that he is not interested in intervening in their argument. He reminded them that they have work to do. He asked them to take care of things after finishing the job. The man informed them that no one will like to have more work because of their fight. The moment he said this, the man let out a drop of blood from his eyes. Immediately he heard the man's explanation. Strange let out a sigh. He told the man that he made a stupid mistake by going along with the bitch's joke. Heron told Strange that he gets to live because of the other man. She turned to the creepy masked man and asked him to tell her why he has not been answering her calls. The man was surprised to hear what Heron said. He asked her if she is talking about what happened four days ago. He told Heron that there was no need to answer her calls. The man knew that Heron wanted to go back to the scene to kill the rescue team. He explained to the woman that there was no point in continuing their conversation. He told her that their plan was successful anyways. He explained to her that there was no need to cause more trouble. Strange asked the man if the plan was really successful. He reminded him that only 12 people died and they got the spotlight stolen from them. Strange explained to the man that the news had been filled with stories about Jaryong and Chiol Kong. The news did not even mention the stolen vehicle. The man explained to Strange that the Adventurers Association would have faced some backlash if our boy and Chiol Kong had not interfered. He told Strange that the vehicle was transporting a five-star monster without proper security, and as a result it was stolen and caused civilian casualties. Before this news was released, the Adventurers Association hired the media and paid the families of the dead to distract them. They simply directed the attention of the public to our boy and Chiol Kong. They made the public forget their mistakes. Heron explained to the man that it would have been better for her to go back as kill the rescue team. The man explained to Heron that even if they kill thousands of people, the moment they are identified is when their actions become terrorism. When this happens, the association will focus their attention on them. The man told them that the association will not lose to them. He explained to her that the association will eventually fall if they continue to create holes like they did before. Strange realized that they need to continue causing more issues. The man was about to say more but he stopped himself when he saw something. The man saw another man holding a chain and a hammer in another hand. The man's clothes were covered in blood. With a smile on his face, the man told his colleagues that they should have called him when they arrived. The creepy masked man told his friend that he did not want to disturb him while he is enjoying his hobbies. Heron waved to the man whose name is Yungil. Yungil told the man to not call it a hobby. He explained to him that he was working. Immediately he said this. Yungil used his chain to pull someone into the building. The man appeared to have been tortured by Yungil. The insane psychopath told the masked man that he actually enjoys what he does. Strange noticed that the chain man was fit. He asked Yungil if the man is an adventurer. The masked man told Strange that the man is actually a ranker. Apparently, the ranker has been stealing behind his teammates' back. The man revealed to Strange that they captured the man by meeting up with him. The chain man's name is Okanghyuk. He is currently ranked 97th in Korea. He is the main tank of an attack squad. With a smile on his face, Yungil revealed to his colleagues that Kanghyuk is a scary person. He told them that the ranker stabbed his teammates in their back and turned to the shadows, even though his teammates pushed for his growth. Heron was surprised to hear about shadows. The masked man revealed to her that shadows is a secret hideout used by adventurers. It is usually within dungeons. It is like a base camp for people. It is in a location that is safe from monsters, 
there are medical equipment and items to use in this places. The place is meant to be a safe place, however, there aren't many that use them for pure intentions, they use the fact that it is an area hidden from others to do whatever they want. With a creepy smile on his face, Yung Gil pulled the chain and asked Kang Hyuk to tell his colleagues what he told him. While trembling, Kang Hyuk went on his knees, he revealed to them that there is a party at the shadows tonight. He told them that his leader is going to bring some civilians. Strange was surprised to hear this, he could not believe that rankers were hanging out with smugglers and civilians. Yung Gil smiled when he heard this. He told Kang Hyuk that the information is a little boring. He asked the man to stop acting nervous. He told him that he might kill him. Kang Hyuk revealed to the people that his leader has connections to lots of people. He told them that his leader usually brings in rich people who love to party, businessmen and celebrities. Kang Hyuk told them that they usually have some drinks or take potions that have some kind of effects. Heron smiled when she heard this. The masked man told Kang Hyuk that he understands the general gist. The man realized that the adventurers create addicts that can't satisfy their cravings with ordinary drugs. This drugs forces this addict to go to the shadows for more. The masked man let out a drop of blood from his eye and told Kang Hyuk that the best place to do drugs is a dungeon. While trembling, Kang Hyuk begged the men to spare him. He told them that he had no choice but to join because things have always been like this. According to Kang Hyuk, he was told that other squads do this. Yung Gil placed his hand on Kang Hyuk's head. He assured the man that he will not hurt him since he told them what they want. Immediately he said this. He told Kang Hyuk that it is time for them to say goodbye. The moment he said this, the masked man created a huge magic circle. After Kang Hyuk was killed, the masked man ordered the others to not spare anyone inside. He explained to them that the world will hear that the adventurers and civilians that were enjoying drugs were killed by a wild monster. The masked man cleaned his mask the moment he said this. Strange found it funny that they were going to be hunting attack squads. Heron told the masked man that it sounds fun. She asked the man if only the four of them will carry out the mission. The woman told the man that she never imagined that Doryong would be left out of a case like this. Yung Gil told his colleagues that they can simply kill everyone if things gets out of hand. He assured his teammates that they are the best option when it comes to lethality. The masked man told Yung Gil that he is right. He reminded his teammates that a slaughter like this is what they have been waiting for. He told them that their target is an attack squad that is trying to grow its influence in the world. The squad has two gold class and six rankers. The masked man assured his teammates that the squad should be good enough to help them release their stress. He asked them to enjoy their fights. As they walked out of the building, the masked man told his teammates that the stench of the bodies of their prey will wake up their rotten world and bring the era of Team Scar to existence. A month later, we see Jaryong in a taxi. Our boy was on the phone with Sarum. He revealed to Sarum that he just got out of his cast this morning. He explained to her that his hand feels weird to him. Jaryong revealed to our girl that he was told that he will need neuro rehabilitation for a week or two. Sarum told our boy that his equipment will be finished by then, before Jaryong could respond. Sarum told our boy that she can see his taxi. She waved to him and asked him to stop. Jaryong was shocked to see a huge building in front of him when he stepped out of the car. Our boy immediately understood why he needed to take an expensive taxi for an hour to arrive at his current location. He asked Sarum if they are truly the only ones using the building for two days. Sarum reminded Jaryong that he only has this weekend to get ready for the transfer exam. She reminded him that he is still getting tested by Jae Hwan next month. She told our boy that she wants to help him get ready before his test. The moment she said this, someone else got out of the taxi. Sarum was shocked to see who was in front of her. Jaryong revealed to our girl that he met the person after he got out of his cast. He told her that the person offered to help him get ready for the transfer exam. He revealed to Sarum that he heard that the person is a good student. With a smile on his face, Jaryong introduced Sarum to Chiol Kong. The poor boy had a very stiff face. He was quite nervous about meeting Sarum. Our girl did not even know how to react to meeting the boy. The building which Sarum brought Jaryong to has a swimming pool and basic training facilities. It also has a lounge that has different types of food. Our girl took Jaryong to the weight room. She told him that the room was made to match adventurer's strength. She revealed to our boy that the fifth floor is the men's dorm. She told him that each room has a shower. Sarum told Jaryong that the best place to be is the fourth floor because of the spa. Our boy was shocked to hear this. He could not believe that the building is Zeke's private property. Sarum did not understand why Jaryong was surprised. She revealed to him that it is not uncommon for a top ranker to even buy an entire mountain just to train. She explained to our boy that her uncle sometimes brings some people to the building to rest and train. 
She told him that she was able to get his permission to use it because no one makes use of it when it is free. While she was talking, Saram noticed that Chi Kong was looking around, she quickly asked Jar Yong to tell her why that came with him. Our boy was offended when he heard this, he asked her to not call his friend that, Saram asked our boy to lower his voice. Our girl told Jar Yong that she does not know why he brought Chi Kong along. She revealed to Jar Yong that the boy does not think of her as a classroom friend. Jar Yong asked Saram if she has ever tried to talk to Chi Kong. Our girl said that no one in the entire department talks to him, everyone simply avoids him. According to Saram, Chi Kong is famous for being picky and noble. While they were talking, Chi Kong was looking at the different weights in the building, he was very happy to see the different sizes. Saram told our boy that Chi Kong ignores even the best student in the department. She told him that it is basically impossible to talk to the boy. The moment she said this, Jar Yong called out to the boy. He asked him to come closer. Our boy reminded the boy that he is not there for fun. Chi Kong felt embarrassed when he heard this. Our boy told Chi Kong that he can look at the weights later. Chi Kong revealed to Jar Yong that he was surprised to see the weight because it is a brand he has always wanted. Saram did not understand what she was seeing. The moment Jar Yong heard what Chi Kong said, he remembered what he told him in the car. Chi Kong was surprised to hear that Saram was the one sponsoring our boy. Jar Yong asked the boy if he is on bad terms with Saram. He told Chi Kong that he does not need to come if he doesn't want to. The boy told Jar Yong that he does not have any issues with our girl. He revealed to Jar Yong that he does not have any friends at school. He told him that it will be hard to make friends with Saram since she is scary and pretty cool. Jar Yong was shocked to hear this. He told Chi Kong that they might be talking about different people. The boy assured Jar Yong that our girl is quite impressive. Chi Kong explained to our boy that he could tell that a lot of people hated Saram from first semester. Even then, our girl never bowed down to anyone in the school. She always had her head up. Jar Yong was surprised to hear what Chi Kong said. The boy told Jar Yong that he does not know anything about Saram's grades, but she is a strong person internally. The scene shifts and we are taken back to the present. Jar Yong told our girl and Chi Kong that they can use this weekend to work together in a study group. Saram was surprised to hear this. She reminded Jar Yong that he came to get ready for his practical exam. Our boy explained to our girl that the practical exam is basically about the habits and knowledge that he should know of. He reminded Saram that she told him that the practical exam is about analyzing and developing a plan. Our boy assured Saram that he understands why she wants to prepare for the practical. He explained to her that it is better they use this facility to train themselves. Jar Yong told our girl that he was able to grow stronger than ever within last month. He told her that he faced really strong people and he has learnt things that he could never learn on his own. He explained to our girl and Chi Kong that he wants to use this opportunity to train with them. He told them that they can teach each other skills and information they know. Our boy assured them that he will be helpful to them. Jar Yong reminded the two that they are both outsiders in their school. Saram and Chi Kong were deeply hurt by what our boy said. Our boy explained to them that when he gets into warrior high and makes friends, he will also be sharing information with them. He told them that plenty people must do this in their school. Saram told Jar Yong that she has actually once thought of the same thing. Our boy told Saram that she needs to focus on herself. Jar Yong explained to our girl that Warrior High must be a difficult place to do well in. He told Saram that it will be meaningless for him to get into the school and he has no one to sponsor him. Our girl became down when she heard this. She completely understood what our boy was talking about. She told Jar Yong that she has nothing she can teach them. Jar Yong was surprised to hear this. He asked Chi Kong if he knows how to use magic. Chi Kong told our boy that he is only taking the theory class. Jar Yong revealed to the boy that Saram is quite good at magic. He told him that our girl is only poor at aiming. Saram was surprised to hear this. She told the boys that she only knows magic because she is a magic archer. Chi Kong told our girl that he would like to learn how to use magic. From Saram's point of view, Chi Kong looked like he was threatening her. She was horrified to hear what he said. However, to Chi Kong, he spoke naturally. Fifteen minutes later, we see the group in the sparring room. Jar Yong was surprised to see that Zeke even had training gear of different sizes. He asked Saram if he can take one home. Our girl asked him to do whatever he likes. Our girl thanked Jar Yong for creating the study group. She explained to him that she never believed that she would be able to work in a group while attending school. She was more surprised to see that her group had Chi Kong in it. Our boy assured Saram that Chi Kong is not a scary person. Before he could talk more, he and Saram hear someone walk into the room. The person smiled when she saw our girl. She told Saram that she should have told her if she wanted to use the facility today. The person turns out to be Anisha. The girl had some students with her. Saram was shocked to see her cousin. 
She asked her to tell her why she is there. Anisha reminded Sarum that Zeke told them to use the facility whenever he is not around. Jaryong wondered about who was standing in front of him. With a smile on her face, Anisha asked her cousin if there is something she does not understand. She asked Sarum if she believes that Zeke will give her special treatment. Sarum introduced her cousin to Jaryong. She told our boy that her cousin likes to act older even though they are the same age. With a smile on her face, Anisha greeted our boy. She told Jaryong that she never expected Sarum to bring over a friend. The girl pointed to a boy next to her and introduced him as a second-year student. She told them that his name is Jang Sang-yong. Anisha told them that she was planning to invite a couple of her friends over so that they train with the senior and get to know each other. She explained to them that she came with some friends that came early, with a cold gaze in her eyes. Anisha told them that it will be better they go to a place that will be less crowded. She told them that things will be awkward if they go home once her friends arrive. Before our girl could respond, Jaryong cut in and told Anisha that they can work together. He revealed to her that they are planning to have a study session. He told her that their other friend is taking a call in another room. He asked her if they can work together. Sang Yong asked our boy if he is a first year student in their school. He told Jaryong that he has never seen him before. Our boy introduced himself to the senior and told him that he is a first year student in an ordinary high school. Anisha was surprised to hear this. Jaryong revealed to them that he is transferring to Warrior High. He told them that Sarum offered to help him with the practical exam. He told them that there is a lot of things he does not know because he was busy doing other things. The other two students with Anisha were surprised to see that Jaryong was giving out a lot of information. They laughed at him. They believe that he is crazy. Sang Yong moved close to our boy. With a terrifying tone in his voice, he asked Jaryong to quickly get in the car before it is too late. Anisha smiled when she saw this. She believed that Jaryong behaved too desperate. Sang Yong explained to Jaryong that he does not know if he is lying or if he is embarrassed that he is going to a normal high school. He told Jaryong that he cannot train with warrior high students with just efforts. Our boy was about to respond to the senior. However, the idiot swung his hand at Jaryong. Our boy began to shake when this happened. He told the senior that the attack hurts. Sang Yong was shocked to hear this. He never had any intentions of seriously hurting Jaryong. Anisha and her friends were shocked to see what happened. Even if the person is not an adventurer, fighting outside a dungeon is a crime. It is an even bigger crime when the opponent is a normal human. Sang Yong was planning on punching the air. He wanted to stop before his attack touched Jar Yong and cause a scene. He planned to do this to show our boy the difference between them. The senior took a careful look at his fist. He was certain that he accurately calculated the distance between himself and Jar Yong. Sang Yong knew that our boy was supposed to pull himself back if he wanted to react to the attack. The senior wondered if Jar Yong took the attack on purpose. He realized that our boy might have already seen through his intentions. While shaking on the ground, Jar Yong told the senior that it is unfortunate that they cannot be on each other's good side. With a menacing look in his eyes, our boy told the senior that the rest of his actions are simply self-defense. In the sparring room used by adventurers, there are cameras installed depending on the layout. The cameras are placed to ensure that the inside of the room was recorded without any blind spot. The adventurers can look at the recorded footage to analyze their movements. Sarum knew that Jaryong got hit on purpose, although she did not know why. She knew that our boy did this for a good reason. The camera saw Jaryong get punched without doing nothing. This fact has been recorded on camera. Sang Yong was surprised to hear our boy talk about self-defense. Jaryong told the senior that he is pretty introverted and shy. He explained to the senior that when something bad happens to him, he will keep on thinking about it. Sang Yong apologized to our boy for the punch. He asked Jaryong to stop overreacting over something that won't leave a mark. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He pointed at the senior and told Sarum that he said that he is overreacting when he was the one who hit him. He asked our girl if he should just call the cops or report to Warrior High. Sang Yong asked Jaryong to stop. He asked our boy if he wants money or if he truly wants to train with them. Jaryong reminded the senior that anything he does will be considered self defense. He explained to Sang Yong that he wants to also punch him. He told him that he will always be thinking about the punch if he doesn't do the same. Sang Yong was surprised to hear this. He wondered about why he had to meet such an insane bastard. He asked Jaryong to do whatever he wants. Our boy asked the senior if he is sure. Sang Yong told our boy that it is fine. The senior believed that this might be the easiest way to solve the issue. He assumed that Jaryong was a weakling going to a normal school. He was certain that our boy's punch won't have a lot of power to it. While he was thinking, Jaryong took a stance and clenched his fist. Our boy swung his hand at the idiot and ruined his face. 
Of course, this was just Sang Yong's imagination. The senior had immediately stepped back when he saw Jerry Yong's fist coming closer to him. Our boy told the senior that he acted differently from what he promised. The other boy who was Anisha's friend was surprised to see Sang Yong dodge the attack. He did not understand why the idiot did not just let himself get hit. From the perspective of others, Sang Yong dodged Jerry Yong's punch to play with him. However, from Sang Yong's perspective, he had no choice but to dodge the attack. The senior was certain that his imagination would have become reality if he did not dodge the attack. While releasing a small amount of his energy, Jar Yong asked the senior if he never had any intentions of receiving his attack head on. Anisha asked her senior to tell our boy the truth. She asked Sang Yong to tell our boy that it is excessive and emotional to pay him back with a punch. With a smile on her face, Anisha asked the senior to apologize and compensate Jar Yong for his mistake. She explained to Jar Yong that the fight is pointless because it is not a duel. As sweat dropped from his face, Sang Yong told Jar Yong that Anisha is right. He told our boy that he can compensate him. Our boy told the senior that it is fine. Jar Yong took a stance and asked the senior if he will rather just duel or continue fighting. The moment he said this, our boy rushed to attack him. Sang Yong was annoyed to see this. He could not believe that Jar Yong would actually want to continue the fight. When our boy got close to the senior, he tried to punch Jar Yong's head. Our boy easily dodged the attack. He clenched his fist and punched the senior in his face. Sang Yong was annoyed to see this. He knew that Jar Yong's punch intentionally did not have any power behind it. Our boy's eyes was telling him that he could end the fight whenever he wants. This look was enough to destroy the pride of a warrior high student. Sang Yong began to attack Jar Yong more aggressively. He attacked our boy several times, but Jar Yong easily dodged the attacks. Sang Yong moved behind our boy and tried to attack him from his blind spot before his hand could touch Jar Yong. Our boy turned around and used his fist to block the attack. The senior's hand bounced off our boy's hand. While his hand was in the air, Jar Yong moved closer to the senior and took a stance. Instead of attacking Sang Yong mercilessly, our boy kicked him in his leg and let him fall to the ground. Anisha and her other friends were shocked to see this. The other boy in her group asked Sang Yong to stop joking around. He asked him if he lost on purpose. Jar Yong asked Sang Yong if he really attends Warrior High. He explained to the senior that what he experienced is a lot different from what he thought. Our boy told Sang Yong that he wanted them to go all out without harming each other. Jar Yong stretched out his hand to the senior and thanked him for playing along. He assured him that he has no ill intentions against him. Sang Yong turned his head away when he saw our boy's hand. Jar Yong told the senior that he feels sorry about the conclusion. The reason why our boy fought with Sang Yong was because he believed that he was similar to Gaeun. Our boy wondered if he should have just left. Jar Yong walked up to Sarum and asked her to keep the recordings of what happened today. Our girl was surprised to hear this. She asked Jar Yong to tell her what he intends to do with the recordings. Our boy asked Sarum if she is stupid. He revealed to her that the recordings is actually for her. He told her that he wants her to watch it. Jar Yong assured our girl that she will be able to see his movements clearly. He explained to her that he tried to limit his movements and move at a slower tempo. He told her that he is actually disappointed that Sang Yong was weaker than he expected. Sarum was shocked to hear this. She could not believe that our boy fought in order to record it for her. Jar Yong reminded our girl that they were the ones who picked a fight first. Sarum asked our boy if there was any other reason why he fought. Jar Yong asked Sarum if Anisha is the bitch that keeps bothering her with pointless things. Our boy informed Sarum that her cousin has no intentions of hiding her hatred for her. Jar Yong explained to Sarum that he does not know what her school life is like. He told her that Chiol Kong informed him that she does not bow down to others. He explained to our girl that he does not intend to stay still when someone behaves like that to him. Jar Yong told Sarum that he is not a prideful person. However, he does not intend to let others speak rudely to him. Our boy reminded Sarum that although they have an agreement about Warrior High, he still has to protect his precious school life. He explained to her that it is not beneficial for them to be isolated by others. While Jar Yong was talking, he hears someone scream. When our boy turned around, he saw Sang Yong coming closer to him. The senior was about to attack our boy. Anisha told her senior that she is disappointed in him. Before Sang Yong's fist could touch our boy, a huge red creature created with magic appeared in the air and grabbed him. The creature looked like a titan. Anisha was the one who conjured the creature. While holding her senior in the air, the girl told him that she did not expect much from him in the first place. She told him that she wanted him to at least maintain his composure as a senior. She told Sang Yong that he is bringing her down with him. Sarum was terrified when she saw the creature. 
Even though the girl was far from her, it was still hard to breathe in her presence. Our girl noticed that her cousin does not still care about the usage of her mana. While our girl was thinking, she noticed that Jaryong was quiet. She asked our boy if something is wrong. Our boy was surprised to see what was happening to his body. He noticed that he could feel the mysterious power in his body. Three weeks earlier, we see Jaryong open a box. The box was sent to him by the hospital. It contained Jaryong's things. Our boy was surprised to see how his clothes had turned to rags. He was a bit annoyed that he could no longer sell the Inkill's blood because it was broken. If a force puts the wearer of the necklace in danger, magic will spread throughout the body to absorb the force. This is the ability of the necklace. When Jaryong was attacked by the Horned Horror, he could tell that the necklace got activated in his pocket. This was the only reason why he was able to get out of the incident without any big injuries. However, our boy did not know how he got the mysterious power up. He wondered if the ability was granted to him by the necklace. Jaryong believed that this was the most logical answer. He was certain that he did not have a secret power that he did not know about. Our boy believed that it makes sense that the item has another effect since it is worth 2.2 billion won. Jaryong was shocked when he thought of this. He could not believe that he just lost 2.2 billion. Presently, our boy took a look at his hand. He was certain that this was the same feeling he had last time. He could not comprehend how the power got activated. He was certain that he does not have and kills blood on him. While Jaryong was looking at his body, the bitch asked him to tell her how much her sister is paying him. She asked our boy to switch sides. She assured him that she will triple his pay if he changes sides. Sarum was annoyed to hear this. She asked her cousin to stop playing around with other people. Anisha told our girl that she is not joking. She explained to Sarum that she is simply giving a valid offer to a potential client. She told our girl that although Jaryong is inferior, he still managed to defeat a senior from their school. The bitch told her cousin that it is odd for someone as skilled as Jaryong to not have gotten into their school. She explained to Sarum that there must have been a reason why Jaryong could not apply to their school. The reason must involve money. Anisha told our girl that money is the only thing that she can offer Jaryong. She asked our girl to tell her what else she can give other than money. She asked Sarum if she has talent, connections, or a good reputation. Our girl clenched her fist out of anger. She asked our girl to tell her what she can offer anyone. Jaryong told the bitch that Sarum is patient. With a smile on his face, our boy told Anisha that there is a weird person trying to destroy Sarum's school life. He told Anisha that the person curses at our girl even though she is a shitty person herself. He told her that the person also talks behind Sarum's back while also causing problems for her. Anisha was annoyed to hear this. With a smile on his face, Jaryong asked Anisha if she knows the person since she and Sarum are cousins. The moment he said this, Anisha took away the creature and dropped the senior to the ground. Sang Yong fell down hard. He lost consciousness. Anisha told her friends that the meeting is cancelled. The other girl with them reminded the bitch that they already invited the others. Anisha told the girl whose name is Yanawa that she is too kind. She told Yanawa that she still cares about others even after seeing what happened. She reminded the girl that Sang Yong is the team leader of the seniors who are coming and yet he was defeated. Anisha assures Yanawa that the rest are going to be the same as him. She explained to the girl that the meeting was merely a way to create connections to the student council. Anisha assured the girl that they still have other alternatives. She told her friends that they should just forget about what happened. The bitch turned to Jaryong and told him that it is best to have a proper idea of what he wants. She told him that it will affect his entire school life. Jaryong wanted to respond to the girl but Sarum grabbed his clothes. She moved her head and asked our boy not to reply. While watching Anisha and her friends walk away, our boy told Sarum that he could have fought with Anisha if he provoked her a little more. With a sad look on her face, Sarum informed Jaryong that she wants to avoid a situation where Anisha pays more attention to him. Our girl revealed to Jaryong that Anisha will do anything when it comes to her. Sarum told our boy that her cousin will do anything to stop him in his tracks now that she knows about him. She explained to our boy that Anisha will soon start spreading rumors about him. She told him that she is scared of this. While she was talking, Jaryong noticed that he could no longer feel the mysterious power. The moment Anisha called off the magic giant, the power went away. Jaryong wondered if the power is activated by magic. Sarum noticed that our boy was not listening. She asked him if he is alright. She told him that he seems off. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told our girl that he is certain that he needs to learn magic. In the next scene, we see Sang Yong regain consciousness. Immediately he regained consciousness. The first person he saw was Chiyol Kong. 
He was horrified to see the boy's manly face in front of him. The boy raised his hand and told Jar Yong that the senior has woken up. Sang Yong screamed when he saw the boy raise his hand. The moment he regained his composure, Sang Yong realized that Chiol Kong was the person in front of him. He remembered the boy as the person who defeated the three horned horror. He did not understand why Chiol Kong would be in the building. Jar Yong walked up to the senior and apologized to him. He told him that he never intended on embarrassing him. Sang Yong smiled when he heard this. He told our boy that it is actually his fault. The senior realized who our boy was. He told Jar Yong that he was stupid for acting tough in front of the hero of Guanaku tragedy. Our boy told the senior that the results were actually not obvious. He explained to Sang Yong that he never expected to win the fight. The senior was surprised to hear this. Jar Yong explained to him that there is barely any difference between them when it comes to strength or speed. However, Sang Yong could not control his emotions and his attacks were too simple. Due to this, our boy could easily see through his habits. Sang Yong was surprised to hear about his habits. Jar Yong told the senior that he took a look at the footage while he was passed out. According to our boy, the first thing he noticed in Sang Yong is his weight distribution. Jar Yong explained to the senior that before he stretches his hand out, his body leans towards where he placed his weight. Our boy showed the senior a list of his weakness. He explained to him that he already organized the list. Sarum could tell that her senior was surprised. The feedback Jar Yong was giving him was something he could never get by paying money. This is only possible because of our boy's attention to details and his intuition. While watching the video, Sang Yong asked our boy to tell him why he would do such a thing. Jar Yong explained to the senior that he does not care about what happened. He assured the senior that he has no ill intentions towards him since he already paid for his actions. He reminded Sang Yong that they came to train in this place. He explained to him that he believed that the information will help them to be on better terms. Sang Yong was surprised to hear this. Jar Yong asked the senior to leave the phone once he is done. He told him that he can send him the list if he gives him his number. As our boy and Chiol Kong walked towards Sarum, Jar Yong told the boy that he never expected Anisha and her friends to simply leave their senior behind. Chiol Kong told our boy that Sang Yong must be sad. Sarum told the boys that they need to get down to the basics. Our girl explained to the boys that magic is simply a fuel to use spells. A person's magic stats represents the quality of that fuel. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He believed that the magic stats should represent quantity. Chiol Kong explained to Jar Yong that all species including humans have the same amount of mana. Sarum has a C rank magic stat. Jar Yong has a D rank and Chiol Kong has an E rank stat. Sarum explained to our boy that even if he stacks a large amount of newspapers, it will never burn like coal. The amount of magic power depends on the amount of energy and thus determines the scales of the spell which a person can use. Sarum revealed to the boys that her magic stat is C rank. This is the bare minimum for those trying to be magicians. One has to have this stat to use effective attack spells and useful buffs. Our girl told the boys that the best thing for non-magicians to learn is self-buffs. Jar Yong was happy to hear this. He wondered if he could give himself a buff that can recreate the effects of Enkil's blood. He asked Sarum if they can learn this ability this weekend. Our girl could not believe that a beginner wants to learn magic in three days. She told our boy that she cannot get used to geniuses like him. She explained to him that it will take at least one to two weeks to get used to using magic. Our girl revealed to Jar Yong that all the buffs she learned are long-ranged. The moment she said this, Sang Yong told them that he can help them. He told them that he is willing to teach them if they want to learn from him. With a cold gaze in his eyes, the senior told them that buffs is his specialty. Sang Yong is a close-range damage dealer, a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist, and he is the greatest self-buff specialist in his grade. In the next scene, we see Jar Yong create fire with his energy. Our boy was shocked to see what he had done. The spell is an F-rank spell called Flare. It creates a fire that burns between 400 to 500 degrees Celsius by using the user's magic and the surrounding oxygen. Our boy could not believe that he actually created fire. He asked Sang Yong to take a look at what he did. The senior informed Jar Yong that there is no need for him to be surprised. He explained to our boy that it would be weirder if he couldn't use the spell. He told Jar Yong that anyone can use the spell as long as they have talent. Our boy was happy to confirm that he had talent. He asked the senior if he should create a bigger fire or try creating water. Sang Yong asked Jar Yong to maintain the flare. He told Jar Yong to focus on his inside. According to Sang Yong, there is nothing more stupid than telling someone to feel the magic. It does not make sense to feel the magic when they have never used it before. However, it is now different for Jaryong. 
Sang Yong explained to him that he should be able to sense the magic with his puny excuse of a spell. He told our boy that he will be able to drag it out and use it. The senior explained to Jar Yong that even if he cannot feel it, the magic within his body is already awakened. He assured our boy that this is the best time for him to feel the magic. When Jar Yong closed his eyes, Sang Yong advised him to not let the flame die out and to focus on his inside. He told our boy that this first step is important. While watching our boy meditate, Sang Yong let out a sigh. He was certain that Jar Yong would not completely understand what he said. He believed that he would need to spend the whole weekend with Jar Yong before he could comprehend what he is talking about. The moment he thought of this, our boy informed him that he feels something sharp and ticklish. It was like static electricity was coming from his lower stomach and spreading to the rest of his body. Sang Yong was shocked to hear this. He told Jar Yong that he has the right feeling. The senior could not comprehend what was happening. He was certain that he just explained everything to our boy. Jar Yong told the senior that his body feels amazing. He explained to Sang Yong that his body feels like it is filled with circuits. He informed the senior that he can feel hundreds of circuits. There are two main parts within the human body that handles magic. The core which is located in the abdomen creates magic, and the circuits that stretch from the core supplies the magic. The amount of circuits a person has is 127. While our boy was feeling his energy, Saram spoke to Chiol Kong. She asked the boy if he knows how to play any instruments. Chiol Kong informed her that he learned how to play the piano until he was 10. He explained to our girl that he had to stop because he was not talented at it. Saram informed the boy that magic is similar to playing the piano. The moment she said this, our girl created a ball of lightning in her hand. The spell is a Dirank spell known as Thunder Sphere. It creates and launches an electricity-filled sphere at 200 kilometers per hour. Although it is not lethal, its large range makes it ideal for limiting the movements of multiple enemies. While Chiol Kong was staring at the ball in shock, Saram asked him if he saw her use any chance or complicated movements before casting the spell. According to Saram, magic is not as complicated as people think. Most spells happen within the body without even moving. When playing the piano, specific keys are used in specific orders at a specific time. This is how a piece is played. Magic is also used in the same way. The circuits in a person's body are the keys on the piano and magic is the piece being played using those circuits. Among the 127 circuits, a person sends magic through specific circuits, in a specific order, and at a specific time. Chiol Kong asked Saram to tell him what will happen if the timing or order is wrong. He asked her if there are no risks or side effects involved. Our girl explained to Chiol Kong that easy spells will still manifest as long as the mistakes are not too big, however. The harder the spell, the higher the chances that the spell will fail. Of course, there is a consequence that comes with failure. The moment she said this, Saram raised her hand up and released the thunder sphere. Jar Yong was surprised to see lightning inside the building. Our girl told Chiol Kong that the thunder sphere is a D rank spell. She told him that he will be paralyzed and won't be able to move for half a day if he fails to execute it perfectly. However, for C rank spells and above, one mistake could be fatal. Chiol Kong became nervous when he heard this, due to the difficulty of magic, the front line being protected is important to magic users, this is because it is very hard to use magic constantly in a real battle. Saram reminded the boy that he told her that he can sense magic, Chiol Kong explained to our girl that he has been practicing for a while now, however, he still can't identify each circuits, Saram advised the boy to start with the easiest identifiable circuit, she informed Chiol Kong that he does not need to know all the circuits since he is a tank, she asked him to start with the circuits used for buffs. While they were talking, Jar Yong stared at them. He was happy to see them exchanging words. He was certain that Saram and the boy would work well once they got the chance. The moment he said this, our boy stood up. Sang Yong was surprised to see this. He asked Jar Yong if he is going to use the bathroom. Our boy was surprised to hear this. He told Sang Yong that there is no point in practicing anymore. The senior was surprised to hear this. He reminded Jar Yong that he needs to keep practicing until he is able to easily sense the magic in his body. Jar Yong revealed to the senior that he has gotten the hang of it. He told Sang Yong that he can sense where all his circuits are. Sang Yong was shocked to hear this. He could not believe what he was hearing. Our boy stretched out his right hand and explained to the senior that the total number of circuits in his right hand is six. He stretched out his left hand and revealed to Sang Yong that this arm has ten circuits including the one in his shoulder. Sang Yong screamed when he heard this, he asked Jar Yong if he is lying to him. Our girl turned around when she heard the senior's voice, Sang Yong told our boy that such a thing should not be possible. Saram did not know what happened, however, 
she was certain that Jaryong had done his genius thing. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told the senior that he can believe that he is lying. He referred to Sang Yong as bro and asked him to tell him the next step. Sang Yong was surprised to hear what Jaryong called him. Our boy explained to him that he cannot call him senior because he is not yet enrolled in their school. Sang Yong was surprised to hear this. Although there are small differences, all human like species have the same number of circuits in similar locations. This is why each circuit is assigned a number from 1 to 127. Sang Yong took a stance and landed a punch in the air. He told Jar Yong that his hand has nothing on it. He asked our boy to remember this. Immediately he said this. He took a deep breath. He added some buffs to his body. In order to do this, he channeled magic into circuit number 2, 4, 21, 45, and 62. The spell he used is known as muscle stimulation. It is an E-rank spell. It increases reflexes and stamina. The moment he activated the spell, he tried to punch Jar Yong in the face. He stopped when his hand got close to our boy. Our boy was shocked to see that the speed and the strength of his fist had increased. Jar Yong told Sang Yong that he would have lost a lot more than his nose if he had gotten hit by the attack. The senior smiled when he heard this. He could not believe that our boy would say such a thing when he did not even bat an eye. Sang Yong revealed to our boy that he was at the bottom of his grade last year. Although he had some confidence in his basic stats, the boy lacked the sense to utilize them to the fullest. Jar Yong asked Sang Yong if he got the buffs to assist himself. The senior told our boy that he is correct. Rather than looking for a talent he didn't have, Sang Yong looked into ways which he could improve. Fortunately for him, he had some aptitude for magic. Once he began to practice, he started looking into spells that he could use. Over time, Sang Yong found out about how interesting buffs are. Depending on how you combine them, you can bring out the best in your abilities. Upon hearing this, Jar Yong became nervous when he thought about how powerful one buff is. He could not even imagine how powerful a person would become with multiple buffs. Sang Yong reminded our boy that buffs are just a way. He told him that people with talent have no interest in self buffs. He told Jar Yong that most people are fine with two or three buffs. They do not usually research about dozens of buffs like him. Thanks to his buffs, Sang Yong managed to reach the middle of the pack and he even got his own team. Unfortunately, most people at the top usually look down on him for using tricks. Due to the fact that others look down on him, Sang Yong was happy when he heard that he got invited to an event by one of the most popular first year student. Even though it was a simple social event, Sang Yong was still happy. He believed that he could get his junior's approval if he showed them his progress. This is the reason why the boy acted tough. He was too excited and tried to prove himself. Sang Yong bowed his head and apologized to Jar Yong for his behavior. Our boy placed his hand on the senior's shoulder. He asked him to forget about the apology. With a horrifying look on his face, Jar Yong informed the boy that he will have to teach him everything he knows for the next 58 hours. The scene shifts and we are taken to Monday. At 6 a.m., we see our boy and his group stepping out of the building. Jar Yong told them that the morning air after working out is the best. While yawning, our girl told him that he sounds like an old man. With a nervous look on her face, Sarum reminded the boys that they did not sleep throughout the weekend. She asked them if they are not tired. With a smile on his face, Jar Yong reminded our girl that he and Chiol Kong are still young. Sarum realized that the two boys had A-rank stamina. She asked the boys to not talk to her. Sarum revealed to the boys that she never thought that training with people on their level will be beneficial. Jar Yong told Chiol Kong that it is unfortunate that they are not in the city. He told him that he wanted to get some soup with rice. Chiol Kong informed our boy that he has never had soup and rice together. While they were talking, Sang Yong informed them that he has already called a taxi. He asked them if anyone is going to Gangnam. He told them that he will not be going to school because he has off campus training. Jar Yong told Sarum that she does not need to give him a ride. He explained to her that the traffic will be bad because it is the morning of a weekday. He raised his hand up and told Sang Yong that he will join him. He asked him if he can get off at any station in line 2. With a smile on his face, Jar Yong told Sarum and Chiol Kong that he wants to thank them for the weekend. He explained to them that this is the best weekend he has had since he was 5. Chiol Kong and Sarum were surprised to hear this. Our girl could not believe that Jar Yong said that this is the best weekend he has had since he was 5. Our boy informed his friends that they will not have more time to see each other before the transfer exam. He reminded them that he has to make preparations and they have their own exams. Jar Yong told his friends that they need to do their best. He told Sarum that he will make fun of her if she fails. Sarum's face turned red when she heard this. She asked our boy to stop reminding her. Jar Yong asked Chiol Kong to be nice to our girl from time to time. 
The boy told him that he will do his best. After saying this, our boy waved to them and walked towards the taxi. Before Sang Yong got into the taxi, Saram called out to him. She thanked him for helping her. She told him that she learned a lot of things from him. The senior told her that it was the same for him. After saying this, he got into the taxi. After the taxi drove away, Saram told Chiul Kong that her ride will arrive soon. The boy simply said okay. The two still had an awkward relationship. In the next scene, we see Jar Yong and the senior arrive at Gangnam. Our boy was surprised to see that they beat the traffic. He told Sang Yong that he learned a lot from him in the weekend. He explained to him that he even learned a special move. With a nervous look on his face, Sang Yong reminded Jar Yong that he did not learn a special move. He explained to him that the skill is simply an idea. He revealed to our boy that he has never used the skill and he has never had the chance to use it. He told Jar Yong that the skill might not work. Jar Yong explained to the senior that the skill should be more effective in a battle. He told Sang Yong that he can even use the skill in a revenge match if he manages to master it. The senior was surprised to hear about a revenge match. Jar Yong told him that it is a long story. He assured him that he will tell him the result if he succeeds. Our boy turned around and told the senior that they should grab some food together whenever they have the chance. Sang Yong told Jar Yong that he cannot hang out with him unless he goes to a better school. He told our boy that he would rather not spend time with people who go to normal high schools. Our boy smiled when he heard this. He turned around and thanked Sang Yong for his words of encouragement. The scene shifts and we see Jar Yong arrive at his house. Our boy decided to skip school and get some sleep. The moment he said this, someone told him that there is no need for him to go to school. The person told him that he cannot sleep. Jar Yong was surprised to see the person in his house. He told Jae Hwan that he was supposed to go to school today. The broker informed our boy that he already called his school and told them that he cannot come to school for a month. Jar Yong was surprised to hear that he had to skip school for a month. Jae Hwan did not understand why our boy was surprised. He reminded him that he is getting ready for a transfer exam to Warrior High. The broker asked Jar Yong to pack his bags. He asked him to bring some underwear and a couple of shirts. While talking, the broker noticed something strange. He noticed that Jar Yong had learned magic. He realized that our boy had opened his circuits. Jar Yong was surprised to see that Jae Hwan was able to notice this. He explained to his boss that he needed to do some preparation since he knew that he was going to learn magic. Jae Hwan commended our boy on his efforts. He told him that his preparations won't be very useful. Our boy was surprised to hear this. Jae Hwan explained to Jar Yong that he did not waste his time. He told our boy that he is not getting a private lesson. He reminded him that he is getting a test. He told Jar Yong that he wants to see if he is prepared and determined to live as an adventurer. In order to do this, Jae Hwan plans to test our boy and push him to his limits. With a cold gaze in his eyes, Jae Hwan informed our boy that he will learn that he isn't as talented as he thought. Immediately he said this, he asked Jar Yong to start packing. While our boy was packing, his boss asked him to pack enough clothes for a few days. He told him that they can always come back if he runs out of clothes. Jar Yong asked his boss to tell him where they are going to train. He asked him if they are going to train at a private facility that belonged to him when he was active. Jae Hwan revealed to our boy that he already sold all his stuff in the past. He asked Jar Yong to assist him in opening a box. Our boy asked his boss to tell him what is inside the box. Jae Hwan told Jar Yong that his weapon is inside the box. He revealed to our boy that Zeke sent the box to his house. The man was annoyed to see that the elf knew his address. After struggling for a while, Jae Hwan managed to open the box. He asked Jar Yong to take a look at the weapon. He told our boy that he can sue Zeke if it is the wrong weapon. Jar Yong was surprised to see that the color of the weapon had changed. He also saw a manual in the box. Jae Hwan told our boy that apart from the color, the weapon is still the same. Jar Yong picked up the manual and told his boss that something must be different for a manual to be inside the box. When our boy picked up the weapon, he noticed that it was lighter than before and the grip was much better. Jae Hwan told our boy that he will learn about the weapon on his own and he will see if it is truly something worth using or something that barely changed. He asked Jar Yong to follow him. He assured our boy that he will give him enough chances to test his weapon. With a smile on his face, Jar Yong told his boss that he is excited. The moment he arrived at the training ground, Jar Yong regretted his words. Our boy saw a huge tree monster come out of the woods. The monster is called a carnivorous ant. Its danger rank is four stars. Our boy immediately took a stance. He reminded Jae Hwan that he told him to run away if he sees a three-star monster. He reminded his boss that he asked him to avoid even meeting a four-star monster. Jae Hwan explained to our boy that this rules were created for a smuggler. However, it is much different for an adventurer. The broker told Jar Yong to tell him if he is too scared to move, or if he thinks that he is going to die, 
He assured our boy that he will help him. Jae Hwan made the test to see our boy's current skills. The last time he saw Jae Ryong's skill was half a year ago. The man knew that a carnivorous int was even more dangerous for close-range damage dealers. He was certain that Jae Ryong will die if his skills have not improved. The broker wished our boy good luck. The moment he said this, the int attacked Jae Ryong with its branches. Our boy managed to dodge the attack. Immediately he dodged the attack. He noticed that he had a scratch on his face. Jae Ryong realized that he would have died if he reacted a second later. This is our boy's second time facing a monster that is above three star. While there is a gap between the monsters that he faced. The important thing is that the premise is the same. Jae Ryong rushed to attack the int. He reminded himself that he cannot make a single mistake in his attack or defense. Without a supporting ally, a single opening will lead to death. The moment he got close to the monster, it tried to attack him with its branches. Our boy managed to dodge the attack and move behind the monster. Jae Ryong decided to end things quickly with everything he had. The difference between 3-star and 4-star is intelligence. While the difference depends on the species, most monsters have decision-making skills that is on par with humans. In some cases, they can even play mind games with people. The int turned around the moment it sensed Jae Ryong's presence. Our boy realized that the monster deliberately let its guard down to bring him close. Jae Ryong immediately knew that his needle technique won't work. Jae Hwan stood up and stretched out his hand. He said that he already knew this would happen. Before the man could do anything, Jae Ryong summoned a large amount of energy and cut the monster in half. Our boy was shocked to see what had happened to his weapon. It turned into a scythe. The blade was made with energy. Jae Hwan opened his mouth in shock when he saw this. He did not know what he was looking at. While he was staring at the energy blade, it disappeared. Jae Hwan asked our boy to tell him how he activated the blade. Jae Ryong explained to his boss that he doesn't know how to use the weapon yet. He told him that he only read some pages of the manual. Jae Hwan asked our boy if he feels strangely tired. Jae Ryong smiled when he heard this. He revealed to his boss that he is a bit out of breath. He told him that he is more surprised than tired. Jae Hwan noticed that he did not sense any magic from Jae Ryong's weapon. He realized that the weapon must have an ability that allows the user to manifest a blade using their stamina. The weapon was not unique to the man. Instead, it was more old-fashioned. The skill was an old-style skill which was behind the times. Weapon manifestation is not free. Stamina loss is based on how long the blade is manifested. Although this mechanism might have made sense in the past when it was difficult to find good materials, it is more efficient to just create an actual blade. While thinking about the impact of Jae Ryong's last attack, Jae Hwan wondered if it was possible to use such an attack and only feel slightly tired. The man let out some smoke and explained to Jae Ryong that he would have learned his lesson if not for his weapon. Our boy told the man that he already knows that he basically lost the fight. Jae Hwan told our boy that everything is fine if he knows. He revealed to Jae Ryong that he never thought he would win. Our boy was surprised to hear this. Jae Hwan explained to his subordinate that he is not underestimating his skills. He told Jae Ryong that he acknowledges his skills. He told our boy that he is okay when it comes to talent and skills and his battle sense is already on par with gold-class adventurers. Jaryong began to blush when he heard this. He asked his boss to tell him why he is complimenting him. Jae Hwan asked Jaryong if okay is a compliment. He revealed to our boy that he can make a list of dozens of people who have more talent than him. According to Jae Hwan, amongst this people, over half of them have met their death in the hands of a weak monster. The moment he said this, Jaryong sensed that the int was behind him. He quickly turned around. The monster rushed to attack our boy when it got close to him. Jae Ryong managed to dodge the attack by moving back. Our boy wondered if another monster came into the area. He quickly removed this idea from his head. He could not believe that the int managed to reattach its body after it was split in half. The monster has a super regeneration ability. This power allows it to repair physical damages. The monster stretched out its branch at Jae Ryong. Our boy used his staff to block the attack. His staff destroyed the monster's arm. The moment this happened, our boy realized that his staff has created another head. It created a huge hammer. Immediately he saw this. Jae Hwan understood how the weapon works. The weapon identifies the situation the user is in, in order to manifest in the perfect shape. Although it might seem random, it is the best skill for Jae Ryong. While our boy was breathing heavily, the int regenerated its arm. Although Jae Ryong's weapon was good, it did not change his situation because he could not figure out a strategy, especially within the time limit. After fighting for a while, we see Jae Ryong covered in bruises, even though our boy had severely injured the monster. He could not still win. 
The int stretched out its hand to grab Jaryong. Before the monster's hand could reach our boy, a shield appeared in the air. Jaehwan was the one who created this shield. He asked his subordinate if he was going to try to dodge the monster's attack again. He informed Jaryong that he wouldn't have succeeded in his current condition. While the int was banging the shield, Jaehwan told our boy that the game is over. He asked Jaryong if he has any objections. Our boy revealed to his boss that he tried to destroy every part that might be the monster's weakness. He asked Jaehwan to tell him what he was supposed to do. The man informed Jaryong that running away would have been the best option. While breathing heavily, our boy asked his boss to not joke with him. Jaehwan assured him that he is being serious. He explained to Jaryong that he should have ran away and lure the monster to a place where it cannot regenerate. Our boy was shocked to hear this. The first and the most efficient way would be to lure the carnivorous int somewhere it can't absorb nutrients. The moment Jaryong heard this, he looked around. Our boy realized that he was in a forest, according to Jae Hwan. As long as the monster is touching a surface where it can absorb nutrients, it will continue to heal indefinitely. If the int was lured into a rocky environment or a fallen mine, our boy could have easily defeated it five times over. The man asked Jaryong if such a thought even crossed his mind. He explained to him that his method of doing things is too one-dimensional. While the man was talking, our boy became nervous. He apologized to his boss for interrupting him. He asked him to look up. The man saw that the monster had broken through his barrier. He was not surprised to see this because he had no talent in protection magic. He pointed his hand at the int and released his magic. He burnt the monster's entire body in one go. This is the second way to defeat the monster. A person can use a sea rank or higher flame spell to burn the int's entire body. Jaryong was surprised to see his boss's magic. The man informed our boy that matchups are very important. He explained to him that he could have easily defeated the monster if he was a magician that specializes in fire spells. Thanks to its weakness for fire, the int is seen as a four-star monster. The broker assured Jaryong that he would have won if he used the strategy. However, until a person can understand the strategy, the int will continue to remain as the worst thing for close-range damage dealers to handle. According to Jae Huan, it might seem easy to just use a C-rank fire spell. However, most fires wouldn't even stand a chance. A person would need a military-grade incendiary bomb to imitate its power. While the first generation lacked polished attack spells, the next generations get to take advantage of the strategies they developed. Jae Huan informed our boy that a lot of the talented people he was talking about all died to monsters that could have been defeated with little planning. For the sole reason of being born in the wrong generation, they lost the chance to express what they were capable of. Jae Huan asked Jaryong to tell him how it feels for him to be defeated by a monster for the first time. Before he could respond, the man told our boy that he probably feels like shit. It is different from losing to another human in a duel. All a person can feel is regret and loss because they do not learn much. This feeling is something adventurers experience, and in return, you pay the price. Some adventurers get a light injury if they are lucky, others get retirement if they are not lucky, in the worst case, someone else loses their life. Our boy was surprised to hear this. His boss informed him that it feels terrible to live because of someone else. Jae Hwan told Jaryong that he does not want him to experience this feeling. He told him that just because he paid a great price does not mean he will learn a great lesson. The only thing a person loses is their dignity. After saying this, Jaehwan turned around. He told Jaryong that they are done. He asked him if he can run for a couple hours. Our boy told him that he can. The inside of a dungeon has been drastically altered from the original space before the adhesion. Although the outside of a dungeon might seem like the same size as before, while the perimeter is still the same, the area inside the dungeon may seem multiple times larger than initially expected, including Uido, for regions combined to create the Agar jungle. The actual area inside the dungeon is close to the size of an entire country. While our boy was breathing heavily, Jaehwan informed him that they have arrived. He asked Jaryong to enjoy the view. He told him that it is always amazing to see the view for the first time. The environment experience within a dungeon is usually beyond a person's imagination. This dungeon is an A-rank dungeon that is known as Cinderim. While looking down at the dungeon, Jae Hwan revealed to him that three-star monsters are at the bottom of the food chain in this dungeon. He told our boy that he can only survive for 30 minutes if he is alone. With a smile on his face, the man revealed to Jaryong that they will stay in this place. He told our boy that he will teach him during the day and protect him at night. He explained to Jaryong that he will continue to teach him after two weeks, however, he will have to protect himself once the two weeks are over. 
The broker explained to Jaryong that he will pass his test if he manages to use everything he learned to survive for a month. The man reminded our boy that he can always stop when he wants to. With a smile on his face, Jaryong told his boss that it is sad to hear that they will only be here for a month. One month later, we see Saram at the front of Jaryong's house. It was already the day of the test. Our girl seemed to be nervous. She could not believe that Jaryong would ignore her texts and calls for a month. The test was going to begin by 9 a.m. Saram wondered if our boy was at home. While she was thinking, we see someone who was barefooted ask her if she was waiting for him. Our girl was surprised to see Jaryong. She wanted to yell at him, but she stopped talking when she saw something. Guys, we have come to the end of our video. If you guys want more of this recap, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button for more recaps. See you guys later.